stopping us. Fly without boarding pass. Couldn't catch me, I'd be moving fast. Call me a shooting star. Let them know who you are. Flying up in a bar. Wish on a star. Time to show them who's in charge. Call me a shooting star.
sports. Tonight, Sham. You going to count me in again? All right. How, how do you know we're live, people? Because I get to yell at my producer on the air. And welcome, League of Legends fans. My name is Jim Lowry, joined tonight by Ethan Dolan, and you are watching League of Legends on NECC underscore esports. Tonight's first match, we will have Champlain versus Becker. Uh, Ethan, why don't you go ahead and uh, set up the match for us here? Yeah, I mean, we've got a battle as old as time itself. Beavers and Hawks, baby! I am excited. The Champlain Beavers taking on the Becker Hawks. Both these teams are two win right now. The newly minted, the newly christened site for the NECC is up. I don't know if I can drop links in chat, but I'm about to try. Hey, I can! Um, is up. You can see all of the statistics there that are tracked. You can see the rest of the matches for the night if you're curious what's going on around the league. But if you do direct your attention there, you will see Champlain 2 and 1. Becker 2 and 2. The winner will walk away the sole three win team out of this matchup. Very, very excited to get into it. We've seen Champlain on stream once or twice now, and they have looked moderately impressive both times. Becker's a new team to the stream. So very excited to see what they will be able to bring to the table. Of course, this will be played in patch 10.21. We've got buffs to Aphelios, Corky, Karma, Lee Sin, Trundle, and Udyr. Nerfs coming into Camille, Graves, Hecarim, Nidalee, Pantheon, and Samira. It's going to be a good one, Coach. How are you feeling heading into tonight? Uh, it's it's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Uh, with all of the buffs and nerfs coming across, uh, we might see some uh, non traditional picks that we've seen in the last couple of patches here that's what i'm hoping for at least i'm hoping to see some new people on the rift and uh i'm hoping that we get a couple of really interesting team fights somewhere i think with the the buffs and the nerfs going ac that went across uh it might lead to champions uh being picked that are more in tune with team fighting and i'm hoping for some really good five on fives that'll get us both really excited absolutely everyone in chat i hope we're ready i want to see the predictions do we got becker do we have champlain beavers or Hawks, as as you said, very excited to see what happens. We'll see if these shifts to the meta do shake it up. The one champion I do have my eye on when we talk about these changes, just based on what we've seen in the NECC, I'm looking at Aphelios, I'm looking at Lee Sin, I'm looking at Trundle. Uh, Lee Sin's a jungler that we've seen picked quite a few times. This is very, very aggressive counter jungling, but you have to make sure you win the early game if you want a shot to win the game at all with that Lee Sin. Uh, Aphelios, ADC that's so, so strong. We saw the nerf uh, range on the ulti a couple patches back. Took him out of pro play for the most part. We'll see if that's enough to bring back in. Trundle, a jungle that's so, so interesting and so situational in so many different situations, but uh, so good in so many different situations, excuse me, but it's so versatile at the same hand. You can build it so many different ways. You can go Blood Razor. You can go full tank. So there's a lot of things you can do. I'm excited to see how that pick does pan out. If you are in chat, if you are new, the NECC is broadcasting esports five days a week. Overwatch, League of Legends, Madden, Rocket League. I, I missed one. Overwatch. Overwatch. We got there. Uh, so five days a week, uh, then the CC is sponsored by HyperX. No matter who you are or how you play, we're all gamers and by ESTV, the first ever dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities. We're pumped to be here. We ask if you're new, Hey, hit that follow button. I just said there's five days of esports. Who in the right mind would want to miss out on that? Who? Tell me. Look, chat, look at me deep in the eyes. Nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to miss this level of esports, this level of broadcast. Right? We got coach in the booth. We got me in the booth. The energy is unparalleled. The analysis is unparalleled. The gameplay is unparalleled. I am just ready to get into picks and bands here. We're just patient, just patiently waiting, wait, waiting for everyone to start it up. Uh, coach, I, you talked to me before the, before we got on air here. I'd like you to show your grievances to the world. Maybe we can have some forgiveness for coming in a moment, but in week two. <laughs> You are the coach, you know, of the, of the Peacocks. I, I just, I'd take it away. What, what, what's your, what's your big grievance with me? Uh, well, uh, let's start by saying we loved your stream on week two. We absolutely loved it. It helped that 100%. Uh, we, we had a great day. We had an absolute great day. And in the, the first round of the best of three, uh, our mid laner went off for 30 kills in a 20 minute game. And I think it was about the seventh kill. And you sat there and you just called it out. You know, there it is, Sushi Rice, the eraser. 
Uh, and it wasn't until after because I was calling our stream on our stream, but going back afterward, my team was like, coach, 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 you got to look at this. You got to look at this. And I take a look and I hear it and I go, wait a minute. No, that's, that's my gamer tag. You can't be using my gamer tag as a nickname for, for my mid laner. He's got enough nicknames. He's, he's good enough. He doesn't need anything more. Uh, so uh, it was a great stream though. You, you're, you're really good at what you do. And I'm just hoping I can keep up with you tonight. Oh, I am sure we will not have an issue keeping up, Coach. I'm, I'm already feeling the energy. I'm feeling the excitement. As we said, chat, I know we're impatient to start the game. I know. I know. We, we all want to see the League of Legends. We're just, we're just holding off. We got some R's in, in chat. We're just waiting on the players and the coaches and everybody to give us the go-ahead to get into picks and bans here. But another exciting week in the NECC. Last week, we saw our very first series on stream go to a full three. We're going to see what's in store for today. Personally, I think if a series is going to go to three, it's going to be this game between Champlain and Becker. San Ambrose versus Valpo later on could get ugly in a hurry. Valparaiso sitting on a one and three record right now. While St. Ambrose, the Fighting Bees, are sitting at three and one. And their program is absolutely renowned. Uh, shout out to Coach Newcomb if you're there in chat running a very, very solid program there. What do you see here, Coach, just from your general knowledge of esports? Why do you think we see sweep so much more often than any other outcome in series that feature collegiate teams? Are you talking about just League of Legends or across the board? Uh, in, in general, across the board, it's, it's a phenomenon where you experience more sweeps in collegiate than in the pro scene. Uh, I think it comes down, uh, honestly, to tilt. I think, you know, a team goes down game one, they kind of get discouraged, and maybe they say, okay, well, our game plan didn't work. We should try something new. And it's like, no, no, stick with your game plan. If that was your game plan, if you guys took all week coming up with it, don't abandon it just because it went badly once. It's one thing I have to tell my team all the time because they want to, like, they lose game one. They want to change all the bands. I'm like, no, we know who we want to ban. Just because they had a great game on Hecarim doesn't mean we want to turn around and ban the Hecarim. No, we need to ban Graves. Uh, we need to ban the, the one trick Nocturne. Get them out of here. Let them have the Hecarim again. There's no way he plays it that well twice in a row. And maybe, you know, we just picked a pick to counter it instead of trying to ban it away uh you can't throw away your strategy and i think the pro teams know that i think the pro teams know this is our strategy this is what's going to work maybe a couple of tweaks here and there but i i just think the college teams are ready and willing to throw it all away just to try to change everything if they lose the first round yeah absolutely don't want to throw out the homework you've been doing all week just because the first assignment came back with a c minus i completely agree as we are in to the picks and bands now some good insight from coach there anything particular you're looking to see here out of these first round of six bands coach uh first round bet i'm i'm thinking that uh with the trundle being buffed we might not see as many tank bands because if the tanks get picked up, you're just going to see the trundle get picked up to go after them. So I'm thinking maybe we see some more assassins banned uh, and just try to force people onto the tanks that trundle might be able to deal with. Absolutely. As you do see a set come out, there's the Nunu and Willem Jace to go as well. Of course, Becker will be on the right-hand side here. The Beavers will be on the left. So we do see the Thresh go as well. Interesting to ban out support in your first rotation of bans. Thresh is such a playmaker, though, as Vladimir goes as well, taking away that late game scaling. What does that signal to you when you're taking out a support there in the first round? Is Orn will be a final ban? Uh, Orn's a great ban, by the way. Uh, if you're taking out a support in the first three, it says to me that you've done your homework and maybe their support is a one trick, or maybe he just plays really well on that particular champion, or maybe... Uh, alternatively, maybe your bot lane really hates to see that champion. Uh, I mean, Thresh is always hanging around the meta. He's always right there. Even if he's not S tier, he's always hanging around high A, low A. So it's uh, it's one that's always available to be used. I've never seen it that far out of the meta, at least in the last couple of years. It's never been that far out of the meta. So, I mean, but I would say definitely doing your, your scouting, you either see it for the, the enemy support or you just don't want to see it at all. Yeah, absolutely. You do see a Graves, Oriana, Jin coming through for the Beavers on the side of the Hawks. Nara, Valley Bear, Syndra locked in. Immediately, my eyes are drawn to this front line that the Hawks are building. Becker going big with Nar and Volley Bear. Syndra, control mage in the back line to back it all up. On the other side, you see Graves coming through the jungle. That's a lot of damage. So two conflicting strategies here. Which do you prefer? Which will you get the edge here? The Graves or the Volley Bear out of the jungle? 
I I think it really comes oh, in the jungle specifically. Uh, I think I like Graves into the Volibear in the jungle. I'm waiting to see, and it's going to be an Aurelia, it looks like, probably in the top lane. Okay, I was waiting to see if going into the Gnar with the Volibear jungle, if we talked about the, the Trundle, I was waiting to see the Trundle come out into, into Gnar and Volibear, but uh, the Aurelia is not a bad choice either. Uh, but yeah, with the if we're just talking about the jungle, I like the Graves into the Volibear. Absolutely. As we do see a Karma Alistar picked up the end of the, in addition to the Ezreal Karma, another one of those champions that was recently buffed. We'll see if it comes through. The only thing that's worrying me right now, Coach, on the side of Champlain, the Beavers, is that Alistar's really their only front line. They're going to have to position very smartly here in team fights, and it becomes that much harder to play front to back when you don't have anyone absorbing the hits. Where on the other side, you're going to have this NAR. You're going to have this Volley Bear buying time for Cinder and Ezreal to get it done. I think what's going to have to happen here from Champlain is that the uh, the smoke from the graves is going to have to be perfect. That's how you're going to keep your team alive. Uh, if the enemy can't see you to shoot you, then you're golden. Uh, and you only need one tank if, if you've got the smoke down. So the, the smoke from the graves is going to have to be on point. And if it is, I think you're going to see a lot of damage coming out of the Oriana out of nowhere. And you, you won't be able to reposition away from it if you can't see the ball coming down. Yeah, absolutely. And talk about this Oriana, though. One of the big questions is, is Alistar the only viable ball carrier in this composition? Uh, Alistar, I mean, Graves technically has a gap closer, but if Graves is getting in there, getting down and dirty in the midst of the team fight, I don't know how much you're doing. What other opportunities does Oriana have to use this ball? I mean, I think that Logic Mia is going to have to be very tactful, very tricky with the positioning of his ultimate ability. I think absolutely. Uh, I think you don't want to discredit the Aurelia, though. I mean, the Aurelia is not going to be a hard engage, but she can jump in there from just about any angle. And if played correctly, you can jump out as well. And especially if you combo that with Oriana trying to do something, and then, you know, you've got her coming, Aurelia coming in the back, and you're still talking about that smoke being right in the middle. All of a sudden, you're being hit by three from three sides, Alistar's on top of your face. And you have to choose your targets very wisely in a hurry. And uh, a single misclick could lose you the entire team fight. Absolutely. We've got a minute and a half, a little bit more change than that going into the game. Let's go position by position and break down who you give the advantage to. Let's start in the bot lane here, Coach. Jin and Alistar going up against Ezreal Karma. What are your thoughts there? That is That has the uh, opportunity there to be a kill lane. That has the opportunity both ways to be a bloodbath down there. Uh, if the Ezreal's not careful, I think the Ezreal will get locked down. I don't think, at least before level four, uh, with, without items, I don't think Karma's shield will be enough to save him if he gets locked down. Uh, so he's going to have to probably save the jump to disengage, at least early. Uh, and then... I think as soon as they hit six, uh, and Karma starts with her ultimate, but as soon as they hit six... I'm looking for, uh, and they get some items. I'm looking for Ezreal to try to harass the Jin, uh, try to dance around the Alistar down there and just get to the back, get to the Jin, uh, who is known for being immobile. Absolutely. Cinder and Oriana in the mid lane, matchup of two control mages. Who you got? <laughs> uh, I will take whoever screws up second. Uh, that, that, when you got two mages like that, it's going to come down to whoever makes the second mistake is going to win because they've already capitalized off the first mistake. I'm going to think the mid lane might come down to the first really good gank. Absolutely. Moving up to the jungle. We already got your opinion on that. You like the graves going to the volley bears. We'll send it right up to the top lane. Aurelia going up against Nar. Coach, who do you <laughs> think prevails just looking at it here? It's... I, I think Aurelia takes a lot of poke but as soon as nars and megaform i think aurelia actually will have the advantage all right well we are going to find out now spectator delay has finally gone through we just gotta wait through the loading screen we're gonna take our customary pause at five seconds into the game just to sync everything up count down with the producer and then get into it but here comes the most important part of the match loading screen is when we see which team has more skins and everybody knows skins get wins <laughs> All right. Oh, everyone. Everyone knows. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And in addition, there are some new skins. Let me check the patch notes quick. There's a new Karma skin, Odyssey Karma. Uh, Everything else, there's no new skins. Do we have the new... Oh, there it is! Sir Yakov coming in clutch with the Odyssey skin. 
Woo! There is some heat. The Battle Academia, Ezra, Star Guardian, Thunderlord, Gentleman Nar. We have a full skin game minus Aurelia. Jack Carter. Losing losing the game. Just outright. Doesn't doesn't have a skin on the Aurelia. Uh, I, I think that's gonna do it. That that absolutely decides. The Beavers, no way, no way you can come back from a five to four skin deficit. Let's be honest right now. Uh, open up the pocketbook. Jack Carter, you gotta put in the work. You gotta put in the work. I don't know, wash some dishes, do some chores, <laughs> shovel some driveways. I don't know what climate you live in, but you really gotta go for it. All right, I have loaded in. We're gonna pause at five seconds when we get there and then count it all down together for this first series. Coach Jim will be taking us through the play-by-play. -play. I will be on the color, and for the second match of the day, we will flip. So in three, two, one, I am paused to five seconds. Coach? Are you all paused at five seconds? Uh, yes. Mr. Producer Man, are we paused at five seconds? Three, two, one, play! Oh, I missed it by a second. And I think we should all be good here. Coach, take us away here in game number one of series number one between Champlain and Becker. All right, Champlain on the blue side. They will be going from your bottom left to your top right. Becker, obviously, that means on the top right going to the bottom left. So Becker, as I like to say, coming downhill. I always like to come downhill myself. It seems a little bit easier than going uphill. We have five stacked here on the upper river just east of the blue buff you see the ward come out though so probably not a hard invade because they saw the ward nope they're gonna go for it anyway they saw the ward coming in they're gonna go for it anyway we might get action here early you see Jin backing alistar backing both out of sight so it looks like they were trying to do something uh maybe just mess around with their headspace a little bit However, because they were caught out on that ward, which I thought they saw get placed, so it was kind of a weird invade, uh, the bot lane for Becker were able to come in, drop two huge deep wards, uh, one just outside the Raptor Pit and one on the red buff. So, Ethan, early vision advantage. Going to go to Becker. Will go to Becker indeed. However, to note, the Beavers do get a ward down right in front of that Raptors pit, so they will have some information of their own. Both of them are going to work from bottom to top side here. I'm looking, as you said, in a good way matchup between these control mages who aren't going to have a ton of explosives and neither Raw Ignite. Both can teleport a bit slower, right? Um, I'm looking to see which jungler ganks mid first and which jungler gets a kill mid first. I think those are two important distinctions. Who will have the more fruitful ganks here? But yeah, I think that early vision is going to be essential, especially with the jungler like Graves. We see a little bit of level one. Myerson looking for his he's not going to find it. Uh, and what I'm looking at, you were talking about which jungler ganks and gets the kill first in the mid lane. I'm more looking at which jungler ganks first and allows the mid laner to take the kill. And I think that will be far more important than the jungler sitting on the extra kill. At least early on in the game, the kill on the mid laner can mean that extra small item, which gives them all the advantage they will need. Trading going on. We see Aurelia actually going in here against a uh, small Nar, so getting poked at, but not afraid to go in and pick up that CS. Great trading actually going on there in the top lane. And there we go, Nar going into Mega Nar for the first time up there in the top lane. In the bot lane, the poke has mostly come from Becker at this point. Uh, unless, yep, no no potions have been used, so the poke has been coming out of Becker at this point. You see both junglers just jungling from bot side to top side. Uh, so nobody uh, really going anything crazy yet. Although you do see that the Volibear Bear is up two camps on the graves. So something to look at there is you see the vision uh, cone get burst there. Volar Bear going to be the first one into the river, just waiting as right now the Rift Scuttle will spawn. Although it looks like Volar Bear was thinking about an invade there uh, as we're still looking at the mid lane here. As uh, Ethan, did you have something? No, I just say absolutely. I think about a game there indeed. Briar Bloom going to be able to sniff that one out. I like what I'm seeing here. Cinder, you see rotating up. They want to ensure they get that scuttle crab 100%. Cinder's going to be able to a little bit farm, but it's a big team play to get some vision in the river and a little bit of gold to the jungle. I say at the moment, the big thing I'm looking at is the immense jungle lead building for Becker on that Volibear. 
Uh, two and a half camps up on the Graves, and we're only four minutes in to the match. Still looking around, it's just a little bit of poke still in every lane. Uh, early back coming from the Aurelia. Uh, the Graves backing as well. Uh, actually, the Aurelia, it looks like she got stopped from backing, gonna go in on the Meganar. Uh, so she doesn't want to miss that cannon wave there. And you see Volibear kind of hanging out in the bot side jungle of uh, Champlain. And it looks like he's going to try to find an angle on the Oriana. He's behind her. Here she goes. She gets stunned. Volibear in honor. That will be the flash. Let's see if this will do it. And she might. Nope. Cinder will clean that one up. I was thinking maybe right on the edge she might have gotten away. But there it is. That's what we talked about. The gank coming in and the jungler giving it to the mid laner for that early mid lane lead. Absolutely. First blood handed over. Heatcher picking it up. Chat loves that one. And Heatcher taps for the game, but we talked about it before the game. Who's going to make that first move in the mid lane? We saw how it happened. Heatcher down farm. Didn't matter. Is going to be able to back there and look at the items for the lane. Lost chapter. Full corrupting bots. Does get control work to boot. So a lot going on there as we do see some action in the top lane. Jack Carter trying to make up for not having a skin. And doing a really good job of it, but the NAR stopping them. That was loud. The NAR stopping them from backing. They were sitting low on mana for a long time unable to really push the advantage because they have a huge CS lead, 15 CS lead right now, and it's just going up as they're taking minions under tower. So it's just a little bit bigger actually than the CS lead that the Volibear has over the graves in the jungle. But the Volibear also has that assist, so a little bit of extra gold. But as we're talking about that, unopposed, Graves takes the first strike, Infernal Drake, extra damage going to Champlain. And uh, just a lack of vision there, do you think, Ethan? Yeah, I think a lack of vision, more a lack of awareness. I think that when teams get that first blood, they can have a tendency to become a little bit comfortable. It's easy to look up at the scoreboard. You know, the time towers, but we do have that first blood, so you assume you're up a gold. You assume you're all good, but all of a sudden, Sajern sneaks in there. Only level four, level down on Zeta, is able to take it from right under their noses. So I think it's a combination of lack of awareness and overconfidence for them. But regardless, First drag will be handed over. Second drag will be an earth drag in just over four minutes. Meaning we're either going to have an ocean or a wind soul on this map. You know, we were talking about Heatcher there in the mid lane for Becker being down on the CS. However, with the first blood, you see on their back the first item, Lost Chapter. Pre seven minute Lost Chapter. I think uh, that might spell the end of the mid lane there if they can get another kill. Yakov's going to be in a little bit of trouble here, Coach. And I think the Ignite will not take out the Karma. Jin was not close enough to get a shot in. Although, that might have been, in my mind, that might have been if you were close enough for a Flash uh, W, might have been able to do the Karma in. I think they were just out of visual range to make that play happen. Uh, and as we see the Volibear coming up into the top lane here, and Aurelia gonna jump to the Volibear, gonna get stunned down, will flash away, but takes two thirds of the health bar there. So Volibear, another good gank. This one did not end in a kill, but bought pressure for their top laner, who now gets to free farm while Aurelia has to back minus her teleport. Absolutely, and being the flash down, being the teleport down is going to hurt early on there in the top lane. Jakob scanning as if they thought Graves was invading some some odd, uh, an odd prediction that doesn't come to fruition. The prophecy doesn't come true. Myerson going to clear some wards out here in the bot side of the river. Still got my eyes in the mid lane. Uh, both of these, in my mind, these the, the keys to the car here are both held by these control mages, creating opportunities. We're gonna see Alistar maybe looking around for a gank. Can Lodge Mia get back in this lane? As you said, it's so tough to deal with that lost chapter this early on. In addition, they bought the Dark Seal, which is signal that, hey, I'm up in the lane. I plan to be up in this lane for the next 10 minutes of the game. I am going to start stacking this Dark Seal up. There's definitely a mental barrier that Logic Mia has to climb. Just seeing the items, knowing that you've been ganked and that Sadrin has not had the opportunity to gank your lane yet. Interested to see how these control mages develop.
And Sejun hasn't ganked any lanes yet. He took the Drake, and it's always great to watch your jungler take an objective. But at the moment, you know, you'd love to see him show up in your lane, any lane, really. Uh, Champlain has CS advantages in the in all three lanes. Uh, and at that point, if you can bury your opponent this early, well, it's not that early in laning phase anymore. But if you can bury your opponent and then just keep shoveling on the CS after more CS, uh, you'll find the snowball really early as Alistar able to knock Volibar, Volibar away there from the tri-bush. As Volibar trying to take out that control ward, but I think he will succeed. In the top lane, though, we have trade going on here. Aurelia going in on the Gnar. Mega Gnar about to come out there, and there it is. Uh, so not able to go in there. And another control ward drop. So at this point, uh, Champlain just kind of uh, handing over some donations to the Volibear's uh, defense fund there. As Volibear will most likely use the money to buy some defensive items. As more poking in the top lane there. As Nar and Aurelia going at it. Jack, Carter, and Gibbiv. I'm going to go with Gibbiv for that pronunciation there. Tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, just going at it in the top lane there. Uh, as we see at the 10 minute mark here. Gold lead is non existent for either team. They are dead heat here on the gold score. Absolutely. Keep your eyes around this dragon pit. 40 seconds of the next dragon spawns. Who will really put themselves in position to have priority here as we do see Karma heading up maybe the ward, maybe more so to try and get a gank here. We'll be spotted out on that ward. We do see Graves on the top side. Sir Yakov, I love this play. I just said, who's going to do what they can to get priority on this dragon? You're the support. You see that the lane is pushing. You may as well secure that Scuttle Crab's vision that will not go away as Meyerson going to do their part, clearing out a ward, scooping up some quick 30 gold in the back of their pocket. So right now, uh, priority on the dragon being set up by Yakov. It's, it's going to be tough for Becker, or er, excuse me. Oh yeah, for Becker to lose priority. You have that. Your jungler's on the bot side. It looks like everyone's hovering around. No teleport from either top lane. Keep your mind, it this will is going to be, be straight up 4v4. It will be a straight 4v4 here. Uh, the smoke came in early there. I, the, they, uh, Champlain might have to wait for the smoke to come back if they want to go in here. Uh, we talked about that earlier, that the smoke is going to be huge for the engage for Champlain. As we see, the top laners going at it really at trying to keep Nar uh, handled up there in the top lane. has been doing a very good job. The Ocean Drake, though, has been aggroed, so Becker on the Drake. Uh, Champlain sitting in the back here. Graves goes over the wall. Might have a slight fight in here, and it will go to the Volibear. However, Volibear is going to have to try to get out. He turns around as the bot lane from Champlain shows up. Aurelia, thinking about diving tower, will not go in. And uh, Becker able to disengage there. Uh, however, very quietly, I didn't even see it. Very quietly, we had the Graves take the Rift Herald, which is now sitting in the bot lane. So something that they're going to have to think about here, uh, Becker's going to have to move some people over to take care of that threat. I need to be able to kill it here. Down to 4 to 18, looks like he's in one charge. There's a dive under the tower from Meyerson. So he's end up getting one charge. Oh, no. Estio, what are you doing? Oh, we get the flash there, Coach. Costly endeavor. Costly endeavor under tower, burning the flash on the ADC there. Yeah, no, that, uh, not what you want to see there. Uh, Ezreal does have other escapes, but not what you want to see, uh, when backing up was an option early on there. Absolutely, the charge does yield some plates off the tower, so two plates off the bot tower. Keep your eye on Expios and Meyerson's purchases here, as we do see the Jin will be walking back to lane with the Storm Razor. Meyerson has the tier two boots, and you see that exchange in the mid lane, has wards, has the kill gem, a little bit tankier, and I think that's going to be important. Watch this Alistar's build, because as you said, the smoke is important, the smoke is vital coming out from the graves, because they don't have a lot of tankiness. It's gonna be tough for them to fight front to back, what can Myerson do to be that beef in the team fights? We are going to find out as we've just hit the 13 minute mark. Still only one kill on the board. You know, we were looking at the mid lane. We were talking about Syndra getting the uh, the first big partial item there. However, if you take a look, Oriana with the Archangel staff in the inventory uh, at 13 minutes. So something to look at there. Uh, you know, I said I was going to pick whichever one made the second mistake. Uh, but And so Oriana made the first one, so you'd think I was picking Syndra, but as it's looking right now, I think Oriana's played a very good laning phase here after being the first death. Absolutely, just looking at the farm totals, being 3 CS up when you were out of lane due to a death. You were down items due to the death. You haven't really gotten that gank that you've been looking for from Sajern yet. 
just hasn't come through is Meyerson. Not exactly where you want to be as a support row and all alone. Very impressive play from Logic Mia right now coming through on the Oriana. And I think you're really going to feel that in the team fights late game. This ultimate, if they can come through, the shockwave could be absolutely essential to finding valuable team fight opportunities. And the CS really has evened out. There were some bigger leads across the board. The one that's still a fairly substantial lead is for the Aurelia in the top lane. Full Bork on the Aurelia, still only partial items on the Gnar. And Aurelia has just kind of been punishing the Gnar the entire laning phase. Uh, hasn't been able to take the kill yet. Uh, Mega Gnar usually able... And there's a tower dive opportunity as I'm talking about it. Oh. And there we go. Solo kill in the top lane as Jack Carter on the Aurelia says, No, I don't care that you're transforming. I'm going to dive your tower and I'm going to take you down anyway. Jack Carter delves into the land of the giant slaying Meganar under the tower, evening up the kills on the tables. Coach, we've got Myerson in trouble here. Myerson got rooted there by the Karma. His team showed up with him, though. Graves and Jin both here. Jin goes into the ultimate, misses the first two shots, hits the third one, but they strike the Singer, who was at full health. And I think, once again, we had almost a team fight, and everyone just kind of backed away there. So, still looking for that big team fight. So far, it's it's been skirmishes. We've seen a lot of health bars go very low, but so far, haven't seen that big bloodbath that we've been waiting for. Absolutely. It kind of feels like both teams are just kind of dancing around this big team fight, and I think you're going to find it once either Logic, Mia, or Heacher is in the front line, has an opportunity to create some plays with these control mages that they're on. The engage opportunity, well, it's it's present from the top laners as well. Uh, top lane has just been an island all game long. You can engage with the volley bear, but it's just a little bit harder. You have to find the correct angle opportunities. We do see Jack Carter going back in the top lane. Coach, you've got to love the aggressive play coming out from Jack Carter in this game so far. Got to love it. Got to love it. Uh, and as we like to say on, on our stream, my color commentator likes to say, uh, metered aggression. Not just full aggression, but metered aggression, knowing when to go in, when to be aggressive, and when to get out of dodge before something bad happens. Talking about something bad happening, there's members of Champlain that are about to get pinched here in the river as they're trying to set up priority as in the top lane of uh, once again Aurelia going and getting a solo kill on the NAR as her team tries to get priority on this Ocean Drake uh, and he, the Volibear Bear going in so team fight starts here it's a 3v3 with Sindra coming in from the side teleport coming in from the Aurelia as you see Jin go down and Karma go down Volibear Bear goes down as well so there is the jungler going Sindra will go down as well so one for three, and that will be an Ocean Drake going the way of Champlain. So early game went the way of Becker, but right now Champlain looks to be in control of the mid game. Yeah, Champlain pulling together there. A lot of kills dropping, considering we're knotted up at one apiece before that whole sequence. Kicked it off with Jack Carter in the top lane, who's just absolutely taking GBHP's lunch money right now. Playing with a whole lot of fervor. Then on the bot side around this dragon, we did see the fight developed. I like the play. Zeta went in with the ulti, engaged on the back line. The only issue was Rexdus was just so far away from the rest of the team that there wasn't any opportunity to lay down any damage on the back line. They got in there. They couldn't quite clean up the rest of it. That would be all she wrote, as you said. The Beavers walk away with their second drag of the game. Will be an ocean drag. It will be an ocean soul for our first game of our first match of the night. And the big issue there for the Beavers uh, was the fact, I'm sorry, for Becker. Man, why is Becker not the Beavers? That's my question. <laughs> alliteration alliteration should, be, uh, should be exalted, let me tell you. Uh, but Becker, their big problem was their, their top laner was dead, and the Aurelia was able to teleport into that fight. She got a kill in that fight, and was able to absolutely turn it around, because it was even numbers on that fight. The Volibear, and talk about the Volibear, he's right here going up into the Aurelia. Aurelia going to try to get out, get stunned into the wall. Meganar and Volibear chasing her down now. However, Ezreal comes out, doesn't do enough to kill her, and Oriana came up. Oriana might get her out here as the sun comes down on the Volibear. Aurelia, and here we go, Alistar oh. coming up as well. So great roam there as the Ignite gonna oh. get it. Alistar ignites the last tick. We'll take the Nar down. The fight isn't done yet, though. 
Karma was rotating as well, and at the moment, Champlain has four chasing the Karma away from the Rift Herald, and it looks like they have three, four here, make it three as Oriana goes back to mid lane, as they have uh, two on the Herald, Alistar coming over as well, and so that will most likely be an unopposed Rift Herald, as Jin in the bot lane barely gets away from the Syndra under tower. Gonna have to be careful, that might be a back right there. Rotations everywhere, very quietly as we're watching this. Uh, Ethan, what did we just see there on the top lane? We just saw a blockbuster film entitled Saving Private Jack Carter. The whole team rolling up to save the Aurelia. Good play by Logic Mia, didn't quite find the shockwave that they were looking for, but don't look away just yet. Meyerson rolling up in the nick of time, dropping the ignite, able to finish off that kill in the GBHV. Zaydanoise has to back off in the 3v1 situation, and it leads to them being able to crack open the map, getting the Rift Herald, and you're seeing it right now. They're going to be able to claim so much gold in the mid lane. They're going to be able to take down a tower, alleviating a lot of pressure on the map. You said it best, Coach. The rotations there were absolutely beautiful for the Beavers. They are working as a team so well right now. Champlain, they had the rotations. They rotated down, they took the Rift Herald while they were doing that. Aurelia went back up to the top lane, knocked down the top lane tower like it was made of popsicle sticks. They were able to drop the Rift Herald then in the mid lane. So two lanes now, missing towers for Becker. 4,000 gold down now, 20 minutes in. The snowball is starting. And uh, Becker's got to find a way to find a team fight to get a couple of kills here. Maybe get a couple of shutdowns because there is a huge one available on the Aurelia. Uh, and they just got to find the shutdown. But number two, they have to find it on the correct champion. Absolutely. A bag of 450 gold on Aurelia's head. Jack Carter, you know, for as much as we said, coming into the game, bringing down the team with no skins. Uh, has 3-0-1 right now, 200 farm in the top lane. Definitely doing their part against this Gnar, and we're going to see potential setup here. Jack Carter clearing the vision. Uh, keep your eyes on top lane. They're going to try to collapse on Jack Carter here, Coach. They absolutely are going to try to collapse here. I think Carter sees it coming, and uh, turn tail ran. It's not always a bad thing to run away. Some sometimes it's the smartest thing you can do. Uh, get yourself out of danger. While that's going on, on the bot side, Vision being cleared by Meyerson, Vision being dropped by Meyerson. The jungle is completely warded there for Champlain. They know everything coming. And they're going to dive under tower here. Cinder going to go down. It's just a question of who is going to get it. It will be the Oriana. Not a question of if, just a matter of when. And not only will that be the Oriana, but this will be the bot tower as well. So all three outer towers will have fallen here for Becker and less than 30 seconds away from the next Ocean Drake in the pit. Absolutely. Could not have a worse time to have your towers fall. All three of your lanes will now be pushing as you've not claimed a single tower yet. The Hawks are looking like they are in a lot of trouble. Let's see what they do concerning this drag. They have zero play. They have to try to steal. It's going down so, so quick. I, I think they're going to let it go. Yeah. I think, that's the, I think that's the right play. You don't want to go in there. Uh, even with the teleport advantage from your top lane, I, I think that's a fool's errand to go in there because if you misplay that one, that could be the entire game right there. Absolutely. You just have to accept accountability. Now that next dragon, you have to go in. If you give up the soul already down by this much, already also giving up both Rift Heralds over the course of this game is... Uh, I thought they were thinking about Baron for a second there, but they won't quite go that nuts early on in the game. Uh, you have, as I was saying, you have to set up for the next drag. You can't just hand over the soul, especially where the state of the game is right now. I'll be interested to see how they do that next drag. Will be four minutes and 20 seconds away, so the clock is ticking. Uh, th that that isn't in essence the game. If you give up that soul uncontested, don't gain some insane amount of value. Maybe trade a Baron and some kills for it. You're really handing the game over on a silver platter. Coach, what can they do in the next four minutes and change to set up for this next dragon? They have to find a pick. They have to find a pick somewhere. And Aurelia in the bot lane going into the Syndra. Syndra won't be able to get away here. She did not have it. The stun coming out from the Aurelia. And Syndra just disappeared. She almost disappeared sooner than we could talk about it. Uh, the Aurelia right now absolutely hammering Becker. Uh, just 1v5. It looks like she can just take them all on right now. Uh, and that's the exact opposite of what Becker needed. Becker needed to find a pick of their own. They needed to find some 
gold to put in their pockets so they could find some more items to put in their pockets and instead giving it up and here we go the roam to the top lane alistar going in on the nar pushing him backwards they're not going to dive that tower probably a good call there but they do have a big cannon minion wave here let's see if they stick around they will not over they're collapsing on the karma so maybe they'll dive the mid tower as alistar and graves have paired up here for a little bit looking, yeah, uh, looking to engage Roaming around, I like the 2v2. Ezreal just clears some minions. Jack Carter going in once again there. Been pretty hard to top on that really. As you said, it looks like he 1v1 anyone on their team. Probably take most 2v1s here. I think it was very smart to turn away from that opportunity the top side to dive tower. Maybe if you would have got the shockwave down from Logic Mia, you could have had a play. Would have had to spend a lot of resources. But Meyerson sticking around with that top side here. Jack Carter going in. Looking more like Jack Carver, the butcher right now. But it's going to get shut down there, coach. I, I think uh, I think Jack Carter there. I think they got a little bit uh, too hyped on their own hype train. I think they were listening to the hype man a little bit too much, and possibly forgot about the fact that Syndra, even when playing from behind, drops a ridiculous amount of damage. Not only that, but playing under Syndra's tower, uh, you're gonna have to be very careful. And uh, the, the walk away there, the Syndra just walking away, the, the tower shots finishing it off. But that was exactly what Becker needed, and it's on the carry. Not only did they get the shutdown, but it's the shutdown on the carry. And that's probably going to be, uh, they already had the loons. That'll be probably another half item at least. Yeah, absolutely. Big play by Heatcher there, trying to put the team on the back and set up for this next dragon. Sir Yakov going to clear a little bit of vision. We've got a minute and 40 until this drag is up. If you're the Beavers, your eyes are as wide as they can be, as this is going to be the soul as long as you can secure it. But you hit the nail right on the head, Coach. Heatcher picking that up was so big, getting the gold. Has an additional Needless to Large Rod. Has the Void Stab. Has the Luden's Echo. In addition, Corrupting Pot. Some wards to boot. Doing everything right here. But you've got to like we're seeing from the Beavers. They're pushing up and clearing out vision here, Coach. They are. And um, I was actually really quickly looking at the itemizations. Uh, you see item advantages on almost every member of Champlain. But the important items, the important first items for Becker, they have. Uh, Gnar with the Black Cleaver. Dead Man's Plate on the Vola Bear. Triforce on the Ezreal. Unholy Grail on the Karma. Yes, they are at an item disadvantage, but the items they have are the items they need. Uh, I don't want to forget the Mana Mune on the Ezreal as well. So if it comes down to it, uh, they, they do have what they need to make a play of it here as that Drake up in 40 seconds. The top laners back in the top lane. Nar in Mega Nar at the moment, trying to get some damage down on the Aurelia. They will trade right there. In fact, they trade stuns back and forth. Both top laners have their teleport available, so we can see both of them get to the Dragon Pit. Volibear did back pick up a little bit of extra armor right before they go in to what is going to be a fight outside the Dragon Pit here. Ezreal streaming toward the pit as well. Champlain in the river, clearing vision continuously, making sure that coming in blind is the only choice Becker has. Nar looks to be backing to the fountain. You'll probably see the teleport come from there as Nar picked up a Spectre's cowl. Ezreal all comes out early. They had no idea that they weren't in on the Drake. Volibear in the front has no one with them. Alistar will take him down. Aurelia in the back doing a bunch of damage. Graves will finish off the Karma. Ezreal goes down to Graves as well. Three for nothing at the moment. Jin goes into his ultimate, I think, just to zone out the Cinder. Got a little damage down as well. Graves in the back will pick up Soul Drake. So the Ocean Soul going the way of Champlain as that team fight was executed perfectly by the Beavers. Absolutely, Jack Carter, the Hunter of Hawks, taking a roost in Becker's Nest. And they're going to be right on to the Baron here, Coach. They handled that team fight so well. Zayda is just not on the same page as the rest of the team. Bolivar alts in. And, of course, once you Stormbringer in, you can't Stormbringer out. None of the team there. None of the damage there, importantly. This Baron will be falling. Jin scooping it up. So a massive swing of momentum. And they were all ready ahead. Becker, it's looking dire for them right now, Coach. It, it was about a 4,000 gold lead after those two big objectives and that team fight. It's a 7,500 gold lead. Uh, and that's two full items. You're looking at two full items on the side of Champlain. Uh, and... 
you know, that's all the advantage you're going to need at the 28 minute mark in a game like this. You see both teams going through their jungle, picking up everything they can, looking for all of the gold they can get their hands on. Uh, but I don't know, unless Becker can find a really great team fight, I don't know how they're going to come back in this one. Looking at it, they've only got three kills, and if you look at the scoreboard, they are all on the Syndra, and not that many assists either. So just based on the gold taken from kills, I mean, let's look at the I mean, it's 11 to 3 on the kills, but then let's look at the assists. You got 7, 13, 20, 25 assists on the side of Champlain. That's a lot of extra money that they're looking at just for helping out their friends. Absolutely. They're playing much more as a team right now, a much more complete unit top to bottom. And this is something that surprised me is it really feels like that their disadvantage of not having a big front line, they have they can't fight front to back, has been negated just by the Hawks not being on the same page. We see another engage here, coach. Another big engage here. It's a one v three. Ezreal all comes in, doesn't catch any damage onto the Aurelia. Aurelia now in what's ostensibly a one v four, and still alive. We'll get a kill oh. on the Parma. Not done yet. They will trade it one for one, but meanwhile, while that's happening, everything else is going down. Oriana takes down the mid tower. The rest of Champlain taking down the top tower. Here goes the inhibitor. Let's see if they can get the mid tower and the middle inhibitor as well. And it looks like, okay, they're gonna have the siege minions on that top inhib, so they will take the top inhib. Let's see if they stay to siege the mid inhib. They're thinking about it. Oh, I think they're gonna stay. I think they're gonna stay here. They have two siege minions. They're putting damage down, and without a tower here, I don't know if Becker could actually stop them, but it looks like they will back off. So the 1v4 in the bot lane, we talked about Aurelia would be able to at least 1v2 any two members. Goes into the 1v4, trades for a kill, but while that was going on, three towers and an inhibitor destroyed. Uh, Becker might have been looking for that pick a little bit more than they were looking at their base. Absolutely! Is Jack Carter a direct competitor of Old Navy? Because just created a massive gap there for the top lane. They were able to push in, grab some towers, grab that top inhibitor, and look at this! It's had the inverse effect, or the same effect on the bot lane. Once you scooped up that inhibitor, you've got the supers running down top lane. It opens up opportunity in the bot side. Resources spread thin. The Hawks, they need to find something to rally around and find it in an absolute hurry. They need a string of picks and objective steals if they even want a chance to get back in this game. The only thing I can think of right now that 100% could get them back in the game is if they could somehow take the Elder. The Elder is such a massive buff that if you can take that one, you could turn around any team fight. One thing to note at the moment, uh, Heacher in the mid lane did finish their death cap. So three big items on the Syndra. And if the Syndra could drop uh, the, the ultimate on the majority of Champlain, that could be the entirety of the team fight. Yeah, absolutely. Chat informing me. Gap owns, owns Old Navy. All right, all right. You know what? Fine. Next time, next time I'll say Nautica. Is that, is that better? <laughs> I need, I need some other, uh, some other generic clothing brands. All right. I um, think you named all three of them. <laughs> oh, either way, the Beaver's absolutely going in this game. As I said, they have the soul secured. Oh, Zeta, you, you think you're being cheeky, but Jack Carter owns the Rift right now. It's very, very tough here, Coach, especially when your jungle is starting to get smothered out. You see Sir Yakov trying to gain some semblance of vision back, but the reality is... That this 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 is it for the game. You have to try to stall out and get lucky. Wait till the point where both teams have plateaued. But this Elder Dragon is up in 45 seconds. You, you gotta prevent it being taken from the Beavers here. Uh, if the Beavers get this Elder, they be are gonna be able to push. It has to be stolen. Uh, because I don't think you win the fight. I don't think you win that fight in the river. I think you, because you don't want to take the Elder with nobody left alive. That doesn't help you. I think it has to be a steal. I think Volibear has to take one for the team. Uh, however, as we're talking about Aurelia on the mid inhibitor. So with 20 seconds before the Elder comes up, Nar has to be in base trying to defend the inhibitor, which he knows he can't defend 1v1. He's standing there with a front row seat as the middle inhibitor will go down. So it's gonna be a 4v4 in the river. Volibear goes in alone. Uh, the rest of 
coming in from the bot lane. Karma gets stunned down. Big damage coming in on the Ezreal. He will go down as well. Oriana takes out the Syndra, so that's four. And they're going to say, we don't need the Elder. Why Why would, on Earth would we need the Elder? Aurelia is in their base. We have a wave. We're just going to go into the base, and we're going to take it now. This one might be over in the next 30 seconds. Absolutely beautifully played by the Beavers. Jack Carter pushing, makes you respect, have the Gnar in base. Gnar going to go down here. GBHV, the final defense, the final death in this 34-minute, 10-second game. The Beavers walk away, your big winners, in game number one. Wow, big performance from Myerson. 2-0-10 on support. Another yeah, not a lot more to say about that one. Yeah. Another perfect KD in the jungle there with Sajer and Coach, and you called it right Well, and, and the one to kind of look at. T take it away, Coach. You got Go it. Ahead. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. Take it away. I, I, I want to hear your thoughts on Sajer. Oh, no, you just called it great. We, we were talking about... Yeah, we, we were talking about Myerson. We were talking about Jack Carter. I actually was a little bit down on the Graves early. I'm like, wow, he hasn't ganked. Yeah, he got the objective. Yeah, he got the rift. But I mean, come on, where are the ganks at? But all of his lanes were ahead. He had the ability to look for the objectives. And then looking at the final scoreboard, it's like, oh, perfect KDA, 5-0 and 6. Well, I look like Nostradamus over here calling out the graves on top of the Volibear. Uh, but I just think the Volibear put himself in a lot of bad positions. Zeta Noise put themselves in a lot of bad spots being the engage, but doing so probably two or three seconds too soon before the damage showed up to help him. Is this conclusive evidence that skins don't go wins? Because Jack Carter, five, two, and four, but the impact was so much bigger than that KDA lets you know, led the game and farm with a monstrous 298 CS, 14,000 gold to boot. Big, big game. No skin to show for it. Get, getting it done with the default stuff. You know, some uh, some players just like the default skins. I know for the longest time playing on Swain, I only liked the default skin. Uh, it wasn't until I got enough uh, gemstones for the Hextech that I started rocking the Hextech skin with that really awesome purple jacket. I mean, come on, that purple coat is the only reason to play Hextech Swain. Uh, but sometimes, you know, and sometimes it's just easier for them to see the abilities. I know there's a couple of skins. I know some of my players are like, Coach, I can't see the abilities unless I'm on these two skins. There's 12 other ones I can never use because it's too hard to see the abilities. Absolutely. I, Coach, I, I see you flexing the hex deck. All right. I see you flexing your Tem Gen stones. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, but absolutely. What are your big takeaways from this game? And let, let's just talk a little game one MVP, if you had to say. Oh, man. Um, I mean, can we say anyone except Jack Carter? I don't think we can. Uh, the solo kills. The solo kills at the proper times. Killing the Gnar before the dragon fight, being able to TP in while Gnar was stuck, respawning, giving Champlain the 5v4, uh, just completely outplaying their lane, absolutely on the island. Uh, Vola Bear came up a few times, but uh, Graves never really in the top lane and just kept their laner there, kept their laner down, uh, and just really put Gnar in a hole Gnar never got out of. Uh, yeah, Aurelia, by the end of the game, had two deaths. But, I mean, their deaths were two entire teams. Aurelia did not die to one, two, or even three individuals. It took an entire team from Becker to go and take Jack Carter out. And as we talked about, while that was going on, the entire base fell. So I don't think there's anybody else in the conversation right now except for Jack Carter for MVP of game number one. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely correct, Jack Carter. I mean, like we said, the KDA wasn't perfect, as we saw from two members of the team. And phenomenal play from the Alistar Sport. Phenomenal play coming out from the Graves Jungle. But just the positioning, right? There's things that don't show up on the stat sheet necessarily, even looking strictly at the KDA. Uh, the CS obviously does come through a very impressive number, nearly totaling 300. But the positioning in the team fights, getting to the back line, creating space across the map, right? Pick that 1v4 fight, traded allowed space to open up the team could move in and they they did a lot with it right that was kind of the beginning of the end that was like the second or third last nail in the coffin so just phenomenal game sense coming through from jack carter coach 
Well, and not only trading, but surviving for so long. Becker couldn't back until they secured the kill. And I, I think it was an extra four seconds on a couple of great maneuvers with under 100 health that just sitting there hanging around like, oh, you're going to kill me. Don't worry. You've got this coming. However, it's going to take you way too long and you're going to lose way too much. Absolutely. I do think we are going to hop into the pro draft this time around. I know someone in chat was talking, asking about the ranks uh, of these teams. It's looking like a plat average. We've got some diamonds. We've uh, actually, it's one gold two is the low. Uh, what is that? D2 or D4? D4 is the high. D3 is the high. So uh, we're averaging right around plat for this game, looking very evenly matched up, which does make sense. Both teams do have two wins on the year. Uh, had it up earlier. I believe Becker is two and one. And Cham or Champlain is 2-1, and one. Becker is 2-2, two and two. so both teams fighting for priority in the standings right now. Very, something to look very at. excited. Something to look at. Both teams do have diamond players. Jack Carter is not one of them. Jack Carter said they're at plat one, uh, very quietly sitting there at plat one with 681 wins on the season. Uh, I don't know if I have 681 games played on the season, let alone 681 wins. Uh, so somebody's going to be looking at that one, scratching their head going, well, that was definitely a diamond game out of that Aurelia. A diamond game. And hey, you know what? That, that's got Jack saying, Hey, Ryan, uh, what, what's up? What's up with my, what's up my rank teammates? Huh? You, you see what I can do. I've done it on the big stage. Where are my good teammates? Uh, coach, just looking ahead to game number two, do you expect any changes in the picks and band phase particularly? Uh, well, this is what we talked about early. This is what we talked about earlier. You know, uh, Becker got beat. They got beat rather handedly. Let's see if they throw the baby out with the bathwater or if they stick with what they thought was going to be their good choices strategically. Um, personally, I think they will swap out at least one of their bands for the Aurelia because why wouldn't you? Uh, because kind of owned that first game. But I'm really hoping to see, like, with the exception of that one, I'm hoping to see. Uh, some consistent strategy coming from Becker uh, because they weren't down early. I mean, they got, they got down on one bad team fight, uh, but otherwise it was one to one, one Oh, one to one for the longest time. Absolutely. The J span will come through once again, as will the set. So we're starting off with two very familiar bands. It's interesting talking about the mindset uh, when you know the ranks of your opponents, what you choose to ban, what you don't, do you get emotional after that game? What is the mental game looking like after that game when Jack Carter did whatever they wanted to, whenever they wanted to? Noonan will up, Orn will go. Two more bans. No, no sight of the Aurelia yet. Uh, it might be right here for Becker's third ban. I would like to point out, you noted that the lowest rank among everyone was gold too, and that is on Sojourn, the, uh, the Champlain jungler who had the best KDA, I think, in that last game there. Yeah, uh, 506. Uh, 506, 202. I think Meyerson might have actually had it. The I think they're they're both points. perfect. They're both perfect. I don't, I don't know perfect. how you calculate it. There's more perfect, though, isn't there? Isn't there more perfect? I, I, don't, I don't really know. That's a, that's a question for someone who actually can add. You know, uh, I took one math class. I was done. I, I'll tell you, this is a completely 100% honest story. Bachelor of Arts at Ball State, you have to take one math class. I took that math class. The day it was over, the day I took my final, I bought myself a cake and I ate it. I said I was done with math in a formal setting there forever. Go. There you go. Uh, we'll see. Hecarim picked up first pick as it was the Graves who was banned away, not the Aurelia. So interesting there uh, because and the Graves had a great game. Uh, I like I said, though, it was a very quiet, great game, though. So uh, maybe Becker saw something that we didn't out of that Graves. Um, so, but going with the Hecarim first pick, which lets uh, Champlain pick up Lucian Thresh. Uh, so they pick up their full bot lane very early, but the Thresh uh, not banned away this game. Uh, so they're able to pick it up. We'll see if it was banned for a reason. Morgana coming out. That's an answer to any hook champion is the black shield is going to give you all the protection you need. And let's see if they pick up their ADC here. Um, 
just because they can. They can counterpick their ADC with third pick and uh, then save two more possible counters for later. And Caitlin, Caitlin, great pick there into Lucian Thresh with all the range in the world. Who do you think we're going to see here for Champlain as their third pick? Uh, well, I didn't get him to respond, but it will look like it is going to be a Samira who we've seen play to great effect. And the Samira is locked in. They're going to be played by Logic Mia, who had that very solid game in Oriana last game. Very different play style. We're going from a control mage to... Uh, how do you describe Samira? Right? Uh, the marksman, assassin... Uh, Yasuo, just doing it all. Uh, there's a lot of damage. There's a lot of versatility in the kit. I'm intrigued to see what can be done here. Mordekaiser Darius off the board. Very obvious that top laners have not been selected yet. They are still all on the table. You know, we're talking about Lucian, Thresh, Samira, and you said, you know, Samira going to be in there in the mid lane. Uh, you know, that could be a Lucian mid lane. That could have been the, uh, the flex Lucian. Throw Lucian in there, make him think it's their ADC then flex them to mid and pick up that Samira for your ADC. You know, we didn't see much out of either ADC in that last game. They were both very quiet. Uh, so I I think that could be interesting. That could be a very interesting choice, putting Samira as the ADC and Lucian in the mid lane. Yeah, uh, I, that, that didn't even cross my mind. I believe the only the one and only Samira performance we've seen in the NACC was a Samira mid. So I, th I think my mind jumped to that. I could be missing referring as well, but... Absolutely good point coming through chat. I see you, coach. I hear you. I think we're we're not really gonna find out until we get into games that Lucian and Samira are the two interchangeable components. We will see Silas Syndra going off the board. Sejuani is picked up. I really like that pick. You have two distinct playmakers with the Thresh with the Sejuani. You have Samira and Lucian who can put in a lot of damage. I'd like to see some top laner that brings a little bit of tankiness so you can fight front to back giving the sejuani thresh ample time and opportunity to crack open these team fights you know i think the sejuani has plenty of tank that's required i think what i would actually like to see there again is the aurelia uh we don't know what the top laner is going to be here from becker but in that team comp the aurelia works again for the same reasons uh, can come out of nowhere. You got the Thresh Hook, the Thresh Stun. You got uh, Stun coming out of Sejuani. You got the fact that if anybody gets crowd controlled, Samira gets that free knockup. And if they're crowd controlled for even an instant, I think Aurelia could just come in and do whatever she wants. However, the Scion pick might, uh, might, might make it so we don't see uh, Aurelia here in the top lane. I really love the Scion pick. We've got a very interesting composition coming through from Becker right now. LeBlanc, you talk about champions that are mechanically hard to play. Very close to the top of the list. There is a lot going on here. So we're going to see a rise locked in going to be headed towards the top, but not locked in yet being hovered. But oh, We, we no. actually don't know if that rise is going top lane, though. Let's let's be honest, Ethan. I mean, the all three damage dealers there from Champlain could go anywhere. Spin the wheel, everybody take what you get. Uh, it's it's flex across the board. Yeah, and with the uh, way the Aurelia played, I could see Samira going top lane. Why not? Oh, there are a lot of possibilities. Just like a big old box of chocolate, we don't really know what we're going to get yet. My bet is that's going to be Rise Top. Lucian bot. I like Samira mid chat. All right. I like it. I like it. Give it, put some respect on it. Give it some credence. That's my prediction right now. On the other side, we know what we're getting. Scion top of Blanc mid Caitlin, ADC, Morgana sport and Hecarim in the jungle. But how that's going to pan out is very interesting to me. It feels like this team very much wants to get into the later stages of the game. We know Hecarim can be an absolute beast in the late game. Black shield hurts the whole game, but you know what it hurts the most? is in the late game when it steals a game-winning kill away. When you get the opportunity team fight, you find your pick potential with your CC, and guess what? <laughs> Press E, try again. And as dirty as LeBlanc starts, just imagine LeBlanc going in with Morgana Black Shield. Like, oh, by the way, the CC you're throwing at me doesn't work. I'm oh, just going gonna, gonna to do all this damage that I'm going to bounce. I'll see you later. Let me get some more mana. I'll come back. We'll do this again. Yeah. Absolutely, and I, I think of the Black Shield on the Smear as well. I mean, uh, Black Shield plus any champion, or not that Smear, that's the other team, but yeah. <laughs> I was, was going to agree with your point all over the place. Black Shield onto <laughs> any champion that has a lot of mobility can get in there. That LeBlanc, considering the health bar is low, 
Black Shield on the Hecarim could be such a solid thing as well. Uh, one oh, of yeah. the few ways to stop Hecarim, right, from absolutely destroying your back line is dropping hard CC. Guess what? Black Shield doesn't allow you to do that. Limits your opportunities to deal with the Hecarim. So we're going to see how well this Black Shield is used and on which characters it is most effective. We are into our regular picks and bands now. And we're going to see who is going where as you do have to select here in LCS order. Now, the the thing to uh, the thing to remember here, and you're talking about, you want to see the Samira mid lane. I really want to see her as the ADC, just because of what we were talking about with the fact that any crowd control means Samira gets a free knockup. That's why it's such a great pick for an ADC with any kind of support with crowd control, just because you get that free extra half to three quarters of a second knockup there, and that's a lot of time you could do something with. Yeah, a lot of time indeed. I think there's a lot of good options. I think they drafted very, very well. I'm excited to see what does come of this CCE draft. The champ playing Beavers going up against the Becker Hawks. If you're just joining us in game number one, the Beavers took care of business, knocking the Becker Hawks down a peg. We are picking it up here in game number two. Um, so, uh, Ethan, I think I think they're going to pick in the same order they picked in, and then they will swap the picks after. That does seem what they're going to be doing, which uh, is confusing why they did pro-draft in the first place. <laughs> I'm not uh, going to well, lie. Uh, some uh, some players don't have all the champions unlocked, Ethan. In, in this situation, though, it must seem that everyone had enough to trade. Yeah, oh, definitely enough to yeah. trade. Definitely enough to trade. But mm -hmm. now, if your first pick doesn't, uh, you know, have what they want, then you gotta you gotta get to the pro draft, pro draft, and it also gives people just a, a chance to do whatever you want with the strategy. Absolutely. You don't have to worry about like here we have to pick, here we have to pick. Just go in pro draft, do it all. Um, so we will have to wait till they swap them around to see if chat uh should be uh encouraged to get on your case again or if you can just wag the figure at him hey either way i'm excited for this game we're going to see what comes through i i still love i still love samira in the mid lane feels good looks good uh, but yeah, we're, we're, they're gonna they're gonna make us hold our breath. They're going to teach us some patience here in this game chat on who is going to play what and where. The block locked in there. We've got two more picks to go till we see how all the swapping does happen. If you're just joining us in chat once again, the Champlain Beavers are up one game to none on the Becker Hawks. This is the 6 p.m. match at 8 p.m. tonight. San Ambrose, the Fighting Bees, will take on the Valparaiso Crusaders. The NECC is sponsored by HyperX. No matter who you are or how you play. We're all gamers, and by ESTV, the first ever dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities. If you're just hopping by for the first time, hit that follow button. So much esports content coming through on the channel five days a week Overwatch, Madden, League of Legends, Rocket League. What am I missing? Every time, something's missing. Madden, we got there. We got there. <laughs> that is up. You know, you think by now I'd have a list. Right, here we go. Here we go. They're swapping them around, they're moving them. They're moving them. And that uh, that does look to me like a Lucian maybe in the mid lane there, Ethan. I, you know what? I know when I'm beating chat. I submit. I submit to you. All right. Uh, Samir will be headed ADC. Lucian mid. Thresh in the bot side. Sejuani jungle. Hey, whoever said Sejuani ADC in chat. <laughs> Airborne cactus. Now that's hot. That's what I want to see right there. <laughs> no surprises coming out from Becker. The Hawks running with Cy on top. Hecarim jungle. LeBlanc mid. Caitlin Morgana. ADC coach. Let's take it lane by lane. Switch it up. Let's start with the top side here. Scion going up against Rise. GBHV going up against Jack Carter. Who you got? I mean, Rise is such a different champion from Aurelia. I mean, we're going to see a completely different style of gameplay up there. Uh, however... I think just champion v champion, not looking at the players. I think I'm going to have to give that one to Rise just on the range. Uh, Scion's ability is fairly easy to dodge, uh, and Scion, a big target, not able to dodge as well, especially pre six. I think I'm I'm looking for Rise on that one. In the jungle, I actually am going to look at Hecarim. I'm actually going to look at the Hecarim in the jungle, uh, and this one is because of the player. Zeta Noise, the play style there, uh, 
if they can hit the abilities the way they're going to want to and push people back toward their team, that's what they were missing in game one. The Volibear was able to go in, but had to wait for the damage to follow. If the Hecarim can go in and push people back toward the damage, that's going to solve that entire problem. In the mid lane, I'm going to have to go back to that. I like seeing the Lucian picked first. It, it gives you a counter pick against if they pick their ADC in that third slot, which they did. Uh, picking Caitlyn into Lucian is a good pick, but Samira into Caitlyn could cause problems. Going back to the mid lane, though, uh, once again, we went from two stationary control mages to a very mobile mage assassin and a mobile ADC. So, once again, going to be completely different. However, uh, early game, I like the Lucian. Late game, I like the LeBlanc. Plain and simple. And then in the bot lane, whoo! Uh, the, the problem here is going to be is that you have to save the black shield for the thresh hook, but that means you have to deal with the dash coming out of the Samira. And if Samira can use the dash to get on top of the Caitlyn, that's going to be all she wrote. Yeah, absolutely. Looking at the game, I think I completely agree. My eye is on this heat your logic Mia matchup in the mid lane. Lucian falls off so hard. You know it. Chat knows it. We all know it. Can Heatcher just hold on and not give too much value over to the solution early on? That's what we're going to find out. In my mind, it definitely feels like the Beavers from Champlain have picked a composition that feels maybe a little bit easier to pull off. You have your obvious go buttons, right? Sejuani Alti, Thresh Hook. I mean, really, any of the Thresh CC. Your go buttons are much more apparent. On the other side... They feel a little bit more situational. I mean, that Cyan ulti isn't something they can use in every situation, right? Hecarim ulti is something you have to set up a little bit if you want to use it over wall, something like that. Morgana is the one go button that's consistent. It's just like, yep, stun them, easy, let's go in. So very intrigued to see how the beavers handle their various ignition engines for this composition. You know, don't forget about the Rise. Rise ultimate could get you the best flank you've ever seen. Uh, I recall, was it last year during Worlds that the uh, Rise, Rise Teleport base race? Uh, was that at Worlds or was that in the LC, LEC Finals? Uh, uh, it was it was Fnatic and G2, wasn't it? I believe that was the LEC Finals, yeah. It was the LEC Finals and uh, G2 with the Rise Alt tried to run it down in the base. And uh, Lucian Rakan both able to run out the back of Baron Pit. Inhibitor was down. Rakan had died for the inhibitor in the bot lane four minutes earlier. And with about three seconds left before the inhib spawned, Rakan Lucian able to take down the Nexus, win that base race, and possibly what has to be the closest League of Legends game ever. Absolutely. Is a worry not chat. Both teams coming through with full skins everywhere. All right. The wallets have been opened up, and this is what we have been blessed with. Game number two, Champlain Beavers going up against the Becker Hawks. The Beavers have a one game to none lead. We are going to pause here at five seconds, make sure everything is all synced up. Are we ready here in, in, in the production booth? Everyone pause at five seconds. Three, two, one, go. And we are underway here. Game number two. Coach, take it away. All right, for game number two here, we have Becker coming off the blue side. So they'll be moving from the bottom left to the top right. Champlain coming off the top side, going from the top right to the bottom left. Like I said earlier, I like coming off the red side. It feels like you're coming downhill. I'm a big dude. Going downhill is a lot easier than going uphill. It looks like five in the bot side river here for Champlain. And that looks like a possible invade going to come across. However, Becker now was in the spot Champlain was in earlier. So it looks like it could be a mixed invade. And nobody is going to find anyone home. Yeah, could trade buffs here very smartly, though. Ward placed on their own red buff there from Becker. So they are going to spot out this invade right about now. We do see the backs coming through, but they won't be able to get anything done unless they respond in numbers. But they are going to make the smart decision. Say, you know what? Anything you can do, we can do better. Take the buff up. There. I think Champlain off. might be leaving. Champlain might be leaving. This might absolutely be a buff steal for Becker. Champagne, Champagne, Champlain left. They absolutely left. Uh, Hecarim was farting as well. But Hecarim stayed. Hecarim's going to stay. I think Hecarim's going to go for the buff. 
And thank God Champlain going for the blue side. Uh, because Scion and Hecarim could have been in for a problem if anyone had come to check the red buff, but no one did. Uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it out right here. Bronze mistake not checking the buff. Feels a bit like a bronze mistake indeed early on, but this is what we saw in game number one, folks. Becker did get the best of them in the early game, but the Beavers fought back and they fought back hard. We're going to see if that's the case here once again in game number two. What do you think of this Jack Carter matchup in the top lane going to GBHV? We talked about it a little bit, but the range just feels so oppressive. And as you said, many of Scion's abilities are very, very telegraphed. I mean, we're looking at that, but I'm looking at the Hecarim taxing the Sejuani, taking the Raptor camp as well. Huge tax there. Sejuani has no idea. But coming back to what you were talking about in the top lane, it's going to be rough for the Scion. You can see on the sides of the screen, Scion's health bar already dwindling away a little bit uh, because Ryze has the poke that Scion doesn't have. Uh, and as we, were talk we talked about earlier, Scion's ability is really easy to sidestep. And I think Ryze will definitely run out of mana before they run out of hit points. Uh, in the mid lane, you see Potion already used by Logic Mia, uh, as trading in the mid lane has been fast and hard already. As we see in the bot lane here, Sejuani may be coming from an early gank, and we see crowd control coming through. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Black Shield comes out. Caitlyn gets uh, grabbed, though. Gonna get stunned by the Sejuani. Sejuani with the first blood. Will they get the Morgana they, as well? They will. Samira gets the Morgana as well, so two early kills flash in from the rise here comes hecarim though extended team fight hecarim comes in and rise will get the root but i don't know nope they will not be able to escape from the scion easy to dodge those abilities 1v1 but when you're trying to run away from that mad centaur scion is going to be able to hit something so in the extended team fight it is a two for one champlain taking two kills there and scion with a great move there, able to predict the teleport and get a lot of damage on Hecarim coming back in. <laughs> a return gank here, and that is going to be a second kill. This one goes on the Hecarim. So I don't know if we want to just call that the extended team fight. Two kills apiece here. The extra money from First Blood did go to the Sejuani for Champlain, but getting outplayed there in the top lane, Jack Carter, as we talked about, game one MVP, got ganked by the Hecker and was too far past the river, and then absolutely TP back to the lane right in the middle of the minion wave, got hit by the Scion ability, and Hecarim was like, wait, all I have to do is make a U-turn. I'm coming back, baby. Scion got the first kill, and I want number two. Somebody press pause. The VCR is burning up. Non-stop action, real to real, second to second. I mean, how do, how do you even break that down afterwards? We had our action in the bot lane first. We did see two kills go over. One of the Sejuani, one of the Samira. Thresh there to scoop up two assists. Then on the top side, Jack Carter with ball to GBHV. Foolishly teleports right back. Takes another engagement. GBHV very wise holding on to the knock until the teleport comes through. And very wise play from Zeta Noise. Sticking around, staying in the vicinity. And is there for garbage pickup and back-to-back -back ganks. Absolutely perfectly played there. And that's what I was talking about. Zeta Noise wants to be the one going in. He wants to be the one engaging. Perfect champion for him is the Hecarim. You know, we saw it banned away earlier, not banned here. Uh, and maybe we'll see it banned if this goes to a game three, because already being disruptive, uh, I mean, stealing the buff, stealing the Raptor camp, uh, two great ganks. The two ganks took them away as we took, look here. Champlain actually on the Ocean Drake down there. So I will pause my thought there as we look, try and see back to the Ocean Drake. Uh, because it looks like a fight is brewing. In fact, Becker came over the wall, and Becker looks like they're going to pick up the Infernal Drake here. No, it We're resets. So oh my god, it reset. Oh, that's All so, that's bad that's luck. so painful. Bad luck. Okay, they will pick it up, though, and they will be able to walk away. Oh, they got the root. Are they going to turn back? They won't turn back. So coming over the wall, Becker able to just push Champlain away from the Ocean Drake. Uh, but talking about it with the, the two, the return ganks there from Hecarim did cost Hecarim a little bit of farm. So Sejuani actually picking up a farm lead. Sejuani had that great gank in the bot lane, picked up the assist there as well, but was able to leave, whereas Hecarim had to turn it back around. 
So that would be the lead in the jungle on Farmers. Cyan gets a couple abilities down there. Rives has to back up. Cyan does have a 10 CS lead in the top lane, dead even in the mid lane. What we were expecting there. And pretty even in the bot lane as well, except for the kill count. As we see oh. Thresh getting a hook here as they go back in. Sir Yakov gonna go down. Caitlyn might be done as well. There's the flay. And do they have the hook? Here it comes! Hook comes in, Dash comes in, Samira says thank you very much. One kill apiece for each member of the Champlain bot lane, and double kill again down in the bot lane. Yeah, Meyerson, these hooks are like shooting fish in a barrel right now. Back to back connections there for a big uh, taking of two kills. We're about to say double kill, not quite accurate, as you said. They did split the kills. The Samira, though, however, Zephos has a bag on their head with 150 gold, and they are going to be able to extend the farm lead here quite a bit with Rextus absent from the lane. Keep your eyes on whether or not the Samira will be able to snowball out for the rest of the game. Last game, it took a big performance from Jack Carter, but this game, it's looking like we're going to be a bit bot lane centric coming out from the side of the Beavers. All right, looking here, we're still seeing just farm coming in the mid lane. So last game, we were looking around, playing around the mid lane. Right now, it looks like the bot lane, well, actually bot and top is where all the action has been. Nothing has been in the mid lane so far, as we see the mid laners both at 57 farm just doing their thing. Uh, farm in the top lane will go to uh, GBHV. And I really don't know if we're supposed to be using the acronym or just trying to pronounce that. I really don't know. <laughs> Uh, I am also unsure, such as it is with esports at this level. You never really know when you come to the user base. But yeah, I think that's a very interesting point there. We talk about two mid laners that both have Ignite, both are somewhat aggressive, both can do a lot of damage versus last game. Two mid laners that were control mage with teleport, and yet first blood came from the mid lane last game, and that's where the action was centered. This game, triple zeros for both of them, three CS differential. I think the big one though right now is the 202 Samira in the bot lane. Samira is so powerful right now. Ahead early. We're we're just coming up on nine minutes. And that's gonna be I think their next back will be a full item. As Sashwani back here in the bot lane, there's the Thresher. Thresh hook connects. Is it gonna be enough damage? No, it will not be enough damage on the Morgana. Caitlin using that range, driving Becker, I'm sorry, driving Champlain back. But Morgana almost went down for a third time. And here we go over the wall uh, as they re-engage here. Sejuani will get the Morgana. Caitlyn trying to get back. And I think she will get away. But just the play coming over the wall there. And I don't know why Becker kept pushing that two into three. Absolutely not sure why you the number disadvantage. Does Meyerson ever miss? Come on. The, what, what did it say? Another sequence of back-to-back -back hooks. Second one hit right over the wall. Some phenomenal playmaking coming through from the Thresh right now. You see Heatcher pushing in mid lane there. And we see the play continue to be set around the bot side. Coach, we've got some action here in the mid lane. Set around Heatcher. Sojourn going in there. LeBlanc using all of the abilities and the flash to get away. Does get ignited. Will simply walk away. But if you're able to get every ability out of the LeBlanc plus the Flash, you know you're doing something right. And that means in the next team fight, LeBlanc will not have Flash. As Hecarim coming in here, though, and just misses the Thresh Lantern, able to get Lucian out of danger. Hecarim, you saw the reposition there. Hecarim was going to try to push Lucian well, well back into the damage coming out of that uh, LeBlanc. But the, the Thresh Lancer, not only are the hooks on point, but so are the Lancer. Yeah, the reaction time coming through from Meyerson is absolutely nuts. Playing out of their mind right now, holding a perfect KDA for the time being. Ended last game with a perfect KDA, so keep an eye on that as it develops. My eyes are still on the mid lane, although hard to not notice this CS Lee that's brewing in the top lane. Scion coming back to lane with the Sunfire Cape, with the Corrupting Boss and the Brown Boots right now. A level up on Jack Carter. The only thing is, you know this Rise is going to scale so well come late game. I want to see the Scion try to have some impact somewhere on the map. Maybe a potential play at Rift Herald in the coming minutes here, Coach. 
I think Becker will need that as that one, actually a second Drake going the way of Becker, uh, very quietly unopposed there on that second Drake. A great long range binding from the Morgana keeps Samira out of that fight. If Samira engages there, I think Becker loses their bot lane again, but a great long range binding as we see people looking. There's the ultimate from Sejuani, gets the stun. Hook gets missed, I believe that was uh, the ultimate there from, uh, it was the ultimate there from Hecarim to get out of danger. However, second Drake picked up by Becker for free, and that will keep them in the conversation at the moment. It's only a 1,000 gold difference. There's three extra kills on the side of Champlain, but they only have 1,000 extra gold in their pockets, and they have not yet picked up an objective. Yeah, absolutely. Zedanoi is using that onslaught of shadows to escape that well placed hook. Couldn't quite find its target. Actually, the top lane, I don't think much is going to come to this, but good note on the gold lead there. Uh, despite beating up the two drags, only down three kills, the gold lead is it's starting to grow. It's, it's more than a K. You're starting to feel it just a little bit, despite that, coach. As was noted, two drags picked up here by the Hawks. What can they do to continue their neutral objective dominance over the course of this game? Well, they just did it. They just did it very quietly. Uh, the Rift Herald has been picked up by Zeta Noise unseen until they got the announcement on their screen. Champlain had no idea that was even going on as we just want to come into the top lane here. Not going to chase down the Scion, just going to try to push that lane out from under tower. But this, uh, this could be the big first tower play here. Uh, Zeta Noise comes, drops that Rift Herald basically in any lane. And that could end up being first tower for Becker, which gets them right back in this match. Gets them right back in the match, indeed. Keep your eyes on Sejuani here on the top lane. Oh, just going to back. It does appear. Thought they were setting up for a potential gank. Shutdown gold is on two players here. Sejuani and Samir, both with bags with 150 gold on their head right now. If you are the Hawks coach, are you playing any differently trying to get those kills? You're tailoring your strategy, try to screw up that 150 gold. It's not the biggest sum, but any gold is good. I think you have to take it to the mid lane. I think you have to take Rift Herald to the mid lane. It has been too quiet, and you really need LeBlanc to be able to roam. I think you have to try to knock down that mid lane tower. I think that has to be the play because I think you want that LeBlanc to be able to roam, to be able to come out over walls, to be able to steal people's cookies right off the kitchen counter. She needs to be able to get out of lane if Becker's going to be able to get any kind of lead here before 20 minutes. So I think we're going to have to see that Rift Herald come mid lane just to open her up. As we see, Hecarim does come into the mid lane here. LeBlanc goes in, damage oh, almost Myerson. comes out. Hecarim with the kill on the Lucian, goes back in on the Thresh, Thresh with the the, uh, the ultimate there as well. And that'll just be a leave from Becker. They're going to wave over their shoulder goodbye as Hecarim runs away from that one. So a great pick there as in the top lane. Scion doing damage to the Rise. Finally hits some abilities, chains them together. I mean, we talked about how easy it is to dodge him, but if you do get hit, you're going to get chained for a couple, and it's got to be some serious damage. Yeah, it turns out it hurts when a train hits you right in the face. Uh, if you can land those abilities, this fight spilling over to the bot side, Soldier, and looking for something. Flash coming through from Rex that's going to save their life. Uh, Another the great binding, too. Another great binding, too, from the Morgana to force the ultimate out of the Sejuani. Absolutely, and they're, they're going to push in this bot tower here, Coach. You think we're going to see anything developing? We see the block coming in with the Hecarim here. Hecarim coming in. Hecarim going to push Sejuani back toward the tower. One tower shot will fall on the Sejuani. Sejuani oh. will get rooted. Hecarim will pick up that kill. It's a 4v2 trying to run them down. Ace in the hole is available if they can keep a vision. And it looks like the Rift Herald will be placed here in the bot lane. And in this scenario, I am more than okay with that. They already got the kill in the mid lane which means this is where this needs to be. They've got four members here. The Thresh is low. That's Meyerson is low. And it looks like they will not try to push it. They will just get two thirds of the tower off of the charge and they will set up for the Drake. But that is a very good play. They they got the pick they wanted down there after they getting the pick mid lane. So now that, you know, they've evened up the gold score. And I like that play there with the Rift Herald. You know, before the Lucian died, I definitely would have said the mid lane, but 
I, li I like that play a lot. Here we go. Hagrim coming in once again. And here we go. We talked about Ace in the Hole being available. And it will not finish the Lucian. Luckily, Centaur right behind him. And he's got a really big glaive to hit him with. Absolutely. Scooping that one up. GVH3 in the top lane does have Teleport turning this into a 5v4 situation. Right now, 3v5. Sajern getting in there. They might have a shot at this fight there. Look at the thrush on the top side here, folks. We've got a lot of action developing. Hecarim goes down, so uh, Becker is missing their jungler. Sejuani not in the pit, though. Kate trying to leave, will not be able to get away from the dash of the Samira. Becker trying to leave this fight on Samira into her ultimate as she finally styled up to be able to get there. And LeBlanc maybe going to try for something spicy here. I think she gets found out, though. Rise is looking at her. She is Joyce going to have to leave. Scion did teleport, unable to do anything in that fight. And the dragon will go to Champlain. And Rai is going to run down the LeBlanc under tower. Here we go. The Samira fighting the Scion. Thresh coming up here. I think Scion says, nope, this isn't where I parked my car. He's trying to go. Lantern comes out. Sichuani comes in with the ultimate. But Scion able to ultimate away with all of the speed, getting him out of what was certain death there in the mid lane. And speaking of the mid lane, Champlain going to hang around. And they're going to take out that mid tower and that will be first tower so a turn of events there becker gets two picks drops the rift herald sets up on the dragon the dragon goes the way of champlain as does first tower absolutely great job there by gbhv on the backside using that unstoppable onslaught does make you immune to all forms of CC, able to get out. But on the front side of that fight, Champlain is going to walk away the big winners, right? Uh, they're able to get onto the drag late. They take away what would have put the Hawks onto Soul Point. Becker, despite having priority on the Dragon, will lose it in the ensuing fight. And it feels like the momentum shifted a little bit. The tables are kind of sliding back in favor of Champlain here. You know, they, it, it does look that way, but if you look back up to the gold, and that's the only thing that really matters, it's only a one and a half thousand gold lead. Maybe stretch it to about two here, as you see uh, a little bit of farm going the way of Champlain and some wards going down as well. But it's still really close here as we approach 20 minutes. Um, so, you know, one team fight could turn it all around, and 2,000 gold isn't even a full item. So, not a huge advantage right now for Champlain, although it looks like there should be. Plus, the majority of their gold is in the hands of their ADC. So there's a target. If you target the Samira, if you take the Samira down, all of a sudden, that gold advantage goes away. I mean, yeah, it still technically doesn't exist, but if she's not there using it, that's gold that's not doing them any good. Absolutely. So, I mean, this, as you said, this game's still very, very close. Looks like both teams are set on the top side of the map here on this last neutral objective. Sajan and Myerson going in. Zephos. Oh, Zephos going to get caught out here, coach. We have a fight brewing. Sajan coming in. The Black Shield came out, though. Sajan might be a little overextended. The Rift Herald was actually following Samira into the back. However, everyone left Rextus alone. They said, you know what? We're going to leave you to the wolves. We're going to get out of here. And I don't know if that was the right play there. Morgana's binding was coming back up. I'm sorry, not... Yeah, Morgana's binding was coming back up. Hecarim had all of their abilities ready. I think you can engage that, especially with Scion, able to come in and re-engage. And speaking of Scion, he's getting 3v1 here in the top lane. Not going to be able to get out. And it looks like... Oh, I thought they were going to hold that one up for the Samira as it'll just be Thresh trying to drag the Scion away as he goes into his passive. I, for a moment there, thought that Champlain was just holding the Scion up so Samira could come in and get the kill shot there. Uh, but I think two bad plays there, possibly, uh, by Becker, leaving their ADC to burn. However, in the bot lane, you see LeBlanc there fighting the Lucian, the one-on-one -on -one that we never saw in the mid lane. LeBlanc winning that one as we have come to the mid-game here, and LeBlanc is expected to win that 1v1 here in the mid-game. And then the mid-tower as well goes down. So we've seen questionable plays here, questionable plays coming out of Becker, and somehow, after those two deaths, they're still only down 2,000 gold. Attention shoppers, attention shoppers. A Scion and Caitlyn have been found unattended in the jungle, and they were dealt lifts with swiftly. The Beavers taking no time, as you pointed out. I mean, really, Rexus dying there on the front line hurts so bad. You lose your carry potential, you lose most of your damage potential for the remainder of the fight, and they had to back 
it off once again even though the gold lead is maybe growing slowly it just feels in my mind like the momentum is shifting faster than anything else Myerson oh my goodness what a hook over the wall not gonna find anything to follow up with it they're just going to steal away some of the mobility with the blast going there next dragon here in 43 seconds coach how vital Heatcher's is it in trouble Heatcher's oh Heatcher using the ability to get out of the way of the Sejuani ultimate sorry about that one I was really excited there stuns the great equalizer when you're going against the leblanc if you can stun her down she doesn't last very long um going at it here though heatcher picked up the kill heatcher able they you know they have the oblivion orb on top of the luden's echo something you don't want to see is items getting picked up on the leblanc she can just blow up a member of your backline in the mid to late game and then she just jumps back over whatever wall she came in over it's like she was never there if she's able to jump on the samira in the late game it could take out the advantage that champlain has and this is really interesting champlain behind the pit becker in the pit so they've changed sides here coming in is such one oh. look at the steal great steal on the ocean and then such will take the lantern back out so the teams swap positions on the map of sign needs to be careful here but they swap positions and it was champlain ended up behind the map as we talk about leblanc coming in deletes the samira gone absolutely gone rise returns the favor onto the hecarim but i talked about it a moment ago she is at that point where if she comes over the wall she will take out a member of the back line and i don't think <laughs> that i uh i suppose i suppose I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Xyphos ever saw her coming. I don't think they did. And like a stick of butter in a furnace absolutely melted. Now you see me, now you don't. They make the most of the resulting play as well, Coach. They scoop up that mid lane tower, apply some more pressure across the map before resetting. And I like the reset here. Very, very patient play. For a second, I got a little nervous. Thought they were going to go for this Baron. Uh, it feels early. It feels like you're not far enough ahead to risk something like that. The reset might prove to be fruitful. But you got to think that this Baron has to be at a minimum in the back of the mind of every player on the map right now. Ethan, I'm going to have to correct you there for a hot second. LeBlanc is playing for Becker, and it was Champlain who just took out that mid-tower. Ah, yes, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna get you on that one. Maybe I, I was waiting for chat maybe to get you, but I'm going to get you on that one. Uh, but yeah, no, the Baron absolutely has to be on everyone's minds. With this being such a close match, and the Baron being worth 1,500 gold, if Becker picks it up, there goes the gold lead from Champlain. We're back to an even playing field. You see LeBlanc getting past the blue buff, which is what Becker desperately needs, and it's what Champlain hoped would never happen. As we take a look, and in addition to the Oblivion Orb, the Sork Boots, and the needlessly large rod on the LeBlanc in her inventory, all of the AP that she's going to need for this next team fight, she, team fight she has in her pocket, and the extra magic penetration with the Sork Boots. Plus, you know, they're trendy looking, and here we go. Maybe, maybe, maybe looking for the Lucian as Morgana misses a binding there. LeBlanc gonna come out, gonna go in on the Lucian. Here's the damage, Lucian trying to get away. Not gonna happen. And LeBlanc again melts another member of Champlain. The Becker uh, Hawks will trade the Botch Tower for that kill, but more kills on the LeBlanc is more damage later. And here we go, Scion fighting uh, against the Rise. Hecarim came in, Rise gets slowed, and I don't think Rise is gonna make it out of this one. And that kill will go on to Zeta Noise on the Hecarim. Zeta Noise, five, two, and one so far. And you asked me earlier which jungler I thought it was gonna be. And I told you, Zeta Noise on that Hecarim, uh, in the words of one of my friends, it fits his face. It's, it's the mask that fits his face. It's the mask he wants to wear. Hecarim just seems to fit his playstyle exactly. And he's been putting on a clinic of how to bring that champion to bear in a fight. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, valiant effort put up from Jack Carter for a moment there, but not much you can do in the 1v2 situation. We see the kills gap closing a little bit here. Gold gap, gap excuse me, closing a little bit here. Champlain looked like they had a clear lead for a while, but now it's shrinking once again. Becker chopping at their heels here, coach. Next Dragon is up in a minute and a half. Just about both teams looking to be on the verge of soul point here. Which squad do you see setting up priority for this Dragon? 
Uh, I think they're both going to try to set up priority. What I'm looking at in the vision right now is that neither team has vision in their enemy jungle. Uh, it is darkness. Darkness in the enemy jungles for both teams. All of their vision stops at the river. So they have no idea what rotations are going on here. They're having to guess where people are going to be. And I'm going to say whoever can get the vision uh, deep first is going to have an advantage. Uh, and it's going to be, I think, easier for Champlain to do so because they can get that deep vision behind the dragon pit while getting priority for the dragon. So that's what I'm looking for here. But Becker just rotating around the back of the dragon pit. They know they're in the darkness there. And Scion, very crafty. Scion just hanging around. Scion's looking for somebody. They do not know that he is there. Forgot the binding just misses. As it's going to be 20 seconds before this third Ocean Drake is in the pit. But here's the thing. Three Ocean Drakes is huge for the regeneration of Champlain. So this has to be a fight here from Becker. Absolutely has to be. And it looks like it's going to be a 5v5. Scion Ultimate will not catch anyone, but Hecarim will catch half of the Lucian. Hecarim then backs out of the way. Lucian Ultimate comes out. Uh, see Morgana go into the Hourglass. Samira, though, with the double. LeBlanc takes out the Lucian. Hecarim is down, which is going to make it very hard for Becker to take the Drake. Caitlyn goes down as well. It's a one for three at the moment. There goes the Scion. Quadra kill for the Samira, and that will be the third ocean as well. If the only one left standing is the LeBlanc, who then gets destroyed in the mid lane by the Rise. A perfectly executed fight there. Not only will that be the third ocean, but they're gonna transfer up. They're gonna turn it into the Baron as well. And I think I can hear it, the hammer nailing the nails into the coffin here for Becker. Absolutely, Zephos with a pop up there right in front of the drag pit, scooping up that quadruple. We know how much damage can come out from this Samira at times. It was on full display there. You absolutely hit the nail on the head by saying nails were being hit on the head. In addition to saying this Baron would be picked up, great play by them. They're going to reset, take all the gold they've got in their back left pocket and use it in the shop, pushing this advantage further and further, coach. Becker is already down one game to none. They are staring elimination in the eye here from this series. What can they do late here in game number two to get back in it? I think they need to play on the defensive. They need to get the vision down. Then they're going to have to go in a crowd to get that extra vision. But they need to give LeBlanc a chance to see the rotation so LeBlanc can continue jumping onto backliners from Champlain. We've seen her blow up the Lucian. We've seen her blow up the Samira. You know, she could probably take half of the Thresh. We know that she could take half of the Rise if she can hit the combo. Uh, but that's where they're going to have to start. And then they're going to have to get Caitlyn involved. Caitlyn currently wrecks the city at zero, five, and two. You're not going to win a lot of games when your ADC is sitting at zero, five, and two. Absolutely, you're not going to allow them sitting at 0, 5, and 2. The longer this game goes, the more it feels like Champlain is just walking away with it a little bit. And you see them doing the responsible thing here, Coach. They are moving the vision line up into the jungle on the top side. On the bot side, even, they have a little bit of vision on that bush directly behind Drag Pit. They're trying to choke out the resources here for Becker and make sure there's no avenue for them to get back into this game. That tower will fall just to the Baron Wave, and they're continuing to push in the top side. You see Rise running it down bot lane. May see a bit of a split push here with the Rise separated, because you can always teleport back in either with the ulti or with just Summoner Spell teleport to make the 5v5 to the top side of the map. This is what I was absolutely talking about, though. Getting that deep vision, you know, you won the fight, you got the deep vision, and now you can see all of the rotations, and vision absolutely wins games. If you know where your opponent is, you can be where they're not, you can take the objectives they're not protecting, especially when you've got somebody like a Rise who can just take you straight to the flank. You can see everything right now. Uh, the only thing they can't see is the actual inside of the base. And Thresh gets taken down. We talked about LeBlanc with the ability just to take down anyone. I thought Thresh was a little bit tankier than that. She didn't even go over the wall. She said, hey, you ought to hold on to this for me. Thanks, bro. I'm going to be over here. And then popped like a balloon did Thresh as Heacher picking up their fifth kill. Now let's take a look. Deathcap 
Luton Zeko Oblivion Orb on LeBlanc. That is not what you want to see if you're just trying to end the game here at Champlain. Absolutely disappearing Thresh, quite the magic trick. Now you see him. Now you don't getting deleted over the wall. Heat you're putting in some serious work, and that's exactly what the Hawks are going to need if they want a shot to win this game. Coach, you've talked about it quite a few times. Heatcher is getting big. Now block does get very scary, but the positioning is what is going to come down to the late game. Can Heatcher find openings onto the back line here for the remainder of the game as ne the next dragon, what may be the final elemental drag, will spawn here in just a minute. If you are the beavers, you're on soul point. You're looking at stacking that fourth straight ocean drag into the soul, which would be absolutely massive, coach. It would be, and we see a long range binding there. Nobody willing to go in on it, though. So the Sejuani going to be able to take out all of the vision there. The Blast Cone taken as well. Going to make this a little bit harder to get in. Hecarim in the bot lane. Hecarim has abilities that can get them over the wall. So a steal still in the cards here for Becker, but it will most likely be Hecarim going in alone if it is a steal attempt. Possible ambush here in the tribush, but uh, Becker. Uh, backed up originally, didn't even know about the ambush, uh, so got a little bit lucky there as you see Sion and Ryze here in the top lane, uh, and you see Caitlyn coming over to help, what little help Caitlyn can give at the moment, and LeBlanc gonna get it! What a absolute prediction there! Uh, and LeBlanc could be in trouble, gonna go over the wall, LeBlanc running towards Champlain's base, the only path of safety they had, Rise trying to go in on the Caitlyn here under tower. The tower will go down. Champlain on the Drake. Hecarim might have a chance for a steal as nope, no steal. Soul goes over to Champlain. Kill by the Rise on the Caitlyn in the base, but they will get the return kill onto the sign on the Rise. Doesn't really matter though as the Hecarim got ambushed looking for that Drake. And it is now a 7,000 gold lead. So we talked about how the gold lead had plateaued at about 2,000 and about five minutes ago, everything went wrong for Becker. 7,000 gold lead now, four Ocean Drakes plus the Ocean Soul, making them so hard to kill, allowing them to re-engage any fight they want to re-engage. There goes the mid tower, there goes the mid inhibitor, here goes the top inhibitor. Two inhibitors gonna be down, and I don't know if Champlain leaves or if Champlain just pushes in, and it looks like that they are going to go back, they are gonna spend their ill-gotten gains, and the next time they're in a team fight, it will most likely be the last. You do see uh, LeBlanc picking up the Morella Namicon, a uh, little bit of extra burn, a little bit of extra spell penetration there, but I think that is going to be too little, too late on the pretty much soul carry right here for Becker. Absolutely, the magic man Meyerson hits a big, big hook right there with a big prediction. Uh, it doesn't come to fruition, they don't get the kill on the heat here, but regardless, uh, what, what a play, right? They're able to scoop up the dragon once again. Jack Carter creating space, right? We saw it in game number one. Uh, Jack Carter ended up dying on the bot side in that 1v5, 1v2, 1v3 in base right there. Uh, created enough space, uh, Zeta Noise was left all alone to attempt that steal, was caught out and it was not fruitful for them. So, Jack Carter doesn't have the prettiest KDA this game, does have very solid farm, but making it happen in ways that won't show up on the stat sheet there, coach. And they, I really wish they would, and that's, that's not, oh, here we go, LeBlanc coming over the wall, getting a little bit of damage in there before heading back over. But no, uh, I, I agree, uh, is we're going to have Rise just going to come delete the Caitlyn. That's Ooh. not even fair. That that was, that, oh, oh man, that hurt. Here we go, here they go. Four, three before though, here in the top. Hecarim going to get hooked. Everybody else is going to try to leave. Rise is going to throw some damage down. Rise still looking. They're going to get the Scion as well. So caught out in the jungle. They were not able to group Champlain with all of the item advantages, the huge gold advantage. And that will most likely do it here. As Morgana running for her life, Nexus Tower 1 will fall. Nexus Tower 2 will fall. The Nexus not far behind as Thresh hits a hook on the Lucian on the fountain. Uh, as we see Champlain doing a little bit of waiting here. There Ooh. we go. Super minions took out the Nexus behind them as Rise did take out the Morgana on the fountain. A little bit of swag points there right before the end of the game.
Uh, quickly to finish that thought on that question you asked me, though, uh, you asked uh, about the uh, uh, the uh, what, what would the, the word be the 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 stats that you can't put a, a number on. Uh, we know you hate numbers. You talked about how much you uh, hated taking math classes. <laughs> so uh, the the stats that you can't put a value on, uh, and I'm not just saying that. Uh, as a support main, because there's so many things you can do as a support that you don't get a, a number value on. Uh, I talked about Swain earlier. I love playing Swain. Swain with his W, uh, like half a global ability at this point in the game, if you've got it on uh, five stack W, uh, you throw that in front of somebody, they're going to turn. You don't get credit for it but you could turn them right into your ADC in the same way on the, on the Jack Carter there, you know, able to draw two members of Becker away when soul Drake was in the pit, soul Drake in the pit and two people had to go stop Jack Carter's rise, pushing split in the top side. And when you're already down, you don't want to split what you've got. And then being able to trade himself and get the tower, uh, an absolutely great play by Jack Carter. However, in this particular match, I think I would give MVP to Meyerson on the Thresh, not only for that absolutely outstanding predictive hook, uh, but just, you know, 3 1 and 14, 17 of 23 on the kill participation. Just everywhere he needed to be. What is that? Uh, American Express, everywhere you need to be? Yeah, our, our American Express player of the game, Myerson, just, just the charge magician. it, charge it. Yeah, charge it to Myerson. He's everywhere hey, you need. American to be. Express, send the check. Uh, send so, the check, all right, we, we we plugged it. We plugged it. Send the send, check. Send the check. <laughs> I I one hundred percent will man. plug anybody who pays me. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, speaking of uh, plugging, everybody, if you're watching right now, if you like what me and Ethan are putting down here. Uh, make sure to throw a follow on NECC underscore esports. You can get more of Ethan, hopefully later in the year, more of me as well as uh, NECC is letting me sit in tonight. Hopefully I haven't taken anything away from Ethan. He's a great caster <laughs> and I'm just happy to be here with him. Uh, Coach, we are happy to have you. That's going to conclude series number one of the night. We're going to take a quick step aside, but when we return, the St. Ambrose Fighting Bees will be taking on the Val Praises Crusaders. This is your opportunity, your sole chance left in the cast. Get your snacks, get your drinks, because when we return, we are going to have some non-stop action for up to three games. We'll see you on the other side.
I can learn to understand you much better if I can get familiar with the way you talk. I need your permission to help. Yeah. 
inspired by State Farm's surprisingly great rates. But my rates like that. They're great like that. Drive safe like that. I save like that. Straight up facts. Great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And welcome back to our coverage of the NECC. Everyone in chat, thank you for sticking around. We are on our final match of the day. We've got the San Ambrose Fighting Bees going up against the Valparaiso Crusaders. I'm here with Coach Jim in the booth. How are we feeling after that first one? I don't know, but I don't know if they're going to be able to beat the action in that first game there. I mean, it was it was back in both of them, both game one and game two, back and forth until about the mid-game, and then it broke open uh, both games 
for Champlain. I'm hoping to see a little bit more of the same, though, at least in the early game. I want to see the back and forth in the early game. And let's see if we can get this one to go three games. I am also excited if we, if we can get to go three games. We've already pushed back 15 more minutes. I am in it for the long haul regardless. I am excited to see if it will go late. I hope everyone in chat got the necessary nutrients to be ready to consume this stream. We're just waiting to get into the draft here. Very, very excited. Coach and I are going to switch up roles here. I'll be taking the play by play. We got to save his voice. He's got esports to coach, right? He's got he's got people to yell at, all right? He's got plays to call, things to do. So you'll be hearing a little bit more of me. Uh, let, let, let Coach use that brain a little bit more. We know it's in there. there it's, it's big. It's in there. <laughs> it's, a, it's in there somewhere. We didn't quite see it in match number one. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see the big brain come out in match number two. Although I was right about the Graves in game number one, and early I was completely right about the Hecarim in game number two. Swapping from jungler to jungler between Becker and Champlain. But, uh, Ethan, I think they're into the ban phase here, and first pick already for Velpo is the Olaf. I do. I don't have a pro draft link, Coach. Could, could you slide that my way in the Discord? <laughs> Oh, I'm just watching it in uh, our uh, director's uh, Twitch feed here. Oh, oh, you are absolutely correct. It is right there. Yeah, we've got the Olaf coming through. In addition, uh, the, the first six bands going with the cast in. There's the Lee Sin we talked about recently buffed, right? Uh, Yumi gone as well. Aurelia, Evelyn, and Shen off of the table here. Orn locked in as well for SAU. Coach, you may have not seen it, but SAU, these fighting bees have looked like a force to be reckoned with when we've seen them on stream. Uh, I have not seen it yet on stream. That is true. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, St. Ambrose is actually just about two hours away here from Upper Iowa University. They're down there in uh, in Davenport. Uh, and actually, I've been down to the VR lounge. They threw some money into, and they actually have a uh, naming rights of the arena in the VR lounge. It's the Fighting Bee Arena down there in Davenport. It's really nice. If anybody goes to Davenport uh, at any time for any reason, if you're a big fan of VR, uh, they got a bunch of VR stations in there and VR kart racing. Uh, I'll plug that one for him. It was a fun time. I got invited down for the grand opening. They, uh, the, the coach from St. Ambrose flexed a little bit on that one. Uh, so I have not seen them yet this year. Uh, I'm familiar with their program, though. I am looking forward to seeing that Orn in the top lane. One of my favorite top laners to watch, not one that I'm skilled with, but I love watching a great Orn player in the top lane. Absolutely. I mean, Orn, you talk about the scaling going to late game. Once you put those ornaments on other characters in the game, it can really get ugly. I mean, just a little put the cherry on the top of what you were saying, talking about SAU's program. Uh, director Chase Newcomb, phenomenal dude. Even just phenomenal guy, phenomenal in esports. Uh, had him in the booth uh, for the Battle of Indiana tournament I did a couple weeks ago. Great time to have him by as we do see a Jin Morgana. Caitlin picked up some ADCs decided. Coach, what are you looking at when you see this Caitlin going up against the Jin? Two champions that have the range and can be deadly if the players know how to use it. I think it's going to come down to the support for SAU. Uh, that's going to decide the bot lane. Um, it could either be really stagnant or if you see some kind of hard engaged support coming in. Uh, you can see some early damage, some early kills possibly there in the bot lane. Uh, the Samira in game two for Champlain came out, but other than the Samira getting that quad kill, uh, we didn't see a lot coming out of the ADCs, definitely not in game one. Uh, and in game two, it was very one-sided. So I'm looking maybe to see more of a battle between the bot lanes, as it's the one thing we really haven't seen today. We saw one bot lane get massacred, but we haven't really seen uh, a back and forth fight down there in that lane absolutely uh we're gonna see if more importance is placed in the adcs we do see the lilia syndra camille bands coming through waiting on one more band to be locked in here if you're just joining us in chat this is match number two of the night san ambrose the fighting bees going up with the valparaiso crusaders the necc sponsored by hyperx no matter who you are or how you play we're all gamers and by estv the first ever dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities hit that follow button so much content being produced here five days a week let's see if i get it first go here overwatch madden league of legends rocket league oh no what am i missing 
Madden? He said Madden. Madden. 0 for 3. Uh, 0 for 3 tonight so far. 0 for 3. 0 for 3. I can never get that off rip as we are into our next couple picks here. Nar, Zareth, locked in there. So we will be seeing a, a pretty... Uh, a very rangy composition here, right? The Morgana, the Zareth, the Caitlyn coming through with Nar and Olaf trying to get in close quarters. So interesting mix here. We're Khan locked in, and there's the Volibear. Though it looks like in chat something was supposed to be Graves. Oh, that last ban, uh, that no ban was supposed to be Graves. So that out of the way, it looks like these are going to be the teams we're going to see locking into the game here once everyone is out of the pro draft and into our regular draft best of three match ahead of us the fighting bees going up against the crusaders i think we're going to be locked in for a very entertaining best of three here kicking off at just about 8 20 we appreciate everyone sticking around in chat doing whatever they had to do in the break to keep it fresh coach what are your first opinions just looking at these teams that have been drafted it's going to be interesting. I'll tell you that. Uh, we saw the support lock in for the fighting bees. It is Rakan. So we talked about hard engage. There's your hard engage right there. Um, so we could see something early there. Uh, Rakan, good early. The knockup, uh, the shielding, the ability to get in, hit the knockup, and get out. Uh, so important, usually with your engage, especially as a support engaging, you don't have any way to get out. Once you go in, you got to either make the play or die trying. Rakan, one of the few, just able to jump back out. Uh, I love playing Rakan. I love playing him with a with a Zaya. Uh, he's good with anybody, but even better with a Zaya. I feel like you jump three quarters of a lane with the Rakan as long as you're jumping to Zaya. Uh, will be just fine with the Jin. however. And then in the late game, uh, Rakan, Mass Charm. I mean, come on. What's not to love? Uh, see, I can pun too there, Ethan. So... <laughs> <laughs> As we take a look around, though, uh, Nar into Orn in the top lane. Uh, and I, I, I've been watching Orn's play all year. My top laner loves to play Orn. Uh, so a good Orn, I've seen beat anybody. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out here and put, uh, put my money on that Orn just because I know what they can do. Uh, man, that was a really bad pun on the ornaments. I didn't. Uh, come on, man. You can do better. Uh, you you can never do better. heard that one. Ornaments, the upgraded items. They're so I'm just good. Saying, I'm just saying, you can do better. You can do better. All right, all right. Uh, you know what, Coach? In next, the time, next time you're in the in the booth, I will, I'll have a whole list ready to go, all right? <laughs> puns on puns on puns, all right? Puns on top of puns. Stack all right. Uh, I love it. We're making our producer laugh in the back. Uh, so, uh, Volibear and Olaf in the jungle, I mean... That's either going to be a very boring jungle or they're going to be constantly invading each other, I feel. I feel like there's no other options. Uh, just there they're are two similar kind of styles of jungler. They're, hey, I'm going to run at you and I'm going to smack you and then I'm going to run at you and smack you again. Uh, Volibear with a little bit easier engage uh, than Olaf, who literally has to run. Uh, Volibear can jump at you. He gets it a little bit faster. But at the end of the day, Olaf, you can't crowd control him. So either able to get out or able just to chase you down. Uh, then like we talked about and mid lane, we've been talking about mid lanes the la in the last match. Uh, Zareth or Rihanna, so we're back to, you know, immobile mages who are just going to sit there and poke at each other and see what happens. Uh, but I'm going to turn it around on you since you were asking me in the last match, who do you like here? Which lane do you think is going to be the lane that uh, really picks up the pace here in the early, early side of this one? Well, first, I just want to get it out of the way. I enjoyed you talking about Rakan. Coach, I mean, I knew when I met you tonight, there, there is just something about you that I like. It's the fact that you're a support main, you know. Follow support main, check it out. I knew, I knew there was something about you, all right? I, I respect I respect something. the support crowd. You know what? What can we say? Co I, Coach and I, we're just givers. You know, we, we really just, we're really just servants uh, out here. But the lane that I have my eye on the most... Me and you play support differently. <laughs> Is it quite a lane at all? I've really got my eye on the jungle, and you started hitting on this Olaf against this Volibear. I'm looking to see how Olaf can capitalize on the early game strength, right? Because that Olaf is so, so strong in multiple points of the game, but this Volibear doesn't really get big until later on, right? If you're pre-6, Volibear ganking is kind of tough, right? You can run them down, but that's all you can do. Olaf can have the damage. If you can chain together tossing those axes, you can really have a chance to do a substantial amount of damage 
when it comes down to it, I, I think SAU just scales better than the late game. Orn, the, the one, I'm, I'm going to torture your ears here, Coach, but when the ornaments come online on everyone else, uh, there just comes a point in the game where when everyone's full build, your Orn upgraded items, you just, you're just you, you're building stronger items, right? There comes a point where it says we're all full build, but my full build is just statistically better than your full build. I'm looking at that. I'm looking at how massive Volibear is in that game. Oriana's ultimate becomes better and better as death timers become longer and longer. Rakan, you talked about the hard engage, the Jin coming through with some damage in the back line. I'm, I'm looking out for the jungle, but ultimately I'm looking for the late game coming through from the fighting bees. Uh, the one thing you mentioned was the Volibear having trouble ganking. If you look at the lineup here for Valpo, though, with the exception of the Olaf, no mobile abilities. You got very little mobility there. Uh, Zareth, no way to get away. Caitlyn has the net, but if she uses the net to get out, she can't use it offensively. Uh, Morgana's best ability to escape is just to root you and walk. But the actual mobility they have is limited. Uh, even Nar, I mean, he has some, but it's based around his ultimate. Uh, so... Uh, Volibear, if he can get a good angle, if he can get behind someone, he doesn't have to worry about chasing them. All he has to worry about is holding them in place for all of the rest of his team's damage to rain down upon them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, Volibear may have some lanes early on despite not being super strong pre-6 ganking-wise. I want to pick your brain about something for a second here, Coach. A lot of people talk about jungle diff, jungle diff, jungle diff. It's my personal opinion that jungle differential stems from lane advantages. There can only be jungle diff if there's opportunity in lane sting, if lanes are ahead. Where does that weigh in for you? Do you think there's a shred of truth on that, or do you think that jungle diff is solely put upon the responsibility of the jungler and the lanes don't factor in as much as I think they do? Uh, the, the answer everybody hates to hear, it's both. Uh, if the jungler is is that good, if they're a professional-level jungler, if they can kite all of their camps, all of them, perfectly, that means they're going to clear faster. It means they can get to the gank faster. It means they can get to counter-jungling faster. And if they can do that, they're going to have an advantage. And at that point, if your lanes aren't ahead, it doesn't matter because you're going to have the advantage as the jungler. If you've got the advantage, you can fight for neutral uh, objectives. You can fight for rift scuttles. You can take a, a, a quasi good gank opportunity just because you're up. So I and on the, on the backside, if you're not a professional jungler, if you're not able to absolutely uh, out farm and kite your camps and just get the lead there. If your lanes are winning a little bit, you can get the ganks in and stack up and snowball that way. So it works both ways. And it also depends on what champion you're playing. Some champions are better at playing with a little bit of a disadvantage. Some champions love to have the advantage. When I'm in the jungle, I like the full AP Shivana. You know, you jump over a wall, you drop your fire breath, you walk away really fast with your W. Usually you're leaving Carnage behind you. It doesn't really matter if you're ahead, you're behind, you're dropping the damage, and you're going to walk away. Whereas someone like the Sejuani, who's going to go in, is the hard engage, is the tank for the team. If they're not ahead, they're going to get burned down before they can do their job. To know, Thunderlord, Orn, and Thunderlord Volibear matching skins, that's tough to beat. The jungle top 2v2, I don't know. I, 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 just, I just think you, uh, you FF if they come to the top lane. I, I, I just think you have to give that up. The matching skin, the synergy, come on, that's something else, coach. I mean, it is. No, you got to love it. Uh, the only thing better than that is seeing the lovers in the bot lane, the matching skin, skins for Zyra Khan. Uh, those always look fun. Uh, they've made some really nice ones down there. Uh, me and my team are always thinking about, okay, where's the skin line? Which skin line's been around a while? Can we put together an entire skin uh, team comp from uh, one skin line is what we always think to each other. Uh, is Are we capable of doing it? <laughs> All right. We have our customary pause at five seconds. We're going to be going in five four three two one go and we are underway right now coming out for sau on the red side will be the fleegs in the top lane piloting ornate mac in the jungle on that volley bear Ostapolis, I hope I'm saying that right, in the mid lane on oriana it's nico tv bot lane on the gin with peckles 
rounding them out on the recon support. Zax XDR in the top lane with the NAR and Poner on the on the Olaf, excuse me, in the jungle. Ben Zhao holding down the mid lane with the Dark Miner and Pop Mushroom in the bot side for Val Parezo coach. And we've got some action here. Level one potentially. What are you looking to see level one out of this five man? Oh, uh, I mean, I think the, the problem is they got found out there. I think they're going to get a little bit of poke on that Rakan, but I think that's it. It would have been really interesting to see uh, a couple members of Valpo just sit in that bush in the bot lane, wait for Jin Rakan to show up and just cheese the heck out of it. Uh, as it sits, they're just going to go ward onto the blue buff as uh, St. Ambrose will do the same. So it was they, we had a chance for something there, but uh, they got seen a little bit too early and they didn't have any kind of CC to hold anybody down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you talked earlier briefly about team names and how you thought they should have been switched last game. You thought it should have been the Becker Beavers. Real life fight, fighting bees against Crusaders. Who's walking away the victor? Oh, the bees. The bees. The bees. You ever, you ever, try, to kill, you ever try to kill a swarm of bees? Meanwhile, Crusaders wear all that heavy armor couple of wasps get up in there you're gonna have to take the armor off to fight them plus you're gonna have to get to them. oh my god it's just <laughs> you ever play football back in the day you ever get a hornet in your helmet playing I'm football i'm more of a volleyball guy i'm, I'm sick I'm before, uh... let me tell you as a football as a former football player if you get attacked by wasps or hornets while you're wearing all that equipment and they get under the equipment it's over it's absolutely over Oh, Peckle's going in here. A little bit of knockout pop through. Gonna get CC'd. Here comes the chain of pain. First blood being dropped. It's Nico TV scooping it up. Good awareness by Peckle's coach. First blood here early on in game number one. Absolutely. And we talked about the Rakan has the hard engage. All he has to do is go in there. And it was pre, I think that was pre level two or right at level two. In fact, it looks like they got the level two advantage and they went in level two with the advantage. So he was able to get the knock up and uh, I did not see it. Did he have his Q or his shield? Did he did he have the healing or the shield there? I th I think it was WQ, so knock up plus the healing, the, the feather knock toss. Up plus the healing. I, so yeah. the feather toss given the, given them both a little bit of sustain there in that fight. Uh importantly though, they got the flash out of Morgana. So now she is going to be a target. Uh, they got gave up both of their flashes too, but for first blood might be worth it. As we see the mid lane there, a lot going on. Absolutely, Astapolis and Rakan trying to go in here. Ben Zhao gonna go very low. One more auto would do it. Peckles has to turn around. Ben Zhao, they're cheating under tower. Peckles making it happen across the map. Astapolis says, where are you going? Nate Mac fighting with M Poner in the jungle. This might spell doom for them as they're down three kills to none. Oh my goodness, who needs to float like a butterfly when you can sting like a fighting bee? My The pain, the pain of my ears with your puns, Ethan. <laughs> the pain. It's much like the pain that Valpo is feeling as Peckles is all over this map. Three kills on the board, three assists on Rakan as <laughs> he's going to have to try to make his way back to his lane partner in the bot lane. But that's what you want to see out of a support. Roaming around, helping everybody, giving your ADC a little bit of time, you know, get some free farm, get some free experience down there. And that's a great play there out of Peckles. Absolutely. Peckles with so much awareness there to get around the map. When you see Olaf here, ganking mid, and Poner trying to find something. Ostopolis might be in a bit of trouble here. Does still have the flash up. We'll see if that has to be expended. A bit of damage being dropped. Ostopolis is going to have to flash over this wall. Will probably be able to escape. Yep, the chase will stop there. Coach Peckles has generated so much advantage early on in this game. If you are the fighting bees, what do you do to make sure that you retain this advantage over the course of the mid game as we're approaching the five minute mark? If you're the fighting bees, you just have to you just have to play. I'm gonna say it a little bit safer. You have the ability to play more aggressive here because you do have an advantage. But if you play safe, that advantage might indeed snowball, whereas you might risk it if you get aggressive. And I'm going to say actually the same thing for Valpo. You go down like this early. You don't want to panic. You don't want to have to panic and try to hard engage through panic. You just want to take a step back, take that deep breath and go, okay, we need to play our game where it's a little bit down. We'll get him in the end. 
absolutely this early advantage will generate an early dragon for them uncontested first one will be slain heckles once again ever the playmaker ever the opportunist looking for more not gonna find anything but does clear out a war and they may find something here the shield the hop through peckles look at the moves ben Zhao gonna fall once again peckles oh oh and four one 100 kill participation but for no longer oh zax what a flash there will escape sticking around for no apparent reason playing with fire in the top lane absolutely and here goes peckles again they Peckle. want the olaf they want him Oh, oh Peckles gets a kill. Oh my god. It's dirty. It's dirty. I'm gonna go home and take a shower after watching this Rakan doing what he wants when he wants. I believe that might be the chorus of the new KDA song dropped by League of Legends. Oh, oh my man. god. Everywhere. Is he even the support right now? He's been in mid lane more than he's been in the bot lane. <laughs> Absolutely. Peckles the opportunist right now never taking a vacation seemingly everywhere and nowhere at once to flee him to back off as after zach's xdr uses that teleport to get to the top lane in a hurry but it's all coming up bees right now coach oh and it it's, is it's, and i'm just again here comes nate back ben Zhao overextending in the mid lane just not having a great day set out a nice big picnic but here comes the rain cloud peckles trying to find more in the bot lane gonna eat the cc generates another kill for each nico tv and poner coming with a bit of a counter gate but the dark miner is not level six yet which means no ace in the hole but here comes the volunteer in the back line nate mac gonna find M poner and might be able to find some damage there's gonna have to alt to escape in the top lane some action but we're back in the bot lane asta pull is not finding anything peckles the flash the kill oh my gosh peckles never takes a vacation but the dark miner might take one back to a gray screen is going to be able to escape there doesn't find a kill but it's eight to zero on the scoreboard right now in favor of the bees oh my god just sitting here in the back not letting them come back to their tower oriana's just like no we're, we're just gonna sit here and do this you're just gonna have to eat it uh <laughs> dark miner they had nothing they could do. They had to run. They got hit by every, I think every bullet in that Jin ultimate had to flash at the end anyway, just to stop from being CC'd by anyone else. Uh, however, I would like to point out, finally, Peckles lost his perfect KP. Yeah, did lose the perfect kill participation, but does still have the perfect KDA going, as does everyone on San Ambrose right now. They are pitching a shutout, coach. Looking phenomenal in every stage of the game. What do you even do? I mean, I mean, you are a coach. If you are on the voice comes right now as a coach, what are you telling your team if you're the Valparaiso Crusaders right now? If I'm on the voice comms with my team right now, I'm saying, why am I on the voice comms? I was supposed to be calling this match. Uh, but <laughs> if uh, if we were a lot on the voice comms during the match, I'd be looking at this going, okay. Guys, we gotta slow down. Uh, we gotta play a little, play under tower. Uh, they're coming to get us, and this is gonna be a long one. This one, we're not gonna win this one early. The only chance we have here is to take this one to 45, 50, 55 minutes. Uh, as Ultimate comes out there, Zareth. First blood finally coming out from them. Peckles trying to find something here. I'm gonna all the root does come through. Oh my gosh. It's Nico TV putting them six feet deep to Fleeks, trying to find something in the top lane. Not going to get it, does get Zach's XDR to go brittle. Turn it around, drops the exhaust to Fleeks. Hornhorn coming through, gets the knockup. A sustained engage, nothing is going to come of it. But once again in the bot lane, Peckles, opportunity. Ooh, almost caught it on the back end there. Uh, I'm running out of superlatives to describe Peckles with. Just doing it so well doing it all doing it all getting everybody fed uh the the epitome of what you could do as a support uh we joked about it earlier you know the support servant of all uh and peckle is saying you know what i i think i'm just topping from the bottom at this point absolutely almost a hard carry recon right now 
Two Absolutely. oh and six. 150 shutdown goal on the support at 10 minutes. And they are setting up for this next dragon. It will be nine seconds. This infernal drag as the fleeks continues to push into the top side. It's not looking good for the Crusaders. All the air from the back line. There's the curtain call. CC does come through into Peckles. They found the proper target. But here comes opportunity. Nate Mac leading the way. Peckles picks up another. And they'll get the second under tower. Nate Mac claiming that one. Peckles looking for more with the rest of the team in tow. Ostapol is here. Oh, no. And Poner caught between Peckles and a hard place. Going to go down. It's Nico TV getting yet another Peckles going low. But it's not going to matter. 11 minutes into this game and they are up 11 kills next on the menu is this infernal dragon oh my goodness yeah the drake will go uncontested you know we were talking about in match number one how even the early game was it was even it was even it was even five and a half gonna be a six thousand gold lead here very shortly for saint ambrose mm -hmm. over valpo Absolutely. San Ambrose flexing what they can do as Ben Zhao might be caught out here once again. Peckles leading the way. Does pop the ulti. Drops the charm. Ben Zhao going to go down. Zach's XDR. Gotta be careful as they try to claim this neutral objective in the Shelly. It's gonna reset here. I don't know if they can realistically do this. Just by by virtue of how much gold they're down yeah, they're they're gonna think better of that one coach what are the baby steps they can do back in this game in my mind you look at the 300 gold on volleyball's head the 550 gold on Jin head, jin's head the 300 gold on peckle's head and that's where i'm starting almost like a bounty list right uh if you put your energy into focusing on that and claiming these bounties one at a time you can get back into the game but what are some strategies that you have for climbing in such large uphill battle like this See, the only problem with that theory at the moment is that these bounties fight back. Yes, there's a 550 gold bounty on that Jin. The reason for it is because he already has a full infinity edge. That's not a man that I want to fight right now, especially when I don't have a full item. Maybe with three, but if you pull with three, and I'll... Oop. Ah, uh, Ostapolis, it does put up the kill to M. Poner. Ace in the hole's not going to be enough either. And they're going to Zaxi the XDR here. Zareth Aldi coming through, not going to be enough. It's Nico TV. Well, here it is. The time to claim the bounty. Oh, Ben Zhao misses the CC. And it's Nico TV will not make the same mistake. Cleaning it up. 13 minutes and 14 kill lead. They're dropping the Rift Herald top. They reverse sides of the map here, coach. H how smart is this play? Lane swapping, pushing everything to the top lane. You're making Morgana and Caitlyn walk the distance of the map that they want to respond. Uh, it's an absolutely great play here. It was the one lane where you didn't have a massive lead. It was the one lane that was kind of neutral at that moment. So getting yourself the lead there just means you have the lead everywhere. And Rakan goes in again. Oh my goodness, the opportunist back at it on the block. And Poner, oh. Curtain call going to be canceled immediately. Shelly will get a final charge in there. Peckles will get rooted. This might be the chance to get some shutdown gold on Peckles, but they don't have the damage in the vicinity. Pop Mushroom. Got to be careful. Health bar is high, but will be gone in a second just like that. Ultimate coming through. The Dark Miner going down. Ben Jout trying to respond, but is not really going to get there in time to do much. 14 minutes, and it is just been an absolute annihilation at the hands of the bees and that's what we're talking about you know if you're gonna go after that shutdown you're gonna have to bring more than a couple of guys and if you do that you're gonna give up objectives everywhere else on the map valpo doesn't have what they need right now to go get the gin to collect that bounty at this point i don't know if they have what they need to go anywhere right now if you're going anywhere in a group of less than three, you are in trouble of being deleted because you don't have a lot of vision on this map either. So at the moment, like if you're going to get back into this game, yeah, it's going to be the baby steps. But I don't think you can go after the big shutdown. I think you got to go after smaller potatoes. I think you just got to go for a pick on the Orn, maybe a pick on the Oriana. Maybe if you're feeling frisky, a pick on the Volibear. But I wouldn't go within a country mile of the Jin and the Rakan. Yeah, absolutely. You'd have to have a massive numbers advantage to go on its Nico TV right now. I think you're right. Uh, feeling like the Grinch wouldn't touch it with what is it a 50-yard 50, 50, uh, pole coming in here, Peckle? Like 
yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know the song. You know, Christmas is coming up. It's been almost a whole year. <laughs> Nate back running around here. Peckles trying to find something. Been the playmaker, the catalyst, whatever you want to call it all game long. 3-0 and 11. Really making the wheels turn on this bees offense right now the dark miner pop mushroom on the back side of this drag pit this next dragon will be up in 40 seconds they find be able to find a small pick here onto the volley bear on the back pick but they need to coordinate it very well they'll find some damage ace in the hole is available but they're not going to commit to it there they do know that the oriana is in the area ace in the hole is available but no full item on the Caitlyn, so that Volibear would have to get taken very low for that to be able to be an execution. And we're talking about how fed the Jin is, and I, I'm looking more at the Rakan, I'm looking more at Peckles. He is the one that I'm worried about, but the problem is if you see the Jin, you know the Peckles is going to be close by. Absolutely, the bodyguard almost, Peckles just wreaking havoc this game and looking to do a little bit more here in the mid lane going to pop the either to get the shield back they're not going to quite find an engage here if you look at the bot side of your map here coach caitlin and morgana responding up we might see some action here in the mid lane Ooh, we'll see how this develops i don't think they're strong enough to go in they also don't see that ward it's a blue ward they should have been able to see that in the bush but they walk right by it so sau maintains vision on the back side of drag pit with that I think Valpo might yeah, just gonna give up a third Drake. There was really nothing they could do there. Their top laner had TP, but so did the Fleegs. So it was going to be an even fight. And right now, an even fight is not anywhere close to what Valpo wants to see. Are you surprised at all that Ben Zhao didn't try to use Right of the Arcane, the ultimate ability there, to try and take the Dragon away? I mean, it's it's zero risk, but potentially high reward if you can snag that Dragon and keep him off of Soul Point. I wouldn't say that I'm surprised not to see it. Um, it, it might just be something you're you're not thinking about. Uh, usually, you know, your mid laners aren't the ones looking for a steal. You know, usually, you know, it's other people. Uh... Oh, the flash! Look at the moves! Out the bullets! Oh my goodness! I don't know how to dance, but us the bullets can take the lead after that performance. Woo-wee! The hell this advantage, the fancy footwork, the flash coming through! Whoa! I found myself having to stop talking there. I didn't want to take your uh, your your thunder away from you there, as that was a great play by the Oriana. But what I was getting at was that you know mid laners aren't usually the ones looking to steal objectives. So I mean if you're not usually looking to steal an objective, then you're not gonna be thinking about it. Yeah, absolutely. Just not even cognizant of it on the level. Pop Mushroom has to flash out there. Nate back trying to clean up another kill, but Isidore Tower will go down to that tower in damage. So they finally do claim some shutdown gold, Coach. 4, 1, and 3. They claim it on Peckles as well, going down 3, 1, and 13 now. So two perfect KDAs rune. They do get a little bit of gold. What can they realistically do with that? I mean, they need to get that exact sequence a couple more times if they want to get back into this game. It's, uh, I, I said it in match number one, it's going to be about vision. you got to watch them rotate. If you know where they're rotating, you can set up the ambushes. But that's what it's going to come down to. And uh, for anybody watching right now, if we can get the, the Fs dropped in chat for Peckles, perfect KD8 <laughs> right there. Such a great game. Des definitely deserved, up to this point, deserved a perfect KD8. And uh, absolutely flawless from him, still even with the one death there. But no, you just got to keep vision going, and you have to keep finding the proper angles to come in at. That was what they wanted. It was exactly what they were looking for. Uh, they took back a little bit, and they had the uh, the advantage in numbers. They just got to keep finding that fight again and again and again. And maybe somewhere around the 50, 55, one hour mark, uh, you might be back in this match. The casual one hour mark drop there. That, that is their hope, though. They need to get to the point where things can plateau out. You got to get to the point where death timers are so long that a random team fight win can win you the game. So... Uh, they're living on a hope and a prayer that this can be one of the longer games of League that we've seen on the NECC stream. We do see the F in chat from joking. 
dropping the respect for the perfect KDA that has died. Peckles, oh no. Look at this play here over the wall. Peckles does get the CC coming through. Is going to fall, but not before they do trade kills. The Jin ulti. Curtain call will expire. This is the fight. The bees might be in a little bit of trouble here. Here comes Valparaiso. But the teleport in. Astapolis dropping damage. The Xerath ulti. Gonna pick up one. To please. Sidesteps it. It's Nico TV. 2v3 situation. The Dark Miner. One more auto. They'll get it up. Look at the Crusaders. They turned this fight around. Oh, what can Ben Chow do? Astapola solo doesn't have the footwork this time. Gonna die. Mean Macarena going down. And it's a 1v1 left on the map. Heckles just spawning. But that was the fight that Valpo was looking for. Absolutely, it goes down as a four for four, but when you're down, a four for four is a godsend. Uh, the money is going to do more for you than it's going to do for them. As you see, Zareth there throwing some extra poke down on the gym. Zareth is getting big right now. He's got the loot and Zeko, so that's a huge item on any mage that's going to drop mass amounts of damage. And I have to assume that Ben Zhao is sitting on a pretty substantial wallet at the moment as well. You should go spend that gold before it starts to hurt his back with that wallet in his back pocket. Absolutely. Five, five foot six normally, six foot four when standing on top of the wallet right now. Looking pretty paid. This next dragon will be up in 20 seconds. If you are Valparaiso, you can't let Soul be handed over. And you start doing that by getting a pick on the Peckles, but they can't quite find it there. The fleet's pushing in top side. No teleport available. So this is a 5v4. If the Crusaders do want it, Peckles in a bit of trouble here. Trying to get out. The CC does land. Shield being dropped. Peckles, he's out of there. Oh my Ooh. god, what a shot wave. Ask the Polis. Cleaning it up. Peckles does get a bit of a KS there at the end. That should be the drag soul. M Poner needs some heroics. Doesn't have flash available. You have to get around the backside of the pit somehow. M Poner, you, you, you can't get over. You need to ask. It's not going to come through. They do pick up the dragon. Oh my god. Goodness, the soul is handed over to the bees, and it looks like they are one step closer to winning this game. Peckles may be caught out here. Does hop out with the EM Poner now, maybe caught out. The knockup coming through. There's the damage. Nate Mac does pick it up. They're simultaneously pushing topside as well. Coach, the nails are being put into the coffin as we speak. I don't even know what to say there. I thought that Valpo had a really good engage there. I thought they were going to burn down Peckles. And all of a sudden, Oriana just like, no, no, we're fine. We got this. And people disappeared. You know, David Copperfield on the rift this evening, sweeping the tablecloth off and everything going away. And it's going to be an unopposed Baron, it looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of magic tricks, they're about to make this Baron disappear off the map. Smite is picked up there by Nate Mac. Up 20 kills at 23 minutes. Up over 10k gold. Up the soul. Uh, it's it's all coming up bees once again. They are looking strong and it makes sense coming into this game San Ambrose holding a 3-1 and one record while Valparaiso holding a 1-3 and three record trying to flip their fates but it doesn't look like it's in the cards for them this game big horn horn coming through pop mushroom in trouble oh but they do get chuck on move to start the fight no no oriana and this fight continues on the front side zach's xdr not a bad fight so far for them but here comes peckles flashing through the charm is dropped they're on the dark miner ben zhao unaffected in the back line the dark miner will go down here they just got to find a little bit more damage and they do it ends up being a 2-4-3. I really think Ben Zhao needed to find a little bit more in that fight. I was sitting there waiting, and I'm like, okay, where's the Xerathal? Where's the Xerathal? Where's the Xerathal? Uh, he can't do it now. He just got deleted. But in that last team fight, I was looking for the Xerathal because with the damage he can th throw down, it could have turned things around. Maybe could have saved the Caitlyn. Yeah, I absolutely agree, especially because attention wasn't on Ben Zhao. I thought that's who they were targeting the fight, but... There was not a single body in the same zip code as Ben Zhao, right? I was standing all alone, so could have definitely popped that right of the arcane. 
Got some damage out, maybe even scoop the kill. And as you said, save the Caitlyn. But instead, we are where we are. And we are in the jungle. A 2v1 situation coming through the Olaf. Putting down substantial damage, actually. And Poner holds off. Nabak and Peckles can't get it done. But here comes Ostapolis. Not going to find anything there with the ball. Not in vicinity to alt the Fleegs. 1v1 in the top lane with Zach's XDR. And after all of that turning up the heat, putting the pot on the stove top, we don't get any boiling water, Coach. Nope, everybody just walked away from that one. Uh, as you see, like the, the great passive on the Olaf there. Oh, my health bar is low. I'm just going to get bigger and better. So yeah, go ahead. Poke at me. See what happens. Uh, it looks like the siege has begun here, though, on the bot side. Absolutely, it has the CC coming through. Peckles dropping the shield. That's going to be one dead Oriana. So once again, they will scoop up a lot of the engage, a lot of the CC. Three pushing bot. Orin pushing that top side. Should be able to scoop up that top tower for no loss here. Peckles barely going to get out there. Almost added a third death to the totals. The Fleegs does scoop up that tower, but here comes the gank. And Poner coming through. Zax XDR. The Fleegs definitely got a run here. Does have Flash available, but trying to turn around the 1v2 situation. Ornhorn coming through. I don't think the Fleegs really stand a chance. He got a Flash over this wall in a hurry. Does get over. Grump joining the fight. There is the Alti Blast Code. The Fleegs, the great escape. Oh my gosh, Houdini in the flesh. Gets out of a sticky situation, and here comes Peckles and the rest of the squad trying to clean it up. Orn is so tanky late game. You literally feel like you have to kill him three times, and then he might still walk away. Absolutely. I mean, I know it's going to make you groan, but already has two ornaments on Forge Fire Cape, Inferno Mask, equipped. A lot of health, a lot of MR, a lot of armor coming through every defensive stat that you could possibly want with a Warmox to boot now on back. So giving you plus 800 HP, plus 200 base health regen, getting massive. You got to like what the bees are doing here, coach. They're moving up the vision line. They are suffocating the Crusaders out of resources. They're not doing anything flashy. They're just playing really, really good, solid League of Legends. Uh, and at the moment, they don't have to. They're up just over 15,000 gold. They don't need to do anything flashy. All they have to do is slowly, steadily apply pressure uh, until Valpo stops breathing. Absolutely. And you've seen how dominant they've been this game. Are you surprised it's taking this long for to finish? We are going to find a kill here, most likely, on to the jungler. Ostapolis running, but Mponer going to get out. Peckles picking up another. Uh, they've been so dominant all game long. Are you surprised how patient, especially for a college team, that they have been? Uh, surprise, no. Uh, knowing their their coach, their director up there, uh, I know they've got really good uh, leadership. And like as a coach, what you try to tell your team is like, look, if if you have a choice between winning for sure in 30 minutes, or maybe winning in 27, but maybe letting them back into it, win in 30. Every time, win in 30. Uh, not every match has to be decided, you know, at the 12 minute. All right, this one was decided at the 12 minute mark, but they don't have to take on the next 12 minute. Mark. Uh, you've yeah, got man. time, you've got yeah, all day. You know. I, I like exactly what you hit on. Uh, just talking about, <laughs> we've talked about a lot today, just how renowned the program is, and the director, and the coaching, and all that. Uh, that patience is really instilled, and it goes back. We were just talking about mental game earlier, right? Is the biggest reason why sweeps are, are more common in college. Um, from, from your experience, do you think that's something that's changing in the college? I mean, going, going a little little deep into college esports here, just with how programs are growing is everything begins to grow is... Just put that on the back burner for one second as m are trying to play hero here with the steel in the back pit. They desperately need it getting in there! No! We got it! Absolutely got it! All the police! Oh my goodness! Teleport coming through! No! For no, no! no. Oh, get out of the pit! Get out of the pit! Get out of the pit! Oh! Oh! Out of there! Oh my gosh! Do, 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 do. 911, I'd like to report a robbery! Absolutely perfect there from M. Poner. And I mean, he knew he wasn't coming back out, but he gave it to four members of his team. Here we go, SAU on the Baron. I don't think anybody sees them, but if they wanted to, this could be a fight Valpo could take, but I think the Baron's gonna fall too quickly. 
Uh, Sarah Thalty is the only potential here. Right of the Arcane. That's, that's what they need. They're not going to be in the vicinity to do it. So, Big Steel comes through. SAU does still pick up the Baron. They're very much in the driver's seat, but for just a brief moment, just a glimpse, Emponer breathes some life into their team. Good. Here's miss. the problem: is that that might stall out this game another five minutes. <laughs> that that might stall out this game another five minutes, uh, just because I don't think if I'm St. Ambrose, even with all of the advantages we have, I don't think I would want to fight them with an Elden Ring. You don't know what's going to happen. One wrong move, you could get aced, and something terrible could occur. And we might see a pick here as he's talking about that, but here comes the collapse on the right hand side of your screen coming through. It's Nico TV. Zach's XDR. Don't overextend, but Falpo is looking to engage a fight here, right? C Coach, you, you just said it. You've got to think this is the time where you have to go in. You're not going to have this Elder Dragon forever. You're down 24 kills. You're down just about 20k gold. You're down eight towers. You, you, you have some form of advantage right now i think you have to try and make something happen we're gonna see what they can do for the time being inhibitors will be siege oh here comes peckles trying to end the game some late game heroics oh my goodness the opportunist getting it done the bleed's going in the shot wave ben Zhao is gonna be the last one alive watching their kingdom crumble beside them nate mac goes on a killing spree to end the game as the bees Take the win in game number one. Uh, I, I, just a great win there from St. Ambrose in the driver's seat the entire way. We were talking a moment ago and we said we were going to come back to it about the mental game in college. Is the mental game changing? I certainly hope so. If it's changing nowhere else, I'm trying to change it here at Upper Iowa. Uh, the thing I would say about this one is that I'm actually more worried about St. Ambrose coming out of that one. They were so dominant in that game. You just have to be sitting there reminding them, just go play our game. Don't try to do anything else. Just go play our game. Because if St. Ambrose gets cocky, if St. Ambrose decides, oh, we're going to draft some fun champions. We got this. We're better players. That's when you can get into trouble. Once you think, oh, we absolutely have this. We can do whatever I want. That's when a team who digs deep with their back against the wall is going to surprise you. And that's how we would end up in a game three. That's how we end up with a game three indeed. Although it's tough to vote against or to root against, I guess, if you're a neutral fan, the San Ambrose team after game number one. Peckles with... Well, I don't. I don't know if this is a bold claim. I don't know if this is a, a little bit of a fib, but that might be the most dominant support game that NECC has seen to date. It was a six three and twenty three. Yes, that was six six two and twenty three. Oh my gosh! Six two and twenty three. Absolutely about phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal support there out of the Rakan. Absolutely top tier. Um. I, I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, 31 minute game and, you know, 29 of 38 KP. Okay. Yeah. I'll take that. Sure. Why not? Uh, oh what is that? K, what does that KDA go out to? 14 and a half. Hey, 14.5 KDA. Here? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hey, just <laughs> because you can't outside. do math doesn't mean I can't do math. Uh, <laughs> leave all the math to me, Ethan. Leave all the math to me. No worries. Third, here's a fresh idea. Third caster is not pictured only for math. <laughs> Where it's like it's like uh, it's like phone a friend. Like, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Jerry, you got the stats on that? Ethan, in this situation, I am the friend. <laughs> uh, um. So. <laughs> oh man. Yo, that I I don't even know what to say. I mean, the the game really spoke for itself there. Uh, the only lane that wasn't absolutely winning was top lane. Yeah. If I'm Valpo, that's where I'm looking. I'm like, okay, top lane. And, you know, jungle was okay. The jungling was okay. Olaf didn't have a bad, uh, and Poner didn't have a bad game. That was one of those times, though, where the mid lane and the bot lane were so oppressive. He really couldn't get in there to do anything. And Olaf is a run you down champion. And if you're going to die halfway to who you're running down, there's not a lot that you can do but i i say if you're valpo you got to look at the top lane you got to look at your jungle go we're going to play through the top lane mid lane 
bot lane, sit under tower, do your farming, do a little bit of poke. But we have to play through our top laner because it might not work in any other lane right now. Yeah, absolutely. So building upon that, Coach, if you know that you want to play through your top lane, that's where you think that maybe at a minimum, that's where the matchup is most even. What champion pool are you thinking uh, to, to putting on your top laner, right? Because you need someone who can hard carry. What champs come to the front of your mind when you're thinking about, ah, we need our top laner to carry. What do you think about putting them on? Uh, in this meta, it's an interesting question. Uh, one that comes to my mind, uh, just because I've seen it a lot, uh, Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser can do it. Uh, not only just by taking out like the best member of the opposing team, uh, just fighting them in the death realm and seeing what can happen, uh, but the the aura, the passive aura, which doesn't get a, enough credit. It deserves more credit than it gets. Uh, if you're Mordekaiser and you're standing in the middle of the entire enemy team and everyone's taking consistent damage, what more could you possibly want? Oh, wait, the enormous mace on your shoulder, which you are dropping on people's faces. But what if they're not close enough to you? Oh, wait, I have a pull. I can put you right next to me in the aura under the mace. So I'd, I'd look maybe at a Mordekaiser as a carry. He would need help early from a jungler to get a lead. Uh, we saw in game one of match one, Aurelia, an AD champion. Aurelia carried hard uh, a more mobile champion, and I think that's what Valpo needs at the moment. I think they absolutely need more mobile champions. They got picked. They got run down. They got stuck under towers. They had no way to leave. Uh, but So one AD, Aurelia, one AP, Mordekaiser. Uh, at the moment, the meta is not really heavy with carry tops. It's just not. Yeah. Um, you, you have tops that can get ahead. Like, Orn can get ahead, but he's not going to carry. He could be the tankiest man in three rifts, but he's not going to carry on damage or kills. Uh, you might need to get your top lane ahead, and you might need to play through the top lane, but you might need to play through the top lane to get your jungler fed. I'm thinking Kha'Zix. I'm thinking Evelyn. I'm thinking... Lee Sin, even one of those three who can snowball, get a lead, and absolutely delete people because that's the only way it looks like you're going to take out anybody from St. Ambrose. Um, the support play was too good. Anybody with any healing or shields that they're going to play is going to stop you from winning front to back, especially yeah. with as good as their support is. It's got to be a delete button. And I'm thinking the Kha'Zix. I'm thinking the Kha'Zix. I'm thinking you keep a tank in the top. I'm thinking you play with around the Kha'Zix, through the top lane, get the Kha'Zix fed. In the late game, just watching Kha'Zix jump over walls and murder people. Not fight them, murder them. Absolutely take them out of the equation. Absolutely, yeah. I'm laughing, Coach. I, we need you to move down to the spectator spot. <laughs> oh, sorry. My apologies. <laughs> no, you are all good. And the spectator link is in the chat for Pro Draft. Though. We're going to get right into it. I really love what you said about molding not just your top laner, but also your jungle around it. Um, another top laner that really comes to mind for me is Vladimir. All right. The scaling link game is just so massive. If, if you can really build around the Vladimir, patch up the early game. That's that's all we're trying to figure out right now. Uh, what what they can do uh, that that jungle top two v two. I think you hit the nail on the head, coach. Is exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, what what can they build around this top lane? What can they do around Zach's XDR uh, for Valparaiso? As they did take an ugly loss in game number one. If you're just joining us, we're about to get into game number two in our second best of three of the night, pitting San Ambrose against Valparaiso. You're watching the NECC, who is sponsored by HyperX. No matter who you are or how you play, we're all gamers. And by ESTV, the first ever dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities. My name's Nellhead. I'm joined, Coach James, Coach Jim. You know, whatever whatever floats your boat in the in the booth with me. Uh, we've been having an absolute blast tonight. If you aren't already, hit the follow button. This is the time. The NECC putting on so much content. Five days a week, we've got League of Legends, Overwatch, Madden, Rocket League, and Valorant. Hey! 
Let's Fourth, go. Charm. Ah. Fourth charm's charm, Ethan. Fourth times a charm, indeed. I could not. I could not remember Valorant. Valorant and Madden. It's new. It's new. It's new. You're Yay, fine. It's that, new. That's the excuse. Um, <laughs> so you see Cassidy and Orange, Shen and Aurelia band out the block. Some champs you talked about, like the Aurelia coach, you also talked about the Orange Shen going as well. Did any of these initial bands surprise you as where Khan goes? You know, we didn't we didn't talk about the Shen. Talk about somebody not through damage, but can carry early if you're trying to play through. And then late game, stand united. Talk about being able to save anyone, anywhere, at any time. I really like that bet. And then banning out the Evelyn, I talked about they might have to put Valpo on an assassin in the jungle, taking out one of the better AP assassins in the meta at the moment with the Evelyn. And I don't know if Lily is the right pick for Valpo. I don't want to say it too early, but I don't know. I mean, if she doesn't get ahead, she doesn't ever get ahead. So she's gonna have to she's gonna have to go at it. Might have to invade. And against the graves, the invade is not going to happen. So we're gonna have to watch on that one. Now, if she does get ahead, have you, have you seen a lot of Lilia games? Uh, I played a lot. Don't don't clown me in chat for this. I played a lot of Lilia support because it's fun. All right, not not in rank. Don't. <laughs> Hey, don't don't put me on trial. Uh, but I have seen a decent amount of Lilia. So, right, so scary. Know, if she gets fed, she's scary. If she doesn't get fed, she's Hecarim's younger sister, and she's trying, and she's adorable. Yep. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I like the Yone pick. I like the Yone pick. If they lock it in, they did. Uh, get out of dodge. Just able to rubber band in there, get some damage, get out of dodge. I love the Senna pick with the mobility, with the root, with the global. That's the way they're going to have to play. So that global will allow them to play through the top lane. Even the bot lane will be able to support mid and top lane. Uh, I'd love to see this. Uh, Upper Iowa loves to play Senna Morgana and just have that double root in the bot lane. And then late game, have all of the crowd control. Just say, you don't get to move. So more bands. Oh, there's the, ah, ooh, good counter to Senna. But yeah. I would love to, I'd love to see a Morgana here, I think. I think that'd be fun. The Morgana wasn't bad. They just got outplayed by the Rakan early. Uh, I'm trying to remember the support's name for Valpo. My apologies. Uh, uh, Pop Mushroom. Pop Mushroom. There you go. Yes. Uh, we, we, we said that name enough as they were dying. You'd think I'd remember um that's mean i apologize i i've been trying not to be mean tonight i've been trying oh, not to be mean tonight man. coach My you, did, you did so good up to that point you were really holding it in throwing shade i apologize um uh, i have nothing against any of these teams any of these players uh you know all college players all they're doing it like it's, it's like any college sport everybody playing a college sport esports football basketball anything they're here because they love it they're not getting paid to be here they're here because they love it and yeah, you should never say anything bad about anybody who's here for the love of what they do. Yeah, uh, so my apologies though, but it did feel like we were seeing Pop Mushroom's name on the on the board a lot, saying has been killed, uh, usually uh, by Nico TV. So we'll see if that one changes at all. Uh, ironically, the Jin wasn't banned, and they didn't go back to it, opting for the Ash this game. I don't know as good as that Jin was, I might have gone back to it. I just think that Ash feels so strong against the Senna. Uh, you kind of know it as a counter pick. Um, I know Senna at all, like whether it's a fasting Senna or you're truly playing ADC Senna, as someone who's played a decent amount of support Senna, playing as Ash just hurts my soul a little bit. Uh, like everything I want to do, Ash is like, cool. It, it feels like going to the DMV. You know, the, I know what I want to do. I know what I'm here for. I just can't do it. Um so that's that's how I feel. Twitch can be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We were, we were, oh. Uh. Baited breath? Ooh. No, no, don't. Go. Oh, that's going to be dirty. That'll be dirty. Don't, don't lock that in. Give him a shot. Don't lock that in. <laughs> That'll be dirty. All that right. oh. Okay. So here's the question. You were wrong before. Is that Malphite top or is that Malphite support? <sighs> Why well, you gotta put me on the spot, coach? I'm gonna I, go yeah. Malphite support because right. the, it, it feels so bad. I've played against bot lane. I played this bot lane before. Uh, the engage range is just nuts. If you hit it's, one, it's, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. 
It's it's insane. Like if Malphite hits his R, you're dead. Like you're actually if, if Unstoppable Force connects, see you later. Uh, Bye. Yeah. Nar locked in here, so they have confidence in the top lane once again. Zach's XDR going back with what we have to assume was a comfort pick by this point. Last pick for Valpo waiting in the wings. What are we expecting here, Coach? Uh, you know, I just had a thought that that, in theory, could be a Yone ADC. Uh, and it could have been a Senna support, but that Tarek will get locked in at support. An interesting choice. Uh, Senateric going to have a lot of good synergy there, a lot of healing coming up. That's a lane that can sustain for a long, long, long time. Absolutely. Uh, we'll see SAU waiting on their last pick. They have an interesting composition so far. There's the Pantheon. Wow. I got to say, it's a it's a funky composition, but I'm kind of in love with this SAU comp coach. What are your initial thoughts walking out of this pro draft? I'm looking at that Pantheon. I'm going to go support. because I believe that Pantheon is going to go support. I'm with you. And, and I... I hate seeing Pantheon support. You cannot kill the man. He just keeps coming. Um, I'm looking at this draft, and I mean, if I was if I was a gambler in Vegas right now, if I was talking to my bookie, if I had him on speed dial, my, my phone's over there. You can see him. The phone's over there. I'm not talking to my bookie, but if my bookie can hear me, uh, I would. I think I would put it on St. Ambrose for this one. All of the engage tools they have, the Ash Arrow. The Pantheon uh, Ultimate. The Malphite Ultimate. You don't even need the other two Ultimates. You've got those three. You're going to be engaging every team fight. And somebody put it in the Twitch chat that Valpo was going for high skill cap champions. Not so great in the 5v5. And that's not wrong. You've got a bunch of people. Uh, and even picking up the Taric, which helps their team fight immeasurably. Even picking up the Taric. Uh, your your team fight's just not going to be as good as, as St. Ambrose. And St. Ambrose already proved that they like to team fight, that they like to get in there, mix it up. Uh, and, and yeah, they had an advantage, so the team fights were easier for them. Uh, I just have a feeling this is going to be a, a bad ending here for Valpo. Yeah, uh, it kind of feels the same way. I mean, we look at San Ambrose. I guess the best way to describe their play style in game number one is a lethargic meat grinder. Uh, they really got the lead, but they waited and they just kind of pushed out value and value and value. And eventually they had enough to get the win. It feels similar to that. Again, they have so many go buttons, right? Malphite Alti, Oriana Alti. Ash Alti, Pantheon brings the CC. So there's so many ways they can engage and start this offense that I don't think they have to play at any particular tempo except the tempo that they exactly want to play in. They dictate the speed of this game is what it really feels like with the exception of solid Lilia alts. And if you can find Dazzles off the Tark, uh, they did nerf the Tark E-range, the Dazzle, a little bit. So... We will see if Pop Mushroom has played about Tarek because it threw me off so much at first. The, uh, the one that could change. the one that could be absolutely dirty is Tarek Ultimate on top of Yone. Yeah. That that could get dirty. Uh and that could be a game changer. But I said I wanted to see Ben Zhao on a more mobile champion. I got exactly what I asked for. Uh so we're gonna have to see because on the Zareth, um, he wasn't bad. I'm not saying he, he didn't have a bad game. He got ganked and roamed on and just deleted by people early. So he really couldn't scale as well as he would have wanted to. But he was on a very immobile champion. Now with Yone, with the mobility, what's he going to be able to show us? Especially going back into the Oriana, who stayed immobile on the Oriana. That being said, a couple of great shockwaves were the turning points. Well, not the turning points, but the nails that uh, were being driven into the coffin that is Valparaiso in game one. The shockwaves were game enders, basically. They're like, oh, this fight's almost over? No, no, here it is. Here's the button. It's over. Yeah, absolutely. I think we could take the whole rest of the time talking about this one thing. We'll see how long it actually takes. Give me your take as a support main we're, we're going to combine some things. I hope you got your, your two bowls ready. I'm making cookies after this. I've already I've already got my creamed butter here, the rest of my ingredients here, and bada boom. Combine for me 
Peckle's last performance with the mobility that Pantheon provides to that ulti. What do we what 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 kind of fancy cake are we baking for the opportunists this game? Pantheon has greater global impact, but Rakan actually I think has more mobility. Uh, and, but that's just a, a mixture of terms there. Yeah. Uh, you know, mo- the mobility, but I mean, yeah, Pantheon with his uh, it's not a global ult, it's a near global ult, I believe. Um but he can get to a fight. Whereas once Rakan was at the fight, he was able to maneuver around, get wherever he needed to be, uh, and then get back out. The problem with Pantheon is that once Pantheon goes in, he isn't leaving. He might walk away, but he ain't getting out fast. So if you can get any kind of crowd control on him, that's what it's going to be. So it's going to be a little bit different in the bot lane. Rakan, with the Rakan, you were able to get in, get out, engage the fight, start the fight, and walk away if you needed to. But they won't have that with the Pantheon. Middle and late game, um, he'll be able to go where he wants. So uh, mid-late game, I'll definitely give it to the Pantheon. It's going to be interesting, though. Tarek, just sitting in lane, sustaining, sustaining, sustaining. Just, yeah. I don't know how else to say it. Sustaining, sustaining. They're still sta- sustaining in the background while I'm trying to come up with adjectives and synonyms for sustaining, sustaining, <laughs> sustaining. I don't think I've said it enough times yet. Oh, and then boy. with the Senna, it's like Tarek sustains on his own, and then he put the Senna in there with her Q, her natural, you know, the natural healing off the Q, her movement ability, her, her root, which that delayed root can be disgusting in a team fight. If you're forcing somebody back, it's like, oh, you got hit with the delayed root. Your choices are not go back to your team and die or go back to your team and watch them all get rooted. Which would you like? Please, I'll wait. Yeah, absolutely. So buy or sell? Bigger performance this game from Peckles or smaller performance last game? What, what, which one? We, we plus or minus here? Uh, I, I think Peckle's better game would have been will be game one. Okay. If he has a better game here than in game one, this game will be over in 17 minutes. 17. Write it down. 17. Uh, 17. Someone, someone clip it. We're holding, we're holding coach to that. What, what, what do we put if, on the line? Call, if, your bookie, Peckle, call your bookie. Yeah, if Peckle's... He's not taking my calls right now. If, if Peckle's has a better game in game two than in game one, this will be a very, very short affair. Uh, the one we haven't talked about at all is Nate Mac on the Graves. Yeah, uh, we talked about it in game one. We talked about it in a team that didn't have any engage. Oh, the smoke is going to be huge. That's how they're going to get on the enemy team. It's completely different here in game two of this match where they have all of the engage. So the engage will all happen, and then you're going to get the smoke on top of the fight. If that happens, it's over. There's no extra question marks. It's just over. Absolutely. You have the matching Spear Blossom skins here once again. Uh, we saw the synergy come through last game. Just a quick reminder, if you're sticking around in chat, here is, I'm going to make sure to pause it five seconds, to drop a follow if you haven't already. I already got my win for the day. I said that all the games are right. We're not going through the ordeal again. <laughs> but five <laughs> days a week, five different collegiate esports. So much content coming through. Gentlemen, are we ready on the five second mark? Ready. Five, four, three, two, one, go. We've got game number two. Valparaiso going up against St. Ambrose University, the Bees against the Crusaders. The Crusaders will be coming out on the blue side once again. The Bees coming out on the red side. Coach, what are we looking at here in terms of level one action between these two squads? I think St. Ambrose invades 100%. Not only because I'm looking at a five stack coming down here, but I think they've got the momentum. I think they've got, you know, it in their head, the confidence. And I think this is just a hard invade. I don't think this is a fact-finding mission. I think they're coming in, and it looks like they're going to have a target. They're going the long way. They took the scenic route, but it might pay off. Dark Miner. Oh, no. The no. preemptive ash. Oh, first blood dropped at 57 seconds. The bees are swarming right now as they get game number two off to about as good a start as you could have hoped for.
I feel bad. I don't think the Senna was paying attention. Yeah. Uh, they they came around the edge there. There was a moment where Senna could have started running, and I she missed the moment. Absolutely missed the moment. And at that point, there was nothing you could do. Do you know what the best thing that Dark Miner did there? Didn't flash. burn the flash. Yeah, didn't flash. Didn't burn the flash. Uh, you got the flash out of Peckles. No, I'm sorry, you got the ignite out of Peckles, though. But didn't burn the flash because that would have been the end of it. If Senna yeah. flashes there, if Dark Miner flashes, then you're going to lose lane for sure. At least at this point, you still have a chance to win lane because you don't have to worry about being flashless in lane. Absolutely, but if you're Pickles, you really don't care about burning the Ignite. I mean, it's the shortest, uh, I believe it's the shortest cooldown at just 180 seconds if memory does serve. So, I mean, I mean, it's already almost half up. You really don't oh, mind no, using I, that. I have no problem with that. I burn Ignite. I mean, we invade every oh, game. I, oh, I yeah, burn Ignite I mean, every time. I every burn time. Ignite just in lane. I'm trying to get your heal out, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I want to get your potions out of the way. I want to burn the... Get, so, no, I, I I thought he'd burn the flash, but it was the uh, the Ignite, so... No, no awesome. problem there. Oh, yeah. Talk about Ignite being burned in the yeah. mid lane. Kill pressure there. Talk and about now, that. Now, going to make back right away. That's going to be big. Dazzle's going to come up short, but Ostabolus is going to stick around. Pops the potion. Wow. This is a gutsy, gutsy move here. If this doesn't pan out, remember this moment at 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Ostapol is sticking around in the mid lane. Graves is in the vicinity though, so they may be trying to bait something into a Nate Mac game. We were talking about mobility, needed on Ben Zhao, and he's got it here in spades. Oh, Ben Zhao! There it is! Wow, the hero they needed in game number one. They do get some blood here in game number two. Their first kill will come at the 312 mark. They needed that in a big, big way. Coach, something that we didn't talk about is off course is going to teleport right back to lane here. Ben Jow say, yeah, round two, baby. Ding, sure. ding, ding. Let's get it popping. Let's, let's go again. Absolutely. Uh, something we didn't talk about. How does Defleegs land against Zach's XDR? I mean, we know Malphite does not have a particularly strong early on landing phase. There's no mobility. Uh, technically have a gap closer with the key on that cheese wheel, but there's not much to the kit. What can Defleegs do early on? Ben Jow. Here's the gate coming through. Peckles oh, the flash. Oh, 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 my. Peckles on the roam. Are they playing double jungle? Uh, no, 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 night. no, no, no double smite. Uh, <laughs> but it certainly <laughs> feels like it with just ha where Peckles is on the map, right? Especially last game. Peckles was everywhere at once. Teleport being spent by Defleeds going back up to the top lane. We asked how effective Peckles was going to be on a different champ, and we've got our answer here at just level got three. Our answer. Uh, but to answer your question about the Malphite, I think you just slow play it. You know you're not going to win the lane against the Nar. You know you're not going to outright win the lane, and you know you have one of the best team fight ultimates in League of Legends. So you slow play it. You don't let the Nar get fed. If the Nar doesn't get fed, Valpo can't play through the top lane. And then as soon as you hit six, you roam around, you make kills, you make plays. And your team carries you off on their shoulders later because you've got 30 assists. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with that being said, though, uh, the fleet tech's putting some work on Zach's XDR here. And, ooh, Nate Mac doesn't know that the river is boarded, but is hanging around looking for some potential. Probably not combining. You see Yone hovering around that drag pit. Both teams just going to drop some wards in river. I don't expect a move to be made at Dragon this early on by the Lilia, although Graves is proficient at taking down those objectives. Ostapol is taking more damage from Ben Zhao to get a little bit more of a poke in before getting rubber banded back. I hate that ability. I hate that ability so much. <laughs> That's oh. it. I have nothing else to say on that. I just, I hate that ability. That's all. That's it's, an amazing, it's an amazing ability. Don't get me wrong. It's an amazing ability. Uh, it's just so hard to play against. Because you're like, I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. Even if you see, oh, see them. The flash! The fleeks! Oh my goodness! We we're talking about slow playing and all of a sudden takes advantage and gets the kill in the top lane. How about that? That's why I don't play the top lane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, talking about the Yone, uh, he's so hard to take care of because even if you crowd control him, he's gonna go back. He's gonna rubber band back, but unfortunately, uh, Lilia goes in there trying to find something and my kid flashed on, did get flashed on. But yeah, counter game turn turns into a 2v3 there. Ben Zhao gonna pay the price and 
Ah, uh, this might result in a dragon, but here comes Zach's XDR. Looking to rotate all the way from top lane here, coach. Ooh. Coming good, through. Good damage. Good damage. Oh! Did you see? Okay, so the Graves dashed in front of that. I don't know if it was on purpose or not. Dashed in front of that W, saved the Oriana. Yeah. 100%. If that was on purpose, God IQ play. If that wasn't on purpose, lucky man. Uh, either way, uh, Nate Max going to claim that's all skill if you ask the teammates. Uh, but as a result of that uh, kind of standoff around Dragon, no one is going to be able to make a move on Dragon here for a little bit. What I'm keeping my eye on right now, Coach, is the fact that Peckles is one level away from having that ultimate ability. And once Starfall is online... You better watch out, because Peckles has eyes everywhere, it seems like. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Because Peckles Pantheon is coming to your lane. Oh, yeah. Absolutely coming to a lane near you. Tossing spears, ganking, doing it all. I am just awestruck by the, the, the playmaking ability coming through from Peckles. I'm also very impressed by Defleet's Alpha here in the top lane. Uh, getting it done very solidly, very succinctly. Uh, just just a very solid mount by the Flash coming through with the confidence they can finish still in the tower. They did complete the tower dive, but on the other end of the board, Ben Zhao's Yon has been impressive to say the least. It's been impressive. I was hoping he would be up further on CS though. Oriana doing a great job of farming. As this could be another problem here, uh, ultimate available for the Malphite. He'll be able to follow if he wants to. And do it. won't do it there. Uh, but had it available. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, maybe just not wanting to do it blind. Uh, there's a small risk that you miss and blow the alternate or stuck on the other side of the wall for a collapse. Very patient play, which, as we said, lethargic meat grinder is how I described their last performance. And there's the fleeks. Doesn't even matter. Unstoppable force coming through. Zax XDR going to go down one more auto. The fleeks up two kills to none in that top lane duel. And that's probably going to open up an opportunity for Dragon on the bot side. Lulia with opportunity to steal from the back of the pit here. I'm, I'm trying to look at the uh, the items coming out here. Crystal, uh, Sapphire crystal and uh, cloth armor. And I'm trying to think about what uh, possibly uh, Defleegs is going to try to build there. Frozen Heart potentially first? P possibly Frozen Heart first item, uh, which is an interesting call against the Gnar. Yeah, very, very interesting indeed. I think that tank itemization in general is uh, somewhat interesting. And Malphite too, because you can go full AP. It did get nerfed, the scalings recently, but... Oh, Hey, this is my lane. I don't know what you're doing walking in here like you own the place. Uh, I think, though, Defleeks is their, is their tank this game, though. So I think tank's the right call. Yeah. Uh, I would just think against the Gnar specifically, uh, you know, Sunfire Cape could be really good. Yeah, uh, especially, yeah, because when you get Mega, Mega Gnar form, you have to be very close, except when you're ruling boulders. So... Uh, the, the damage coming through. You talk about the CC. You do get the burn with the new update to the bombing sitter items. Ben Zhao gonna dive tower. Ostapolis tick, tick, tick. Boom on that ignite. Jesus. Going to pick up the kill. Eats the tower shot. The back doesn't even matter. Playing very well. You wanted the mobility out of Ben Zhao, coach. You got what you asked for. He checked his list. Made sure you were nice, and you got exactly what you wanted this Christmas. I don't, I don't know why we're bringing out the Christmas uh, jokes this early, but I don't I don't mind. I don't mind. But no, Benjo, absolutely night and day from game one to game two. Absolutely night and day in the mid lane for Valpo. Absolutely. Uh, Zach CR has got to watch out. Unstoppable forces up in like two seconds. You would be so careful. They're just they're just sticking around. The Fleeks is about to ult it. I, I don't see any way around this. Uh... Zach's. Oh, the I guess problem Lilia's here is the yeah the Lily is there. She's backing, but she's there. Lily is gone. The team didn't see Lily anyway. But Ben Zhao going in once again. Astapolis going to escape. Maybe a bait here. Graves responding to the mid lane. Peckle is going to take a little bit of damage there from the Senna. Unstoppable force is now available. We'll see. I'm. I'm I think we're going to see it come through.
The Fleegs chasing down. Zach, Zach's CR though is really close to Meganar, so I I would wait. I might wait. Oh, the Ash Arrow! All the way to mid lane! Wait. No way! Sniper! Get down! Great ultimate coming out of Ash there. And that was how they were going to need to take care of Yone. Can't rubber band if you're standing still. Hackles coming through. Oh my goodness. Get on the janitorial outfit. Scoops up another kill. Just cleaning it up right now. And Poner goes down. They're going to be able to put in some work on this mid lane tower following that. The bees are all on the same page right now. They are playing so, so well. It's Nico TV. What an ulti coming through. You know, we talked about that if Valpo was going to get something done, it was going to have to be through the top lane, through the jungle. I think that's the first time we've said M Poner's name in game number two. Beckles, under tower, the fleet, they're going to combo the ulti. That is way too easy, coach. Woo! Uh, Back up to you said, I believe you're right. That's the first time we have said M Poner's name. Uh, I think it's been easy to forget that Alilia is even in this game, right? There's been zero impact. It feels like one death, 74 CS, so is up in the Graves in CS, but the Graves has two kills and assists, 150 bags on their head. It's just the impact feels so much bigger, but here it is. You wanted the impact, dropping that rip kill in the bot lane. Ben Jiao may bit off a little bit more than they can chew, hopping over the wall, oh. flashing. Can't get out of that sticky situation, but on the bot side, they will claim a significant number of plays. Teleport coming through. They're not going to be able to finish off that second last play or the tower. Ash Alpi is up. Do they pursue this? I don't think they have the speed to get there. I don't think they do. That was unfortunate, though, for, uh, for Ben Zhao there. Didn't know that Graves was waiting in the jungle behind him there. Uh, and just tried to escape, and it's like, oh, hi. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not leaving, am I? <laughs> Absolutely not leaving. Yeah, I don't think Benja realized what they were walking into. And then, surprise, it's half of the team. Nate back there over the wall to scoop it up. Can Peckles 1v1 M Pona right now? I don't yes. think so. You think so? Absolutely. Oh, 403. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I retract my statement. I was, I was looking <laughs> at the items. Here comes Peckles right now. Speaking of the devil, Ben Zhao going to rubber band back. Peckles in the bush. Ben Zhao has no idea. It's Nico TV. Don't notch another. Don't notch another Ash Alti. Oh, there it is. That one much easier than the first. But regardless, it's Nico TV not missing right now. This is going to result in a free Infernal Dragon. You know, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a Pantheon ADC with an Ash support, but hey, first time for everything. <laughs> first time for everything indeed. Bowling Ball gonna hit Peckles, but they do scoop up the Dragon. Up eight kills at 14 minutes, up 5k gold. Not quite the lead that they had at 14 minutes last game, coach, but they are look. it's looking like it's, we're gonna have the same result as last game right now. Unless something changes here, I'm still waiting for M Poner. Uh, I think they could have some really great team fight potential with the Lilia alt uh, if played correctly. But at the moment, uh, you know, the, the high mark on the board is the Fleegs at level 11. Boy, two levels up on the Nar, three levels up on the Lilia. Oh. And just, that's not a fight you can take when you're three levels down with Lilia. The flash, the cheese wheel coming through, counter flash, the slow one more auto. Oh my gosh! What can you do against the mountain? Woo! The fleas get it done. Ben Zhao, are you sure you want this smoke? Going up to the top lane. The fleas, do they have it in for a central 1v3 situation? Coming through. Ben Zhao drops the ulti. A lot of damage. Tick, tick, tick on the ignite. Not going to be enough. Peckles responding. Ben Zhao in a world of hurt now. 3v1 situation. Nate Mac. Peckles here. Peckles picks up the kill. 5 Oh, and four support right now. Good. It's been, been a great game for Peckles. It's been an absolutely great game for Peckles. It's been a great game for Peckles. And I, I think Nico TV is looking around going, I know I had a support when this game started. Uh, I seem to have misplaced them, but we're winning, so I'm not really going to complain. Absolutely. No, everything, all pain is healed with time and winning. And uh, the bees are doing a lot of that former thing winning tonight. The fleas here on Zach XDR. 
Look, look, look at the audacity the fleet just approaches with. Under tower, pops the cheese wheel, gets back. Would not be surprised you see a full commit tower dive here with the ulti. Uh, just doing so much damage. This this Malphite is absolutely nuts right now. Pankles, Ostapolis, sees this mid tower. Ben Zhao, there's the ulti coming through rubber band. Not gonna matter. Pankles gets the kill through the rubber band, but will go down on the back end. CC coming through, trying to turn around with the 1v2. Pickles! Oh my gosh! What an escape back there! Ostapolis might get out too! Oh, the CC coming through the Dark Miner does pick up Ostapolis. Nate Mac going a little bit low here. Pickles sticking around, not a place you want to be. There's the Dazzle. They will finally get... No way. Oh, no, oh, not oh. like this. Oh my gosh, Nate Mac going to escape. Flash. <laughs> oh man coach that turned so sour uh, finally so finally the damage coming in there <laughs> absolutely finally the damage coming in there from valpo you know we were talking about itemization for the malphite we thought maybe frozen heart it will be iceborne gone yeah and uh, the armor boots to boot there is the fleets trying to stick around here it looks like they will have to give up this rip job. there's not much that the fleets can so low most likely, maybe just buy some time for the rest of the team to get Pickles? 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 Yeah, Pickles? Pickles? Does Pickles have a miracle in them right now? We see the bot, bot lane fight. Ben Zhao gonna pick that one up. Very low here! <gasps> Who got it? Did Pickles pick it up? I, I, I didn't get any text there. Uh, but uh, the Bleed scoops that up. It does look like it was claimed by nobody? Am, am I deceived? Oh, no, no, no. It was yep. picked up by the Lilia. Lilia got it. Lilia got okay. it. However, it, it, they lost four, three members of their team for it. I don't quite know if that's worth uh, I'm going to say, take a definitive stance and say that is not worth considering the state of the game. It was a risky call, and it's good that you got it in the end. But, man, surrendering four members for it just does not sit right with me. Trailing 13 kills. That gold deficit is growing, nearing 10K. But to give some credit here to Ballad Parazo, the Crusaders have played a much better game than game one. Bit of a 2v2 here. Peckles with Nate Mac going to get an easy kill onto Dark Miner. Stood absolutely no chance in the bush there. It, it has been a much better game for Valparaiso. And the thing we were looking at, we've been talking about, you know, Ben Zhao having a better game, Ben Zhao having a better game. I just looked at the scoreboard. Ben Zhao has died seven times this game. Where have I missed his deaths? Yeah, uh, I'm absolutely with you. It, it doesn't feel like it. And add another to the total. That's eight deaths now as It's Nico TV finally picks up their first kill. You know, having 19 kills and your first ADC kill comes in at 19 minutes. But this fight might not be done. Peckles not giving up pursuit. They will scoop up their third dragon of the game here, barring some sort of heroic coming through. Scrap here. I mean, they're more concerned about the red buff at this moment in time, and they will get it. Peckles does get stunned there, trying to fight it off. Ostapolis running away. They will just hop over the wall, take the dragon, and leave. Approaching the 20 minute mark, coach, and St. Ambrose is looking dominant as ever. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm just going through looking at some of the itemizations here. Hex Drinker on the Gnar. Uh, you got the full uh, full jungle item uh, runic echoes on the Lilia, uh, Phantom Dancer on the Yone, Manamune on Senna. No full item yet though on the Taric. Uh, those don't sound like bad items at 13 minutes, but we're at the 20 minute mark here. On the other side, you got an Iceborne Gauntlet and a Sunfire Cape on the Malphite. Full Red Smite Warrior on the Graves. Know, uh, staff and uh, six stack dark steel there on the Oriana as the fleet finally does go down there. But to the Tarek, that's not who you want the shutdown gold on. Peckles scooping up a kill on the Lilia. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Coach. Breaking down the items there. I mean, it just it just kind of hurts, right? Uh, Valpo's playing a better game, but once again, it just feels like they've been outclassed by St. Ambrose in this one. And, I mean, very quietly, they have 21 kills in 20 minutes. Very quietly. Like, we've been seeing them kill people, but in the back of your mind, it hasn't really been adding up. It's like, oh, yeah, there's a kill. Oh, yeah, there's a kill. But then you look at the scoreboard, it's like 21. Okay, fine. 21 kills. 
Um, I, I will admit, I, it looks like I'm going to be a little bit off on my prediction. I said if Peck, Peckles had a better game, it would be a 17-minute game. At the moment, on pace for a better game on the Pantheon than on the Recon. And let's be honest, that was something that was going to be hard to pull off anyway, and he's done it. Yeah, Peckles has got to be match MVP at this moment in time. Obviously, only in game two. We'll see Valparaiso has a miracle up their sleeve, but they are going to need it and need it in a hurry. Oh, mushroom. Be careful there. They are playing in Valpo's jungle right now, starting to cut them off the resources. The ward line has been moved up. They are just camping out in the bushes, looking like some Ewoks. Just, just, just a little bit of guerrilla warfare. They said, come to us. Uh, we would rather play on the home turf in the bushes. Very smart. Uh, and what we've come to expect from them, right? The, the lethargic meat grinder has returned. Let's try not to laugh with the Ewok comment. Uh, but yes, absolutely the slow, methodical League of Legends. Once again, apply pressure until they stop breathing. Uh, if you don't make any mistakes, at this point, if you're St. Ambrose, if you make zero mistakes, you win the game. Yep. It might take you a little bit longer, but if you make zero mistakes, you 100% win the game. Yep. That, that part's I been decided. It, I mean, Valpo could play amazingly here for the next 40 minutes. And unless a mistake is made, I still don't think they win this game. Absolutely. I would say that it's uh, it's San Ambrose's game to lose. Is Peckle's going to find Benjel there on the backside? Ooh, Shockwave not going to find any targets. Ospolis got to go out of there. Ooh, this could be a big play by Benjel. Sent Alti on top. Going to go down. Ospolis flashing over the wall. So they do get two kills. They do get two bags of shutdown gold. Handing the first death over to Peckles. He's been having a great game. It's Nico TV. There's the slip coming through. This could be big. The Crusaders find some life. Getting a three for zero. Something I didn't think I would say at this stage of the game. M. Poner looking for more. Not sure if it's the wisest thing to chase here. Ben Zhao going to get out of there. Dazzle not going to find its target. Be careful. A big deflease all day. I think they might be able to 2v5. From this position, he's got to be very careful. You're still coach. That's what we were talking about, though. That was the mistake that St. Ambrose didn't want to make. They didn't need to be in that position. I think Peckles got a little bit overconfident in what they were doing, went in there on the Yone, was not able to finish it as he alts back into this fight. Yeah, he I, has Starfall. Yes, yeah, well, teleports I, through. The Fleegs rotating. Watch the Fleegs Alti here. Oh, catches two. Ospol picks up the Dark Miner. Tark Alti coming through is going to be big. Ash Alti not going to find his intended target. Ben Zhao on the backside. This could be big. Kendra Crusaders turn it. They need some more damage. Ben Zhao going to get rubber banded before they can finish it off. Peckles. Ospol is going so, so low. And that could have been it right there. That could have been the second mistake from St. Ambrose. Teleporting back into oh. that fight. Ben Zhao, look at this. I, you, you said it. You said it and it came true, Coach. Are you sure? You're not a fortune teller. It's going to happen. Oh my gosh, Ben Zhao. There is the second mistake. 11 kills to 24. Ben Zhao, the lifeline for this Valparaiso team. And as we look here, I mean, Ben Zhao, he's sitting at level 14. I, I believe he might be the high level on the map. Maybe the De, maybe Defleeks has him. Defleeks is also at 14. But I mean, he went in there against uh, a, a Peck, Peckles. Peckles has had a great game, but he's three levels down. I don't really care what your itemization is. Is your three levels down? That's a lot of statistics that are not going in your favor. Yeah, absolutely. And all of a sudden, you look up. The Goldie is still. Massive. The drag lead is still undeniable, but something just feels different, Coach. It just feels there's something in the air. The it tables are turning different. a little. It feels a lot different. That there was the overconfidence right there. Now we have to see if St. Ambrose can take that deep breath, because this is the moment. This is the moment where you either tilt or you you know get your your legs back underneath you here. You know, all of a sudden Valpo, with a big left hand out of nowhere. And St. Ambrose is back on the ropes at the moment. I mean, it's hard to say that about a team that's up 8,000 gold, but they just got punched in the mouth, and they got to get their legs back under them and get back in the fight. They really did, and I think you talked about another game. Ben Zhao has to be on cloud nine right now, feeling so good about that pop-off. The Fiends looking for something here. Not going to find it. Ben Zhao 
Squeeze the Neville, popping in, gonna rubber band over the wall. Peckles takes a decent amount of damage here, gets a little bit chunk into the ulti. Peckles nearly going down. There's a double force, the Dark Miner. They pick up two kills to start the fight. Here are the Crusaders, but Nate Mac on the back line finally picks one up. Ben Zhao, we receive the Tark ulti. Double Lilia Drowsy coming through. Can they take down Nate Mac? Ash will fall. Nate Mac staying alive. Popping Mushroom does get the kill. The end up trading two for four. Oh my goodness. Do the Crusaders have it in them? Valparaiso fighting back. St. Ambrose, they're still got to take that deep breath. There is plenty of time here. They can take the deep breath, go back to what they were doing. But at the moment, they're letting Valparaiso choose the pace of the game. Not to toot my own horn, I was pretty sure I said earlier, Tarek Ultimate on Yone would be dirty. I'm pretty sure I said that earlier. But no, I we're now, I think, down to what? A 6,000 gold lead? This was about 13, five minutes ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was It was absolutely ludicrous a couple minutes ago. And as we said, if you just if you just tuned in and you just saw this game, you'd say, oh, it's over. The red team's got it. But something feels different. Valparaiso is showing the momentum. Some serious heart. Oh, yeah. All, All of the, the momentum, momentum is with Valparaiso right now. And it's it's scary to think that this is just like every other sport. Momentum matters. Your your train of thought matters. Your mental game, your mental toughness, mental fortitude. It all matters. And this this is what we're looking at right here. Oh, and Yone goes down. in again. Ooh, that was that was a really big rubber band. Heat check. That's what that was. Emponer going to go golden here. Oh, the Ash Arrow is going to connect. It's not the Emponer on the Pop Mushroom. They need to do something here. Turning it around. Pop Mushroom. Do they have the ult? He doesn't look like it at this point in time. Popping around. Peckle putting down some serious damage. No one falling just yet. Oh, Zach's XDR did go on the beginning of the fight. And there's another drop going in. Ben Zhao does pick one up. They're continuing the onslaught. Peckles is low. Astapolis got to be very careful. Unstoppable forms on the right hand side of the screen. But the fling's going to go down. Shut down gold. They finally find the one they wanted on the Ben Zhao. And Poner running with Dark Miner. Who's going to pick one up in an essential 1v3 situation? What a fight it's going to be a 4-4-3. Four, four, and even though it picked up a kill there, and it I mean I think they were gonna get that mid tower anyway. I don't know if I like the ultimate there from Peckles. I don't know if I like it. That might be the one misplay, one of two misplays he's had tonight. I think even without that ultimate, they still walk down Main Street. I yeah. think they still take those two towers. And I just don't think you need to give any more money to uh, any member of Valpo, especially not their ADC. Senna, I believe, had a double kill in that fight. Now sitting on Rapid Fire Cannon, Dust Blade, and uh, Mermana. So three big items now on the ADC with that global ultimate can affect the map from anywhere. And it's not what you want to see. Not, not what you want if you're St. Ambrose. Absolutely, and we do see this next dragon is up in 20 seconds here if you're Valparaiso this is one of the things that you need to complete the miracle comeback right you absolutely can't let them get soul Ooh, you also can't be caught out here Peckles finding some damage gonna be sustained right back that's our that's our word for the evening for sustain sustain if you're Valparaiso. sustain sustain absolutely the one Don't group up here the fleas gotta watch out for the fleas ulti unstoppable force one thing to note here we talked about how uh, ben Zhao is 3-7. and seven. All of a sudden, we look at the board. He's 10-9. and nine. Yeah, the ulti coming in. Ben Zhao going low. Goes into stasis. Will rubber band back. Getting out. The Senna ulti comes through a little bit prematurely. Going to put down some damage on the whole team. Dragon has spawned. Both teams have wards on the pit. Just kind of dancing around. Peckles gets hit from a bowling ball. The Nar going in. Tarek dazzling. Name that pixel kill. And here's the Tarek ulti. Not going to find as many people as they would have liked, but they continue the fight. The Fleegs, unstoppable force. It might not do a whole ton. Ben Zhao, there's the double kill for the Lilia. The Crusaders, they have won this fight. They should be able to get the dragon unless Nate Mac can do something about it. Doesn't look like much can be done. Valparaiso is sticking around in this game. Two straight dragons for them. I 
we've just been told by our producer that the gold lead has dropped from 12,000 to 7,000 gold. Ooh. So we were pretty close on our estimates earlier there, Ethan. Pretty close indeed. Yeah, it was, it was tough to remember how high it got there, but Ben Zhao putting in the absolute work this game. We see got a fan in chat, Ludvolt, the Paul Gamer, uh, dropping, dropping the respect in chat because Ben Zhao, 10 9 7, very, very, uh, the performance is very much bigger than that KDA tells you, just given the circumstances of how far they were down to how very much in this game they are right now. And you look at the itemization on the Yona, Death Stance, Phantom Dancer, IE, everything he needs is in his pocket right now. Everything else is icing on the cake. <laughs> Absolutely, and Mike, get Nico TV here, trying to pop the ulti, slip and slide coming through. Nico TV gonna go very, very low, not going to die from the dot damage. May have with an ignite, might have been close. Oh, 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 a little bit of payback for that ash oh, ulti oh, earlier oh, on. Absolute, oh. absolute snipe. As we've been talking about Senna's ultimate being global, being able to affect everything. The absolute snipe. Here we are to Nico TV. This is it for Valpo. They're putting it all on the line in this Baron here. They have to pick this up. Can they get over the wall for Contest on the backside? Going through. The Lilia does pick it up. Tarkalti. Namak, you got to get out of there. Looking potentially disastrous for SAU as they do retreat and only lose. It's Nico TV. As you said, Coach, absolute snipe coming through from the Dark Miner. And I think SAU has to give that Baron up. It's not a popular opinion but they were a man down. They were down their ADC. Their ADC is not super fed this game, but you're talking about somebody else just able to sit in the back line and throw damage. When you're out part of your damage, it changes all of your engage because it's gonna take longer to kill your opponents. So with that happened, I don't think they ever had a chance of stealing that Baron. It would have had to have been the absolute hero play. Oh. And I think if they just let it go, they can regroup and maybe try to take them as they're leaving the pit. Ben Zhao doing it once again. Now you see me, now you know. It's Nico TV gone in the blink of an eye. Whoa, keep your eye out here. Coming in. Defleeks does have ulti available. This could be a game changer in the fight. Defleeks. Can they find a big ulti? Being very patient. Here they are. They can't find it just yet. The root under tower. Ben Zhao gonna get another kill. Now resurrecting the fleas was not effective at all. It's gonna die under tower. And Boner continuing the assault. Bowling balls coming through. Peckles going low. Just now goes Valparaiso. They aced them. Oh my goodness. And, and there it is. There it is, we were talking about it. All St. Ambrose had to do was not make a mistake, and then they made six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know how many in a row losing the team fights one after another. I said it. They looked like they'd been hit on the chin. They were staggering backwards. They needed to take a breath. They needed to get their feet back under them, and they just kept pushing forward. It wasn't what they needed to do, and we wanted it. We're gonna get game three tonight. Absolutely a cacophony of SAU errors gives them night terrors as their worst nightmares are realized. Game number three, Valparaiso wins an absolute stunner of a game. Oh my goodness, Ben Zhao, build them a pedestal and worship them for that 13, 9, and 9 performance. Down 12k gold, but it didn't matter in the end. Let's talk about the fact that at the later half of that game, Ben Zhao in the later half of that game went 10 and 2. 10 and 2 in the later half of that game. And Lilia coming in late game, we talked about she was going to have to make something happen. And it took her a while. But when she did, it mattered the most. Let's go back to that, to that snipe from the Senna. I will go to my grave saying that is the reason that Baron happened. 
I think you're absolutely right. You create incremental advantage, right? That snipe got an ADC off the table, gave them a 4v5 advantage, an important 4v5, as you were saying, coach, during the game, because the damage dealer's gone, right? You can only do so much without the ash. <sighs> what a game. What a game. Look, at, look at the gold right now. So Valparaiso won that game, but they were down in gold at the end of the game. They were down in kills. They were down in just about every metric. They were up a thousand gold. When they took the Nexus, they were up a thousand gold. Oh, up a thousand, just at the very end. But Ben Zhao had 70,000 gold. Hello. The by, majority of the gold. Most by far. You know, we talked about Ben Zhao in the later half of the game going 10 and 2. Let's turn it around. Let's turn around in the later half of the game, Peckles going 0 4. Yeah. We talked about, you know, how good he is maneuvering around the map. We talked about, you know, how he was in every fight in game one. He was everywhere they needed to be. I called him American Express. And if you go 0-4 at the end of a game, and I think he did have a couple of assists at the end there. I don't quite know. I think he was 7-0 at 8, and he ended up 7-4 and 16. So it sounds like he went 0-4 and 8 in the last half of the game. Uh, but without him carrying from support uh you could totally see the difference there and i think it all started with him going in on that yone along the wall of the base getting yeah. caught getting taken down not getting the kill and that was the that was the slope that was they slipped on the ice at the top of that hill and they slid all the way down and it's not what anyone wanted to see if you're a saint ambrose fan but they just couldn't get their feet back underneath them. They they couldn't get their head back around. They couldn't they couldn't find their opponent. And it it was the beginning of the end. And I think, you know, as as commentators who don't have a dog in this fight, it was a lot of fun to watch. But if you're St. Ambrose, you have to be really worried right now because you had game one, right? You had game one. You had such a dominant performance in game one. You go with high hopes, high expectations, high confidence into game two, and then you get slapped in the face in game two in a mat in a game you were winning and by all rights should have won. Now you got to watch out for the tilt. Now you just got to take that deep breath. And I keep saying it. You got to take that deep breath. You just got to hold it in a minute. Find your find your happy place. Because if you go on tilt here, if you try to change the strategy, which has got you to this point, Valparaiso will end up two and three at the end of the day. Absolutely, they will. Uh, I know that Coach Nuke is not watching this game. I got a, I got a message from him on Twitter that he's driving back from Indiana, or he's driving to Indiana for his cousin's wedding. But I'll tell you what, when he watches back this VOD review, there will be a lot of things that will be said between them and the team. I think there's going to be a lot of things that will be said that cannot be aired. <laughs> um, there, there will be Ooh. some choice words spoken, I believe. Uh, but a great comeback. And let's not let's not put it all on St. Ambrose. Oh, they absolutely. made a couple they made a couple of errors, but Valparaiso able to capitalize extremely well. Extremely well capitalized there. Um so let's not put it all on and St. Ambrose making mistakes, because you can make mistakes and if your opponent doesn't capitalize, it doesn't really matter. And Valpo yeah. said, Oh, you're gonna you're gonna drop a dollar on the ground, I'm gonna pick it up. Oh, you're gonna lose your watch, I'm gonna pick that up. Oh, look, you tripped and fell. I'm going to kick you while you're down. Uh, at every turn when they had a chance to get a little bit and a little bit and a little bit, they took them. They took them. They took them. And at the end of the day, they took their wallet. They took their wife. They took their dog. They took their house. They took their truck. And St. Ambrose is looking around like, what would you leave me? And we said nothing. Valpo said nothing. You got nothing left. We're going to go to game three. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Uh, game three. Uh <laughs> Somewhat uncharted territory. As I said, we've only had one game three on stream so far. That's just been the perfect storm tonight. This game got pushed back 15 minutes after the last one went long. We had a very long game number two. Heading to game number three. We are literally burning the midnight oil right here. All right. We are getting in. We are locked in. We are ready to rumble here. Game number three. If you're acquainted with the League of Legends culture, play the silver scrapes right now. Pull that up on YouTube. The As is tradition when you go to a match deciding game three or five. It doesn't get better than this in Collegiate League of Legends. I can tell you that much. 
You know there's a little animosity here, Coach. Uh, if you're SAU, you feel losing that kind of game feels awful. And if you're Valpo, you think, yeah, yeah, we can beat him. Oh. Yeah, we can beat him. We, we, we just showed it. So there's a lot of emotions going into this final match, final game. V- Valpo's definitely coming downhill right now. They've got the momentum. They just want to keep it rolling. They, they want this game to start now. Valpo doesn't want to do pro draft right now. Valpo wants to draft in client. They don't want to take the extra five minutes. They want to get back into the game as soon as possible. They don't want St. Ambrose to have time to take that deep breath. Valpo wants to play now. They're like, we'll keep the same champion. Let's just run it right back. They don't want to break at all here because right now St. Ambrose, they're they're a little bit shell-shocked. They have to be throwing a 12,000 gold lead. Uh, Yeah. And if, if you know anybody who's watching the stream and left, because we have a few less viewers now than we did earlier, if you know anybody who was watching and left because they said, oh, this one's over, St. Ambrose has it in the bag, tell them to get back online. They missed the ending of a great game two, and game three is going to be good as well. And if you're still here and you haven't hit the follow button, what are you doing? Hit the follow button. Make sure you're here every night to hear Ethan calling great matches like this. Every Thursday, every Thursday, but you're absolutely right. Five nights a week, we do have fantastic esports action. Valorant, they will bring him back. Rocket League, he does so good. Up. If and you Madden. ask for it in chat, ask for it in chat, they'll bring him back. Oh, man. There it is. Two out of five. Two out of five. Two out of five. Two out of five. Out of five. <laughs> uh, they're banning. Let's see. SAU. Oh, it's still not a passing. Yeah, still not a, that is our not producer a passing throwing grade. shade. Our producer showing throwing shade all over right, here. All right, you're not you're not my professors. All right, <laughs> I get this in class. I don't need it here as well. <laughs> Evelyn Aurelia Yone, no surprise there. Casted and Orn Rakan ban set locked in for SAU. If you're just joining us, this is a match deciding game number three between the St. Ambrose Fighting Bees and the Valparaiso Crusaders. St. Ambrose won game number one in convincing fashion and game number two was headed the same way but an absolutely heroic performance by the Crusaders led them to a massive 13k gold comeback and we're here at game number three. Valparaiso running back with the Lilia coach. I... (laughs) I still don't quite like that one. I mean, it worked out for him. Don't get me wrong. It worked out for him. I just don't know if I quite like it. And I don't know if I quite like it as a first pick. I love the Shen. Uh, I love the Shen. I love the Shen. The Gnar was not working. It was yeah. not working. Um, it had a little bit of help in team fights, but I think the defensiveness of Shen is going to be what gets them through this game three. Absolutely. Mordekaiser set locked in. So that set is either going jungle or we're going to see set support, set mid. These are all things that have existed in the meta at one point or another. Uh, and that could be a uh, Mordekaiser mid lane. You never know. Ooh, spicy, spicy. A little bit of inject some hot sauce right in my veins if that is the case. Very excited to see here as they grab their last pick. It will be the Oriana. So they're going to run that one back. What are you selecting for your mid lane here if you're Valpo? Yon is off the table. Who are you looking to? Somebody mobile. I don't care who it is. Somebody mobile. Uh, Akali? Akali would be, would be fun here. Akali would be a lot of fun there. And uh, it sh- will be Camille. Um, Shen- I think that's their top. That's their top. Oh, whoa, wait. Hold on. And support? Shen, Shen support could be real. Camille jungle could be real. That's been meta yep. in the past. Uh, the Camille got banned out by SAU last game, though, I believe. Yes, it did. I believe that was their second ban last game. Right. So I, I'm thinking we might, uh, we might see something here. If they, if they banned it before and it's not banned now, we might see something here. Tark the, off the table. The Ash ban off that one amazing ultimate. Oh, Absolutely filthy. Okay, Absolutely coin filthy. toss. Coin toss. Which do you like? The Ash ultimate getting the Yone mid lane or the Senna ultimate sniping the Ash? Okay, the Ash ultimate was a higher degree of luck slash skill because the they just had vision and the Senna was a little closer, but the Senna play was more impactful knowing Fair. how the game played out. So it, it's a toss-up. I like winning, so I'm going to go with the Senna ulti. <laughs> 
I think we all like winning. Uh. Thank you. Thank you for complimenting the casting. We try. We try hard. Hey, chat. We appreciate it. Um, Tell your friends. We're here all week. <laughs> so that last band is actually going to be a Pantheon. Uh, they said in chat uh, was a misclick. You know, pro draft, a little wonky at times. Galio band will come through. Val that would have been a good midliner. SAU two picks. Galio would have been a great midliner. Yeah. Uh, with some mobility. Some mobility. Mm -hmm. Semi-global ultimate. That that's a great band, a tremendously good band. I still would love to see Akali here. Valpo thinking about it. There's a setup. show me the Akali. Show me the ah. Oh. They're saving their mid for last pick, so they really want. Uh, which I don't know if it really makes sense because you already have the Oriana locked in as mid, right? And ah, uh, I Ooh. don't know. Ooh, you know, you know who could be ridiculous right here. And I'm not just saying it. I'm not just saying it because Lay it's my midlaner. I'm not just saying it because it's my midlaner's uh, one trick. Katarina. Katarina. Katarina, just to avoid everything the Orion is doing, to avoid everything anybody wants to do. Yeah. Just, just find the Katarina, and then late game, just push the delete button. All right, I like it. Tristana locked in here, waiting for the last SAU pick. The bees all knotted up one to one with the Crusaders. Lee Sin coming through, meaning it is set support. It's got to be. Ooh, ooh! Could you imagine set support? Hey, oh, it's Camille mid. Camille mid. Camille mid. Camille mid. It, it it could be Nautilus mid. We've seen that come out of Korea. So then Shen support. Shen support against set support would actually be oh, this really is so fun. Spicy! Oh my god! No matter no matter where they go, it's gonna be fun. This is don't, so don't get me wrong. Spicy. I'm always willing to call out the absolutely ridiculous placement of champions. I love seeing it. Uh, <laughs> I love seeing it. Oh my gosh! For Set Valparaiso being in the heart of the Midwest, this is packing some serious spice. Look at this composition. I don't know what's going on, but I'm excited. I'm here for it. I'm ready to receive it. I, I like the Camille. I do like the Camille. My only problem with Valpo, I don't know if they have enough AP. I don't know if they have enough damage. Uh, full AP Senna or full AP Nautilus? Oh, it's a, it's a fasting Senna bot lane with Nautilus carry. Uh, we saw FlyQuest do this multiple times throughout the season. Ignar would play a full AP Nautilus, and you play fasting support Senna, but because of the soul stack, it's like another carry late game. That is my bet. This is some super hot tech they're pulling out from earlier in the season that I've not seen any team pull off that wasn't a professional team. Uh, I'm going to put my money on Senna ADC Nautilus support, but... I don't That's know. just me. I don't know. We're we're gonna find out. I would I would put my money on Nautilus mid lane Shen support before I put my money on Nautilus ADC. Well, just so saying. Just your saying. Your regular support player still plays the Nautilus. Your ADC player still plays the Senna, but Senna builds the support item, and Nautilus starts with uh, like a Doran's ring and builds full damage. W watching how they've played the first two games. That that's my only thing. Yeah. Watching how they played the first two games. If it was Peckles. Yes. If this was reversed, if these two, if these five stacks were reversed, I'd go, oh, absolutely. Peckle's oh, going to carry. Peckle's going to go 21 and one on Nautilus ADC. Um, I just don't think it's going to happen uh, with Pop Mushroom. So Ooh. Shen is top. Pop Mushroom had a great game. Uh, very quietly had a great game yes, on the yes. Tarek. Good very point. Good quietly. Point. And I don't think we talked about it, and I feel bad. Uh, because I want to talk about it because that was the one place I threw shade in the f four hours I've been sitting here. The one place I threw shade was that pop mushroom. And now I feel bad. Proved me wrong. There's 100%. the Camille vein. It's going to happen. Give me, give me all this. Inject the Sriracha into my veins. Do it. Come on. <laughs> Come on. So we'll Come see. We'll, I, I mean, I, for, I, I hope it is. I really do for you. I hope it is. But I, I don't know. I don't know. If it's not full AP Nautilus, though, they're short AP. They are short AP, unless it is full AP Senna. Spicy. As, as well as the Senna played last game, I don't think you changed that up. I don't think you changed it up. I think, so there's the Senna. We won't know until they start building items. We won't know well, until the initial. Well, well, Senna would have, yeah, I mean, the first item purchased, we'll know. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll know when we get in game. We'll, we'll, we'll know the first know right item. Now. 
One hundred percent. We'll know at the first item ah, purchase. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Tristana. I'll just say this though. Tristana set has the possibility of being filthy, absolutely filthy. Yep. And knowing how Peckles has played, he is going to run, not walk, run at the Valparaiso bot lane. He's going to run at them. He's going to do disgusting things. And then Tristana is going to jump in at the end and clean up. Yeah. I, I really hope Tristana goes with the firefighter skin because she'll just be hosing down set when he's done with everybody. And that's I'm what a, it's going to be. I'm a bigger fan. I'm a bigger fan of the dragon hatcher skin. Just because oh, no. I'm with you. I'm a bigger fan of that skin, but in this okay. particular scenario, yeah. you know, set's going to have to have somebody to wash the blood off his hands. All right. That's fair. Uh, you asked I'm me so last excited. time, buy or sell. I'm asking you, buy or sell. Peckles, better or worse game than, than game, game one, two. not game two. No, no, than game one. Better or worse game than game one? Better. I think San Ambrose has a fire lit under them. I think they're going to walk away with the win. But, but, if Valparaiso wins this game and it's a fasting Senna with an AP Nautilus, I am willing to say that this is the singular greatest series in any CC history to date. A reverse sweep with the sauce in game number two, trailing 13k gold? Are you kidding me? To then have the yeah. audacity to pick this composition? I'm with you. I'm 100% there with you. 100%. Uh, I'm going to make a bold prediction. I'm going to okay. make a bold prediction. Let's see First blood, on First Blood Camille. All right. What level? At what level? Early. I, I agree because the novice level four. one is dirty, right? You have the hook. You have the passive. But it's, it's just a killer combo. No, no. It's going to be the Camille, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying Nautilus is going to set it up. That's what, that's my prediction. Nope. Solo kill. Mid lane. Solo. Solo mid lane. Oh. I, I wanted Ben Zhao. I wanted, ben Zhao. I wanted ben Zhao on mobility. He, he gave it to me in Yone. I, I saw what I wanted. I'm going to give him every benefit of the doubt here. Just the, it's going to be the absolute outplay. They're going to come off the corner wall there. The okay. corner wall right next to the river. It's going to be the outplay. Outplay of the day right there. All I'm going to say is someone better pull up their phone and have 911 ready to go because my heart is going to explode with everything going on in this game. There is so <laughs> many storylines. Everything is just coming to the sweet conclusion. I, we, we made the baking analogy early because one of this is done on making cookies. Just everything's it's cooking. The oven's been preheating all day. We've been making the dough. The cookies are in the oven. Who's who's gonna walk away the winner? That's that's all that matters right now. Match man. deciding game number three. If you've been oh. preheating your oven all day, man, you're killing your electric bill. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying. Man. Unless you're using it to heat the place, I'm just saying. It's, a, it's um, actually a solar oven, so it just works off the sun. You know. Okay. We'll go with that's that. That's fair. That's fair. Environmentally friendly. So how are you going to bake cookies at night then? Oh, frick. <laughs> I keep this telling these jokes. why I'm not the smartest man in the call. All right? I, I keep telling these jokes and you folks can't hear it on Twitch. I wish, wish you could because our producer is laughing in my ear, laughing in Ethan's ear. Oh, I'm getting Ethan to laugh too. I I'm hope you guys laughing. are having a good time. I hope you guys are having a good time. We're having a good time. Uh, no place I would rather be right now on a Thursday night. Very uh, as long as as long as the peacocks have a buy, which they did this week, uh, so I'm hoping I'm hoping I can get back here for more. Uh, yeah. I love I love casting here with uh, with Ethan. It's been fun. The energy here is phenomenal, and it's not just because the game is great. We've got some great talent in the booth. Love being joined here by Coach Jim. Uh, it's been such a such a good day, and I'm glad that we get to end it on a note as exciting as this. Nautilus did take aftershock with inspiration okay. secondary. So okay, we... so four uh, four for four on the skins. However, new a new Oriana skin though. We will be pausing at five seconds. I'm not quite loaded in yet. I am still loading. So hopefully I'll, I've connected three, four, five. I'm paused. All right. Everyone at five seconds. We all good, gentlemen? Yep. Five, four, three, two, 
one, go. Welcome to game number three in this best of three. If you're just joining us, you've missed a whale of a series in game number one. The San Ambrose fighting bees absolutely annihilated the Valparaiso Crusaders. And the same story was written in game number two, but a late plot twist led by Ben Zhao had the Crusaders winning in dramatic fashion, setting us up here for game Number three, coach, what are we looking at here? Level one. Well, look at the two things right here. First being, and we probably should have talked about it during the draft. Uh, this is the first game that St. Ambrose has been on blue side. They've been on red side the whole day. But number two, we talked earlier in the day about Lee Sin as a jungler. And if he got ahead, he would carry. And if he didn't, he might be in trouble. We're looking at the Lee Sin here for St. Ambrose. So I'm going to say, uh, because we're looking at no invade here, I'm going to say that's what I'm looking at is Valpo. Got to make sure you don't let the Lee Sin get ahead. Uh, you've got Shen to help across the board starting at level 6. You know Lilia is going to scale. Senna Nautilus is a really solid lane to lane with in the bot lane. It's a really safe lane. I'm looking for Ben Zhao once again do something in the mid lane. The Miracle Man in the mid lane. Let's see if he can do it again. Absolutely. The AP Nautilus did not come through Relic Shield, bought by Pop Mushroom. The dream was good while well, it lasted. They aren't quite bold enough to dig out the classic LCS strategy. But regardless, we are here in game number three in one of the series in a flash here, level one. Peckles going in. Wow, what aggression there. Flash into Face Breaker. They're not going to find the kill, but they do trade the support flash for the ADC's flash. The Fleegs, Zax XDR. Lot of trading there. Top lane early on. Something that we didn't see a whole lot of last game or in game number one. It took a while for that top lane to develop. So seeing this is pretty refreshing. And in addition to Fleegs, on a uh, champion that you recommended earlier, Coach, you said you were looking for more carry potential out of the top lane. You wanted them off of the Gnar. Here is the Mordecai. Uh, the Gnar was being played by Valpo, though. So oh, absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Oh, off the corner. There we go. Into the mid lane. This is what I was now, looking for. Asta oh, oh, A lot low. of damage coming down. A lot of damage. Going back in, but Benjo doesn't have Ignite this game, so it's gonna be a little less. Peckles coming through, here's the gank. Facebreaker has to flash out, tick, tick on the Ignite, not going to come through Zax XDR. Going in regardless on a new champion with the Shen this game off of the Gnar. Gonna have to sit under tower for a bit. The Fleeg's bullying here early on. Another great roam from Peckles coming out of the bot lane. You mentioned Flash coming out of Peckles. He's actually on the Hextech Flash. So, mm. not not true Flash, on the Hextech Flash. So, more availability, but uh, has to worry about the channel. So, better for Ambush, worse for defense. Absolutely, is a pull there in the top of the get Good catch on the Hextech Flash there. We do see this bot lane develop. I think this bot lane is the lane that's most interesting to me right now. Uh, and, and I suppose mid lane, the, the mid Camille, not something that you see very often at all. As Mponer trying to set up a gank here, will drop the ward. Lee Sin gonna toss out that key just to play a little bit of defense. Pop Mushroom. Interesting hook, trying to predict a Nico jump there. Doesn't come through, no one is the wiser. I tell you, my one of my favorite bot lanes, especially when uh, when Nico, because we keep talking about Nico TV, uh, when Nico came out as a champion in League of Legends, my favorite bot lane was on hit Nico as the Hextech Flash comes in. Good channeling, good hook coming through. CC being dropped. Heckles might be in a little bit of trouble here. There's a solid amount of damage popping through. It's Nico TV with the rocket jump, putting down some damage. Pop Mushroom has to be careful, but at the end of the day. All parties will walk out alive, as you're saying, Coach, on hit Nico. Nico oh. with a karma support. And if you're older like oh. I am, you'll absolutely get the joke. Oh. Oh, coming in. Nate Mac. Ben Zhao might be in a little bit of trouble here. Ostapol is trailing. Bowling ball coming through. Not going to find his target. Ben Zhao, Nate Mac both going low. First blood is dropped. Cam and Poner clean up a kill here. Will get one, but it looks like the Lee Sin will be escaping with their life. 
one for one in the mid lane. Coach, your prediction falls a little bit short on just a little play. short. One auto short. As Tristana goes yeah. in under tower. Nico! Wow. So much aggression there. Hopping back over the wall for seemingly no reason. Ben Zhao there to pick it up. It's Nico TV. That's a big misplay. So they will give Ben Zhao a free kill for just about nothing. Looking like a drive through service right there. Just plated it up on a silver platter. And even where did I miss Seth's death? Where did I miss Pickle's death? Uh, under tower, potentially. I also... Did he uh, die it, may, it must have been when we were in mid lane. Oh did no, he... Pickle's... Pickles ganked up. It was it was scooped up by. Ooh. Was that the was that the Lilia kill? That was the Lilia kill. That okay. was the Lilia kill. That Must was Lilia have. Kill. As, as we see the first Drake going the way of Valpo. Yes. Very important notice there. They do get that kill on the bot lane. They don't get that first drag if it's Nico TV doesn't overplay there. You know the jump back over the wall just handed over a free kill. One they didn't need to give, and Nate Max 17 going up, does hit the Q diving tower at level four. Not the wisest oh, decision. Barely makes it out. Woo. Barely makes it out. Uh, so I guess I have to ask: Are are you a fan of classic rock? Classic rock? Not really. Okay, so you didn't get my joke. I think Caleb got my joke. I think our producer got my joke. I, I was talking about how my favorite bot lane when Nico came out as a champion was uh, Nico on hit ADC and Karma support. Because it's a comma, 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 chameleon. Uh, you're no longer allowed to complain about any pun anyone says for the rest of your life. No, no sir. I'm good. I'm solid. Face Baker coming through. Dark Miner probably not of that bomb. It's Neo TV still flashing regardless. Oh. Stand United coming through. They will get the fruit on the back end. Ben Zhao responding. Can they flip the script and dip the chip here? Trying to go in. It's Nico TV going in, stuck in that Camille ulti. The whole squad showing up. Teleports coming through. This party just got a little bit too packed. Dark Miner, Pop Mushroom, gotta run. It's Nico TV not caught up in the CC. Pop Mushroom, they're not going to pursue it under tower for the time being. But they probably will have to fall back just a little bit. And Poner chasing down a kill on the top side. River, face breaker under tower. The onslaught continues. Sleep coming through. And Poner not going to be able to do much here. Trying to run under tower. Will do so successfully. Teleport coming into the bot side. But not before they pick up one plate. Second plate on the way. They're not going to find it. Great play there from St. Ambrose. Uh, the teleport coming in from the Oriana. Turning that fight around. Yeah, absolutely. They they turned around so well there, and they, they really showed their aggression and their confidence, I feel. Diving tower there. As you see Nate Max setting up something here in the mid lane, Ben Zhao has to be very, very careful right here. You know, Nate Max, he had a very quiet game on Graves the last game. Uh, I, he had double-digit kills, and we did not say his name all that often. Uh, and all of a sudden, 3-0 here on the Lee Sin. We talked about how bad this game could go for Valpo if the Lee Sin got fed early. Eight and a half minutes in, three kills on the Lee Sin. Absolutely. And, uh, chat's calling you out over your pun. They're saying uh, George is in Classic Rock. So, I don't know. I'm not a Classic Rock guy, so I have zero input. I have nothing useful to add to the conversation. But uh, in chat, we trust. That's all I'm going to say. So I, if they want to argue with me about what's Classic Rock and what isn't Classic Rock, they play it on the Classic Rock station, that's all that matters. Okay, there it is. The proof is in the radio waves. They play it on the Classic <laughs> Rock station. This game is looking somewhat similar. Shades of Game 2, I would say. Uh, definitely SAU is in the lead, but Valve is going to stick around here. That, on. that could be a problem. That one. could be a problem. That will be a problem. Zax XCR picks it up, fight on the box side. Peckles going low. Wow, big Tristana ulti coming through to push back. Pop Mushroom is not going to matter. Dark Miner picking that one up. Lilia responding, will get the ulti down. Gets the double sleep, but there's no follow-up damage. Ben Zhao responding down to the bot side as well. Will be able to find anything else. Just about 10 minutes elapsed in this game, and they are going to find some plates off of this tower. Bowling ball coming through don't believe it'll find its target, but they are all going to share in the plates here, coach. 
You know, we were talking about how good Shen is at saving others, but, you know, his ability to ignore auto attacks and save himself and just absolutely had that fight against Mordekaiser. I have no idea why the Fleegs, who's played great League of Legends tonight, he's played absolutely outstandingly. I have no idea why he decided to take that fight. Though. Yeah, not really sure as well, but Zax XDR going to take advantage of that every day of the week. Also going to back here. Doesn't have teleport up, but does have stand united available. Next dragon will be up in just about 15. 15 seconds from now, both teams should have their eyes on that one, especially for Valparaiso. Uh, you know you're down some gold, but if you can get a, if you can sneak out two drags early on, put you that much closer to just randomly winning the game from getting a soul late game, that's your agenda. Absolutely. We're going to see Peckles, who's been quiet here, actually, in game number three. Uh, as, see as he seemingly was everywhere in game one and two, been a little quiet in game number three, dropping some vision. Uh, Valpo able to take care of it though, and I don't know, this is going to get interesting, Mordekaiser is walking down. I don't know if he's going to keep coming down or if he's just going to take that top river rift scuttle. Yeah, not sure either entirely, I think she's going to take the scuttle there, but uh, both teams centering around drag and will advantage go to Valparaiso because of the stand united, neither top laner has actual summer spell teleport up, but Stand United is just as good in most cases, usually better. Ben Zhao striking from quite the range, drops the ult. The Anastopolis is going to go down in a hurry. At this point, I don't think St. Ambrose can contest that Drake. I think it's a risky move to contest the Drake down 4v3, especially with Stand United available. I think yeah. that fight turns against you very quickly. Yeah, and they are just going to give that one up. It looks like you pay attention to the mini-map there. Nobody in the same zip code from the bees will be scooped up. Two drags to none. They're still trailing a little bit of gold just due to CS differences across the board, but they're up a kill. This is some uncharted territory for Valparaiso right now, Coach. They are in, in a leading position here early on. Peckle maybe caught out here, rotating up. Nate Mac onto Zach and CR. Trying to get out, but here comes M Poner. Who does all get the a flash. Lot of damage? Flashing! M Poner gets the shutdown gold. And here's the response. Ben Zhao rotating up. Zap 60R stays alive, logging up for the cavalry to respond. Valparaiso, what has happened? Zex DR stayed alive somehow, some way, through some miracle of science and was able to hold out long enough for Camille to come up and clean up the Fleegs. And Lilia, with a great play against the Lee Sin in the, it was a, yeah, the Lee Sin, no, that was the set, my apologies. The set up there, right? Yeah. The set who in Peckles' roams have been outstanding and gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar on that one. That is, it is now an absolutely even gold game here. Valparaiso playing some inspired League of Legends after their massive comeback in game number two. Ben Zhao going in, but this is going to be a 3v1 situation. Realizes that the nick of time is able to get out there. Turret plating will fall soon. I'm assuming that's why they're sending three mid, trying to get a pick and trying to find some money off the turret plates. But it's just going to end up wasting Peckle's time and wasting uh, Nate Max time. Uh, they're they're and not at the, the advantage where they can just roam freely and get nothing out of it. But they are going to go in here. Dark Miner most likely going to die here. Does pop the W. Oh, not going to be enough. Almost. Almost not enough. 4v2 now. Yep, and I think Pop is going to die here as well. Rocket Jump coming through. We'll get the reset to get back out. Shen under tower all alone. We'll pick up one kill. Okay, and there's the Rift Tower. The there's the Rift Tower. First tower might go to Valpo. Yeah, it's a, it's a race for first tower, and Valpo will pick up the first tower. It's SXDR under tower, fighting it. The shield's going to last just long enough. Not going to pick up anybody else, but they might be able to push in two towers here in the mid lane. They can I think they push. might get three. They might get a charge on a third. Nope. Well, I okay, think so the, the rift, rift just died. Yeah, they will the just, just get died. the two, but they have a big wave. Still. Wow. Great, great push there. Amazing push. Uh, they, they keep their kill lead. As we've talked about, the kill lead not as important as the gold lead. Absolutely. Uh, it's Valpo <laughs> never had a gold lead. Sorry, Valpo? I'm talking to my producer, not to you guys. Valpo <laughs> just uh, this is this is not a position we've seen them in. 
uh, this early on in a game. As we said, I, I think this is fully momentum. We talked a lot about mental game earlier on in the stream at the top of the hour. And how important it is, especially in Collegiate League of Legends, when sweeps are the most common outcome. It's most likely to be mental game. And we see the mental game in effect here. SAU, move, I, I fully believe, is probably the better team. But guess what? Right now, none of that matters. Because what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me in this game? And right now, Valparaiso can say a whole heck of a lot. I want to talk about a couple of things right now. The first one being the farm on Mordekaiser and the farm on Tristana against their opponents being up 40 and 50 farm. But then let's turn it around and talk about how Lilia has a lead on the lead sin. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Just a crazy lead there. More than double. Wow. And with the same number of kills. If if Lilia didn't have any kills, then it's like, oh, well, Leaf Sin's just farming champions. But they have the same number of kills. Lilia getting to fights, making a difference, still hitting all of her camps. Wow. Yeah, that's absolutely insane. More than double the CS in the jungle. Big moves from M. Pona right now. And speak of the jungle, this next drag will be up in 35 seconds. Just about both teams setting up. But it looks like SAU is not willing to give this third dragon in a row up. Trying to get them off of soul point here. We'll see what develops. What's interesting is that not only does Shen have teleport and Mordekaiser does not, but Shen also has Stand United, so he can conceivably alt down to a fight and then teleport back to lane. Yeah, so much map pressure being applied because of the Shen's mobility, clearing out wards. Here is M. Poner. They are trying to get some dominance, some vision over this pit. It looks like they're succeeding right now. Valparaiso in a very solid position. Ben Zhao, not the bush you want to face check, but it might not matter. CZ coming through. There's the Sen ulti. Roots in the back line. Showstopper comes through. Peckles, oh, gets stuck back over the wall from Ben Zhao, but it might not be enough. Ben Zhao going down. Ostapolis instrumental there. Shen ulti does not come through, which might have been able to change the tide. I, I, I absolutely think Stand United there would have changed that in the back. Uh, however, I was also looking at Shen maybe taking top tower during the Drake fight, but gave up the Drake fight to walk to tower and might lose his life to boot. So, yeah, as the flash comes in. Yard, flash. Ooh, they're not going to fight it, but they're it's on Dragon. Three, three members of SAU went after Shen in the mid lane. And oh the, my gosh! As, as teleport comes in from Shen. No, I'm sorry, that was Stand United came in from Shen to get him back. I'm sorry, he backed. I, I don't know what I, what was I looking at? Oh, Camille. Yeah, he backed. Camille teleported. My apologies, I forgot Camille had teleport. Absolutely, and Austin Bullet's gonna go down here. Wow, SAU is caught absolutely sleeping and they're going to give up soul point for nothing. They were in the mid lane, just pushing out waves, and whew, they hit that snooze button one too many times. Let's take a look here. Lilia, 4-0-1 with top farm to boot. She is huge. Full runic echoes, jungle item, Leandri's torment. You know, she's going to be filling out boots here quickly. Uh, I think she's going to be going Banshee's Veil. You see the Null Magic Mantle in there. Uh, and there are the Merc Treads, so there are the boots filled out. Uh, Amp Tome as well, which just leads me to believe that that... Actually, Null Magic Mantle got sold, so... Oh, they went into the boots, my apologies. So, extra AP coming out on the Lilia. We talked about Lilia, if you're gonna play her, you have to get ahead. Absolutely have to get ahead. 4-0-1 at 19 minutes, that's definitely in the lead. Absolutely head. We see a bit of a scrap here in the top lane. Zax XPR doing something. Oh, the whole team's around in the top lane here. Pop Mushroom, not what exactly you want to be. Ben Zhao over the wall. First kill will be dropped. Pop Mushroom going down. Zax XPR has to flash out. Ben Zhao running as well. This is the fight that the bees have been looking for all game long, and they finally found it, putting them back in the lead in gold and on kills. And Pone in the back line, though, doing a lot of damage. Double Drowsy will be able to find a kill here. Absolutely deleted. Ostapolis. Bowling ball not going to find its target. And Poner. Oh, flashing in recklessly. Woo! My goodness. Will die there. 
20 minutes into this game and we are just about no closer to deciding a winner than we were at minute one that's how close it is that shutdown going to the lee sin is going to be massive yeah they had, they had slowed him down yeah, yeah they had slowed him down i mean he's sitting on 67 cs uh the, the, the peckles is, is threatening to have more cs than him and the shutdown there giving him the extra cash to get back on track he did not have anything past the full jungle item he's backing now to probably finish the first full non-jungle item but lee sin without an item is not truly lee sin and a mistake there lilia uh m poner on the lily did not need to go in there got the kill could have walked away uh, a mistake we've been talking about mistakes all night mistakes have been deciding the matches and that was definitely a mistake from Valparaiso. Yeah, absolutely. We talked about the absolute massive amount of mistakes SAU made in game number two, leading to their untimely demise. Right now, Valparaiso making some of these mistakes in an untimely part of the game. They're trying to win here. Zax XPR going in on the flea. The flea's getting the best of the shed in this case, doing a lot of damage with Zax XPR. Will be getting out of there. Rotation to the bot side here. Ben Zhao getting out. Roots are dropped. Hooks are dropped as well to help Nautilus get out. Nico TV on the bot side as well, trying to respond. They're not going to find anything there. Minute and a half until the soul Drake is in the pit. They'll get out there. Can they still blue buff here? I think they might go for it. This is actually doesn't oh. seem as big as it is actually going to be. Putting that on the Oriana is actually going to feel pretty, pretty massive for the mid laner as well as denying resources. Uh, most people just think about the mana reduction, but or the mana regeneration, but it also gives 10% CDR. So that's something to think about in these extended team fights, using abilities multiple times. You know, we were talking about itemization. Looking at the Camille, still no full item either. So that could be a problem there. You see the Sunfire Cape is available on the Shen, though. So they're going to try to fight that one out in the top lane. That one's been fun all day long. Yeah, just two beefers going at it, slugging it out. Feels like a heavyweight fight. Uh, no no one gaining much ground there, and you just keep an eye on the teleports here. Zack XDR right. once again has teleport, has to end United. Defleegs has neither. Oh, uh, Echo. Tri Triforce finished on uh, Camille. Pop Mushroom gets the top back in. Drowsy on the Peckles. There's the Showstopper. They're finally going to get a kill there. Ulti coming through. Shut down. No Tristana is down. The ADC dead. Nate Mac nowhere to run. Or is there? Peckles there. Able to get him out. Oh my gosh. And Poner for Valparaiso. Cleaning it up. The triple kill. And Poner opening this game up. Don't forget about the Stand United coming through in the middle of that fight. They will trade four for one, leaving the Fleegs all alone. Not only trading four for one, but an unopposed Infernal Soul gonna go to Valparaiso. Yeah, straight speed, four straight drags coming through. Valparaiso is playing so well in this game number three this match deciding game number three they were one and three coming into the game on the other side san ambrose is three and one right now trying to hold their spot is tied for second in the necc but not looking particularly well for them the gold lead is dead even the soul however adds a couple hundred gold per player on the other side just essentially the stats that it gives so we're gonna see how that develops a lot more damage will be coming through a bit of a scrap here zax dr gotta be careful nate back trying to engage this nico peck is there as well or peckles excuse me ben Zhao does pick up a kill in the nate match see if they can turn is this that, one around is that a baron if they stop stealing can they turn around if they stop chasing can they turn around and baron well, they may just be able to lee sin's down lee oh and they're gonna back lee sin mm. is down that would have been an interesting call for Baron. I, I like that call a lot. Drowsy onto the back line. Ulti is expended. It's Nico TV. We'll be right back on the TP coming in. Coming TP through. coming in. Oh, there's Ben Zhao. Right in the thick of things. Oh, my goodness. Nico TV on the back line. We'll go down. Ulti's coming through. Valparaiso. They are doing it. They are winning this team by double kill on two separate members. All that's left is Nate Mac and their lowly 
78 CS Baron looks like the call right here. Not much that Nate Mac can do, especially if you're sitting at a gray screen. Ben Zhao not able to find the kill there. Nate Mac is not going to be able to find their way over to Baron, meaning Valparaiso will be able to pick it up. Oh my goodness. You know, Valparaiso do it. I've been doing some apologizing tonight. This one's gonna go out to M. Boner. I said at the start of the game, I don't know if I like the Lilia. She's too dependent on getting that snowball. And I, I, I said it, I called it out. You gotta get the snowball. It didn't happen in game two. I don't know why you think it's gonna happen in game three. And I just need to shut my mouth because sitting at 10, one and five, the only person with a bigger snowball in League of Legends right now is Nunu. Absolutely, the only one bigger with a, uh, with a bigger snowball is Nunu. Valparaiso's all of a sudden up 5k gold. This is their largest gold lead of the series to date, coach. Uh, but, 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 in keeping everything in all fairness, you can't call this game even close to over yet, considering what we saw in game number two. Oh, absolutely. And St. Ambrose is a very good team. And it's just going to come down to the same thing we talked about. It's going to come down to are people going to make mistakes? At this point, uh, it's going to come down to, is Valpo going to make the mistake? Uh, if they don't make a mistake, I, I think they might be able to pressure this one into a win. And you have an open inhibitor in the mid lane. You're up two towers. You have the Infernal Soul. Elder's coming up in 250. You've got the Baron buff at the moment. I, I think they've got everything in working in their direction at the moment. I'm looking for Dark Miner to hit another cross map set on that Mordekaiser is low. Yeah, absolutely. It's probably close to in range right now. Chen is going to back there, so the fleas will be left all alone just to clear waves. They continue to push in the mid and bot lane simultaneously applying pressure cross map. Heckles going in. There's the showstopper on the pop watch. How do you want to find the support? Going through, tower will go down. There's the set ulti. Wow, absolutely deleted. Lee Sin going down. Set on the chopping block. Oriana next to go. It's Nico TV. Can Valbrazo win off the back of that? Can they do it? Double kill coming through it's for over. Lilia. It's gonna be over. This is it. This and is it. Motor. This but is this. The fleet's the last one alive. That's oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's, it's, they go is. down, but it doesn't even matter. They go down, but it doesn't even matter. Valparaiso, the reverse sweep. If there you don't be, like that, you don't like coming. League of Legends. Set wow. And Set and Lee Sin have a shot if they could do something, but they're not going to have it. They're not going to have it. Have they it couldn't, couldn't engage. They couldn't oh get the engage. Oh my goodness. Engage. From the, depths from the depths of defeat, Valparaiso with the reverse sweep, as I said. If you don't like that series, you just don't like League of Legends, because we had it all. Wow. Welcome to the NECC <laughs> if it's your first time stopping by. And, you know, we talked about it. We've been talking about it all day. We mentioned it pre-match one, you know, asking me about what's going to be big, what's big right now in College League of Legends. And we were talking about the mental side. Absolutely the mental side. St. Ambrose gave game two away. They made way too many mistakes. They got super confident. They were going into fights thinking, no, we got this. We'll make it work. We don't have to have the perfect engage. They got smacked around. They ended up losing game two. And I don't think they ever recovered from that. They had a couple of good moments here in game three. They truly did. They had some great moments here in game three. But it was still those moments of, we have to engage. We have to make something happen. They And they made the plays. Don't get me wrong. They dove towers. They got kills under towers. But it just felt like they were forcing it. It felt like they were trying to do too much. And when Valpo hit back, Valpo hit back from the proper angle, they hit back from the correct flank. They got the solo kills they needed. And at the end of the day, uh, they took every objective on the map, I believe. Yeah, Indiana Zone, Valparaiso taking it home. Send this game straight to the NECC Hall of Fame because St. Ambrose looked like an unstoppable force and Valparaiso some way, somehow pulls off a miracle in game number two and they were not to be denied in game number three. Coach, 
we have just about reached the end of our time here. Do you have any closing thoughts on that absolute masterpiece of a series we just saw? I on the series or on game number three? Because for game number three, I gotta I gotta look at the jungler from Valpo. 13, 2, and 6, 191 farm. The only person with better farm was the Tristana. And on the comparative, you know, we talked earlier. Jungle difference, jungle difference, jungle difference. Is it the jungler? Is it the laners? Let's take a look. Let's not even look at the kills. Let's not look at the deaths. Let's not look at the assists. 191 farm on the level 15 Lilia. 78 farm on the level 10 Lee Sin. A five level difference on the junglers. And that's all I'm going to say about that one. Absolutely. Any final thoughts on the series, Coach? Uh, on the my series. first MVP has got to be M. Poner. Uh, uh, ben Zhao's right up there. Yeah, but... I was going to say Ben Zhao's right up there. Uh, he he carried absolutely the team on his back on the Yone uh, and had a good game here in game number three. was disruptive in the back line. But when it came down to it, the team fights were all orchestrated by the Lilia. Uh, toss a coin. Toss a coin, toss see a what coin. happens. But I think you're right. I think M. Poner would get it. I think it would have to be M. Poner in a great match. Okay, and, and let's not oh, yeah. say anything bad about Santa Bros. We, we talked absolutely. about how they made some mistakes. They absolutely destroyed in game one. It was it was two different teams that played here for St. Ambrose, it felt like. Uh, yeah. Game one, the first half of game two was one St. Ambrose team. The second half of game two and game three was a totally different St. Ambrose team. Uh, because St. Ambrose, and you said it during game three, probably was front to back the better team. Yeah, but the better team tonight was Valparaiso. Absolutely, the better team tonight was Valparaiso's. They win, and what my opinion is the singular greatest NECC game we have seen yet. Speaking of the NECC, we're sponsored by Hyperx. No matter who you are or how you play, we're all gamers, and by ESTV, the first ever dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities. That's all we have time for tonight. If you haven't hit the follow button. Do so on your way out. If not for the casting, if not for the production value, for the game that you just saw, Valparaiso reverse sweeping, walking home with the W. I truly hope from the bottom of my heart that everyone has a fantastic night and a fantastic weekend as we head into Friday. We will see you guys next week Thursday for some more League of Legends action. Have a good one.